It's the final day here of the Blast Premier Spring Finals and one last pack day of Counter-Strike action here in Lisbon. Today, the coveted Grand Final will be going down on this very stage. Of course, the fans queuing up since the early hours of the morning to get the best seat in the house. Right now, though, I think I've got the best seat in the house. Of course, I've got Maniac, of course, I've got Pimp, but Carrigan actually joins us to open up the show here today. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Could do better, but this one is. this. Good, good to be up here, at least, I mean, in the crowd as well. Um, this is an incredible crowd. They're already getting riled up. Yeah, they're getting loud already. I remember just walking down the stage, so we're getting loud already. So hope, hopefully it's going to be a good final today. How are you enjoying see. Lisbon as well? Yeah, I wanted to enjoy Lisbon today, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. happen. Got, but, got but, to the work. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> enjoyed yesterday. Really beautiful city. It's great to have you here. It's the first time I see so many people getting excited about the desk. Yeah, yeah people yeah, waiting yeah. left side, right side. It's like, are they here for us? No, no, it's like, can't read really again, can't read really again. Oh my god, there we go. There yeah, we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and you're going to be performing in the show match later today yes, as well. It's going to be good. Play, uh, two scan for the first Ooh, time. Very nice. Yeah. That's going to be really good. It's I don't know what's yeah. happening. <laughs> that, that's, the the well. that's the excitement yeah. there. Um, the conversation by just kind of talking about your experiences here of course we unfortunately didn't see you making it onto that stage as well which uh, i know you were frustrated about considering an incredible run at the major obviously going straight into dallas which is a uh, you know testing in terms of the fatigue of the team as well yeah i mean uh, obviously dallas was tough uh, i arrived there uh, a day later because of some stuff i had to take care of so i didn't feel so good in dallas uh, but coming to this tournament we really wanted to win it we wanted to prove that we can play better series than at dallas um obviously didn't happen uh, we kind of got railed by uh, by Navi, we had no chance there and and I just feel like we were laughing on Inferno when we split side. This lot of those games where we have no chance and and unfortunately it was right before making arena but it is what it is. That happens right. That happens you have those those games where everything is just off. You said you were laughing it off. How's the team vibes now after a couple of days to to kind of soak it in? Yeah obviously a little frustrated right but we also know okay we're trying to look at the positive side and, and just say like okay Cologne Hmm. This is the one, and I also think I expressed an interview, if we don't make it to the final of Cologne, obviously the start of the season and how we ended is obviously a little frustrating. Um, but yeah, we, are, uh, we have played a lot, and we have grown deep in the tournament, so people are catching up, and, and hopefully for Cologne we can reinvent ourselves a little bit. You said, I believe that was to Pala as well, you said it would be a disappointment if you didn't win Cologne. Like, even winning the major, even in the beginning of the season that you talked about, which was a great start, it would still to be considered as a disappointment. Do you stand by that? Because I found that uh, quite in intriguing in a way. You won the major, and that was the big goal for you, obviously, but do you still think it, it would be a disappointment if you were to win, uh, not to win Cologne? I think I said to make it to the finals of Cologne. Okay. I have never been to the finals of Cologne, so obviously that's where I want to be. And um, no team have ever won catch with Cologne on a major on the same season, so I want to try to achieve that. And like I said, obviously if we go to semi-final and we lose to a better team, that's fine. But obviously not making the playoff in, in Cologne and stuff like that would be a disappointing result, but also we have to just reevaluate what we have done and how we can achieve the same level in the beginning of season. Um, I think we dropped a little off individually because we didn't play enough, and, and now we have time, 14 days to, to prepare for Cologne, and we have to show up individually there. Yeah, I think that was going to be my question. We at the desk, sometimes we try to paint a picture. What is a team that's winning and a team that's losing? You now have experienced the two extremes in a very short time. You dominated the world in 2022 at the beginning two tournaments a little bit more complicated. From your inside perspective, what's the difference between the phase that's winning and the one that's struggling a little bit? Where is it the difference? Yeah, I think we, we kind of evaluated yesterday. Uh, I think the, the prime force we had this whole season was we always played like we're in the lead. Faceland always played like up 8 CO, even though we're down 0-8. Okay. And what I like the most is tournament, we didn't back down from that. We tried to go for the duels against Navi. We tried to play the style we have. And if you don't hit the shots, it's very easy to kind of like, we are getting read by the opponent, but what if you make that kill, the, ro the, the opponent don't read us, right? So I think it's 5% of everywhere, and that's why I always hate to, to kind of pinpoint what's wrong. Yeah. So we are maybe getting read a little bit. Maybe we did 5% more new setups. Maybe we need 5% more individually, and then 5 more initiative. But everything like that comes in, in fatigue. I feel like you're not playing at your 100%. And you don't have practice to reach that 100%. Yep. So what I normally do for tournaments, like two weeks before a tournament, I slowly increase my practice all the time. Okay. But after coming home for Dallas, three days, 100% practice <laughs> and going to blast. Um, but it's not an excuse. Everybody has the same situation. But when we have gone deep that so many times and we have lot, used a lot of energy at Katowice still, mm -hmm. like that was a very fatigued tournament for us with not knowing who is playing. Um, so yeah, I think we have our work cut out for us to, to end the season on a high note. And do you feel that as a captain now, you have these two weeks, you have Cologne obviously in the horizon. 
Do you think it's your special responsibility to make sure everyone in the group arrives with the, the right mindset, that they don't let these losses affect them too much, not overthink the situation? Is that your specific task? I, I think it's me and uh, Robin's task to, to kind of make sure, okay, how is everybody feeling? Um, I don't think we start switching positions and stuff like that. No, that's, always no. the, that's always <laughs> the dangerous part, like, where are you getting the impact and where are you not getting the impact? So, so yeah, I think it's our, our task to keep the, the voice a little bit down and, and hear what people have to say. And, and then, obviously, for the new season, we can, we can work on new stuff. Take a look at the screen right here, Kerrigan, right? Rain with the 88 score. I think everyone, including myself, maybe even including you, were a bit surprised that he's in such a great shape. Obviously, the major was fantastic by Rain. You played with him for many, many years. How is he like as a teammate, you know, behind the scenes? Because he seemed like a very calm dude, but you know him better than anyone. Uh, for me, he's the loyal soldier. So if I say go B, and somebody's saying maybe we should go A, he say go B, Finn says B. You know, he's this kind of guy that, that you... He always follows the lead, he always goes to stuff. And I think, I think the team realized at the major what a confidence Rain is, because he spreads confidence to the whole team. He just goes to the peaks. So even twist out of game, I feel confident just watching Rain play, because the way he plays the game, the way he sees the game, and yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, but what I love the most, he always goes for it. Because, uh, but the worst thing is to have an intro fragger who has a good period, goes for it all the time, one bad game, two bad games, he doesn't go for it. The whole dynamic of the team changes. But with Rain and me, I don't think it never changes. We always go for stuff, we always create the space. Sometimes we create more space, sometimes less space. And that's why the teammates, with our teammates, have to kind of finish off the job. I wanted to ask a question about Rops as well, specifically for you, because it's been so interesting, not only to see his development as a player, but the fact that, you know, you were one of the in-game leaders that was bringing him up when he was a young uh, pr prospective star uh, as well. How much of development have you seen in Rops? I mean, going onto that major grand final stage, that must have been a pretty incredible moment for him. Yeah, I think so. I, obviously, I think I've been a guide for him in that sense that how you see the game, how you move forward, how you play as a team. But everything inside the game, that's all himself. He's working really hard. I don't want to take credit for anything of that. But I think... By having me as a leader, he feels he can just play his own game, he could go through his duel. And I remember at the beginning when I played with him, he was a little more passive than now. Because like, if you see 2017, 18 uh, interest stats, they're completely different nowadays than they were. And I think that's because how he sees the game differently now. Kerrigan, after you won the major, I got a little bit scared in the sense that I was I was fearing perhaps that you would maybe retire, right? You've been through everything. You tried everything. Now you're talking about winning Cologne, winning Katowice, winning the major in the same year. If you were to win Cologne, are, are you looking at retirement? Are you still super, super motivated to continue? I, I think it all depends on where I am in my life. I think priorities is kind of set now. I want to be the best uh, version of myself. I, and that's the funny thing. I talk to Robin the other day. I feel like I get better in Vigil every day. But the scene also get better in Vigil every day, so yeah. it's very hard. And I think I've just been part of many meters. I've been part of the utility, the strategy, the slow pace years, the fast pace years. And right now, I'm, we in FaceNet are creating the meter, right? We are looking at us, how we play, how we do it. And if you see Enns is kind of playing the same style as us, and they're also a really great team at the moment, right? So I don't see any future right now where I stop. Um, we don't know in two years, three years, one okay. year, I don't know. And for me, it's the most important thing. If I wake up one day and I don't feel it, then maybe it's time to stop, maybe it's time to do something else. But right now, I enjoy every moment. And especially when I think about last year, how tough it was being here now. And maybe I have a tough day next year, but I know I can come back again. So I've always come back in my career. Yeah, you talk about tough time. And before you won that major with Pace, there was this story up in the air that, you know, Kerrigan still lacking that major. He's had tough times. Astralis, that was almost, and then it didn't work out. Pace, first generation, and then it didn't work out. I know that the lineup means a lot, the players you have, but just within yourself, did you feel like you had something different at that time when you made the major? You as an individual, you as a player, as a captain, was there something different, something you have learned along the way? I think, I think the key thing for me was looking at the major as another tournament. I remember in the beginning of my career in 2016, 17, 18, oh, winning the major, setting a legendary myself as a legendary in the IGL. I thought to myself, I see all the spots where people don't win the big titles, but they're still a gold or legendary of the game. So I thought to myself, maybe I never get the major. Okay, then I win all the trophies there is in the, in the, in the circuit, right? Then I want catchers like, okay, if I don't win the major, at least I got the catchers, and now I got the major and the catchers, right? So when I was there, I lived in trophy, all the thoughts I had for like many years, they just disappeared in that sense, like, okay, it was just another trophy in the end. <laughs> but obviously after you could feel you won the major, the hype, everybody's congratulating you. So, so obviously the few days after I could feel actually I did it, you know? Is that yeah. something you have with you right now? Like you, the sense of establishment, you know, you've made it. Is that something that no. is related to the title? Not at all? No, no, it's no. gone It's gone after a yeah. few days? Yeah, because like we went into Dallas, we went into this tournament. I'm like, okay, 
people want a challenge, people want to show that the major was a fluke, okay, then I need to bounce back. Yeah. You know, that's that's how I think. I don't settle myself. I know one day I will settle myself and say, this is it, this is done. But right now I'm just focused like, oh, this is not good enough. I need to improve, you know? So that's, that's how my mind works. So it's the final of Cologne, that is your goal, or winning Cologne is it's, your goal as well, yeah? I think it's part of my goal. Yeah. Like, it's always dangerous to say, this is my goal. That's just what I did with the major. It's part of my goal to be known as one of the most legendary IGLs that took the many players to the world and be the best friend of herself. Maybe I'll do it another team in one or two years. Who, who knows, right? I want to be a special one. And by winning Cologne, that would make me even more special, right? But not winning it, they have to win something else. You said it yourself, maybe you're playing in another team in a year or two from now. Could you ever see yourself return to Danish Counter-Strike? Obviously, you're now in an English-speaking team and you have been within the Danish Counter-Strike scene for a long time. Would you sort of come back at some point, you think? It all depends on where I am in my career and where, where I am in my life. I think maybe people ask, I'm going to coach, what I'm going to do after. I have no idea. Like, uh, yeah. what I know for sure is that once I'm done playing, then three months, think about life, what I want to do next, <laughs> because I'm this kind of guy, if I see something and I motivate myself, I'm not giving up until it's reached. And the same goes to CS now. Maybe I'll go back to Danish CS at some point, maybe not. We but it all you. depends if, if I can become, if I still believe I'm the best IGL, else I'm not going to play. All right. But it's been, speaking of IGLs, um, I want to pivot the conversation to the grand finals that we're going to be seeing play now. Particularly as you went up against Na'Vi uh, with that electronic in the helm as well. Um, I think we're all incredibly surprised, uh, really impressed with what he's been delivering so far as in the game leader, having to pivot, you know, so quickly into that role as well. Yeah, I think obviously he's the best frag in IGL yeah, right now. Crazy, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but but electronic is the best frag in IGL right now. We can all agree on that. He's insane. But. I think we have to wait and see for, for if they continue with him. Yeah. I think it's always easy, easy in that way to pick up the IGL and just try to figure something on the, on the way, right? We had no information about Navi. So it was very hard for me to repair and they had a lot of time to repair. And I think that showcased a lot, right? So I, I think we have to wait and see because I think right now they're just filling in the gaps and, and doing their best and, and he did a great job for sure. Yeah, speaking of this, this grand final coming over, do you have, I'm not going to say prediction because that's the word we always use, but do you have a gut feeling about how the grand final might go, one-sided, something competitive, something tight? I think it's going to go to to overtimes, at least one of the maps, and I yeah. think it's going to be tight third map as well. I think people might underestimate Vitality. This is the first time some yeah. of the players are on the stage. They feel it again. They feel the 5% extra playing in a stage. Mm -hmm. And now it's been here, and I don't know how good Navi is, but... If the Navi against us shows up on the stage, yeah. then obviously this is a fast, uh, fast game. But, but they look also a little bit shaky against OG. Um, and we never know about Navi's map pool with a new IGL and, and so on. So probably Vitality is going to challenge that. Yeah, I wanted to ask your opinion about Vitality. It's been a, an enigma for us at the desk for these six months, trying to understand what was going on and why it wasn't working. And then when they had that victory versus Ents, we thought we saw a new face for Vitality. We thought it could be like a day click for them. Is that something as a player that you can identify or relate with, you know, that one victory that opens up doors that you hadn't opened? Or are we just being too romantic and we are seeing things that aren't here? I know I have, I have this always feeling with teams. Once they, like, in their heads, they could never be the top 10 team. They said themselves, right? The second you do it, like, we could actually win Ents. That means we could win everybody else, right? And the same thing is, like, with teams like Ents. Once they win that one trophy, they're going to be a dangerous team. Because then they realize as a team, we can actually win the tournament instead of thinking we want to win the tournament. So they changed the mindset of the player. And I think that's what happened with Vitality. We want to be the top 10 team. Then they did. OK, now we want to win the tournament. Now we can win the tournament. So I think the mentality of the team and the environment of the team, instead of having bad mood after the game, they have a good mood. And suddenly the whole thing is better, right? And I think that's what we always wait for with, with these teams that are doing bad for a few months. Kerrigan, they don't want to put you on the spot. They don't want to ask for our predictions, but I do. Who do you think is going to win that grand final? I think I think Vitality is going to show up and Cyber is going to have a, a AD bomb. Ooh. There we go. Oh, I damn. Love that. I, I love would that. love to see Can that. Can we get him more? I love that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a feeling. I think this is Cyber time. Yeah. Like, Cyber had a rough rough start to the year. He came back really good at the major, really good in these tournaments. But the team wasn't there. Now the team around him is there. I saw the way they played, they play good. Um, but yeah. I, I think Saif is going to surprise us here. Yeah, I'm really hoping uh, that he will. I'll I mean, simple it, going up against Iwu, that's, that's already <laughs> enough for me. I, I'm really excited to see that. Show match beforehand, though. Tuscan, big fan of that map, or? 
Haven't been, on the, map. Haven't been <laughs> on the map yet, so... We well, don't have strats? <laughs> Should we cancel uh, yeah. everything? No, 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 I have uh, good strats. Uh, cool, cool. 1.6 strats. I know I where to play. I have a lot of highlights on that map. Keeping it vintage. <laughs> I like that, Karagran. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us up here. Really looking forward to seeing you in that show match. We're going to be throwing things over to a quick break. When we are back, Dexter is actually going to be joining us up here before we dive into that show match. <laughs> I feel like the dog on the horse is, is definitely one of them. I was being, I was being mocked for, what, like six months straight for saying dog on the horse. If this team wants to involve in just being a dog on the horse, dog on the horse, dog on the horse. You do, you do give us some great phrases, mate. I, I say a lot of stupid <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my one's easy. You gotta think of the recent one. Uh-huh. Manasi. And that was good. It might be I did throw it around, like that was pretty terrible. That was good. But just because like the reactions we had from like Alexi, Hunter, Jackson, Arthur's right, their faces and how they went through it. And obviously the, the shots he was hitting was just like unacceptable. They didn't believe it, right? It was no. so good they didn't believe it. I'm, I'm going to pull in the, the device DD one on overpass. I oh, believe that was yeah, at a blast event yeah. as well. Like absolutely absurd that he got away well, with it. Exactly, yeah. absolutely absurd. It was. I think it was against Vitality. Uh, outrageously stupid played by them, but the fact that he hit those shots, that was insane. Oh, I need to think about that. I haven't even got a clue. Ooh. I remember, I remember the Vitality loss to 90. I felt like that was absolutely, you know, un unheard of. Game RP well. Games last game for Vitality it was supposed to be like a, a farewell tournament for him, yeah. you know, a nice way of going out, and then they ended up losing to a team that, to to be honest, you know, most players and, and most people out there watching Counter Strike never heard of. So that, that was, was a shocking sad. moment to me. That was really sad. I can't think of any shocking moments by myself. I got nothing. I'm just gonna roll on your one. Having to work with you is pretty shocking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time Na'Vi loses yes, again. Say, every, time, every time you cry like a baby in the green room because Na'Vi is losing, that's, yeah, that's, always a sad that's the best moment for me. Oh, no, yeah, you guys get to enjoy it, I get to sit there and be yeah. sad. Oh, do you know what mine is? Mm. The last Vitality one when we did the World Finals, remember Apex was crying with me and like, ah, yeah. bro, that killed me because like, I saw he was getting emotional. I've had two of them actually, I've had that with Device as well, remember? True. I got it for LIP when they got eliminated. I, I feel you could say heartbreaking for the, the Apex one, but it was also kind of beautiful in a sense, right? Yeah, it was the last nice moment, yeah, right? exactly. Okay. But like it was heartbreaking because you think like yeah. that's the last French lineup we had, you know, there was no other top tier French lineup. Good, good shout, you know, heartbreaking would still be RPK playing his last game of Vitality losing to 90 for me, but, but yeah. <laughs> so he's going to roll that one back Yeah, yeah that's, that was terrible. But also the device would make sense, right, because he wanted to be there, he wanted to have some success and that was like, with the NIP boys, it was a big letdown. He was just, he was choked up and obviously going through a lot of stuff and we still don't even sadly have him back now. set to be going down here in the Altus Arena. Carrigan departs from our desk and now we have Dexter joining us up here for a little bit of a chat before we get into that show match. Uh, slapping people both in and outside of the server. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm ver it's very amazing feelings to feel these people, this crowd. It's amazing. I'm happy. I, I, it's a pleasure for me to be here, to see these people, to see you guys as well, to see the best teams in the world and it's a pleasure. Listen, I want to get it out of the way because I know this guy has been waiting for it for a long, long time. He would love to receive a slapster slap from you. Can you, <laughs> can you make that happen? Yes. Can you get of that? Course, can you get it happen? Yeah? For Just you, give me of like course. a strong one. Oh, that was... oh that's Can I get a, one too? Yeah, of course. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Oh, that hurts, man. I, I mean, we were, gonna, we were having a conversation about this. Yes. You, were you willing to give me a slap, Dexter? Yes, I will, but not so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Always the gentleman. Oh, oh, that was, yeah. That was cute. Ouch. So that's hard. Cute. So hard. How, how did you guys fare with that? I feel the power of the AWP. Maybe yeah. I'm getting there because I didn't have that when I was playing. Yeah. Really play uh, right if I got instead of me, you will destroy no, everyone. I, do, I wouldn't want to do that. The public here, they deserve to see you, man. <laughs> I, they've seen me enough, and that was not so great. Now it's. Much better to see you. How's Flames doing, man? Th yeah. That was a proper slap, man. If, if you did that 30 times in my hand, I'd be done for. Just look. I'm hitting him slap. 
uh -huh. after he's hitting headshot. Okay, okay, okay. Headshot machine, you said it helped him flick better yes. as well. I yes. think you found the magical combination. But we uh, have working uh, like that as well. <laughs> it, so they should be happy. <laughs> I mean, for, for you, Dexter, just talking about uh, you, your career as a whole, I mean, in recent months, huge trajectory for you, obviously, making it to the to the grand stage uh, back in Antwerp for the major as well, making it to the stage here. How, how proud are you of your performance, first of all, coming through these months? I am proud of my performance because uh, it was like a very, surprise, a very big surprise for me that OG invites me to play here. And uh, I was thinking about it. I didn't have time. I didn't have a lot of time to think, to go or not. So I decided, yes, I want. I want to be here. I want to be in the stage and to make it. I'm happy. And I understand that I can bring for some any other teams uh, who invites me right now uh, something that will help them to be uh, good on Tier 1 Counter-Strike. So I'm happy that I can show my performance everywhere. Yeah, I bumped into you in the lobby when I think you were just arriving or you've yeah. been here for a day or so. You said you've literally known three days in advance, have one day practice, one day of travel uh, yeah. as well. The fact that you guys make it onto the stage, incredibly impressive. Yes, and we want like Navi and Tens, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. They have two new players. I am standing who plays uh, first time on, on the land with them and uh, international team on the land. And we make these results. And after we finished yesterday, I say, guys, it's, uh, it was a pleasure for me to play with you, to speak with you, to see you first time in real life. And uh, you should be happy for these results. And how was it speaking internationally, right? How was it being on an English speaking team? Because I could imagine that's something new for you. And I could imagine it's kind of tough, especially in the pressured moments. Uh, in first game, it was a bit harder. Uh, but after I, I adapted, and that's good. Uh, I mean, I don't have problems with English uh, from young age because I was uh, learning it by myself. Mm -hmm. If I don't know something, I'm asking. Okay. If uh, I find something that I don't know, I try to remember it and uh, use it. That's cool. it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, we always talk about how it is complicated sometimes for a team to have a stand-in. Could you tell us a little bit how you talked with Nexa? What was the organization? Did he tell you, Dexter, you do whatever you want? Or did he have some roles for you? What was the, the plan with Nexa? Uh, so when I joined uh, the team, I say, guys, I can do this, 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 and this. And uh, they say, OK, bro, in our team, you will have this role where you can do whatever you want. OK. So use what you want, just say for us, and we will just adapt it for you and play like that. So yeah, Nexa and coach just uh, did everything to make these results happen, because if they will give me mantra rolls, I think it's going to be much harder for me and for them as well, because I'm, I will not going to be so fast and adapt for this role. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. Um, what were the main difference between what you like to do and what Mentu is doing? Like maybe a bit, uh, bit more aggressive, or what was the main difference? As, as I, I think it's big difference. Okay, I'm uh, way more aggressive than other snipers. Uh, like I think uh, here in the CS scene, only like people like Simple or Zaivu can be in the same way as me. Okay, other people uh, from the top teams uh, like to play more safety and uh, be more supportive. Uh, for me, it's, uh, I don't care, does I will take AK and run or I will play with Op and hold my teammates. Dexter, where do you see yourself? You, you strike me as a very honest kind of guy and you said it right here, only Simple and Saivu can dictate the game they do. Do you consider yourself to be up there or do you consider yourself to have the talent in, in one day to be able to challenge the Saivus and challenge the Simples of the world? I think uh, I'm already challenging them. But uh, I need more experience. On this tournament, I look on every single map that I played and I see the mistakes that I did. So right now in player break, I will have time to fix that and work on it. That's it. I think I'm not on the same level as Simple and Zaivu right now because they are playing um, in very micro moments. They play much better than I and I should work on it. And I think I can be on the same level or be even higher. Okay, and, and, and for your future, right? I, I guess you don't know where you're where you're going, you, you don't really know what's what's going to happen. But do you see yourself play on more international teams or could you see yeah. yourself go back to, uh, to the CS region? Uh, as I said in the interview, I'm looking only on international teams right now, yeah. except all of Navi. And I'm talking about Navi because of the players that I see, they played very good, they're very smart and uh, it will be a pleasure for me to play with them or play with uh, other international teams. I look only on Europe. And why is that? Uh, because uh, I don't see any other teams uh, in CIS that I can join. Like, uh, especially I can not join Navi as well, but I'm, I can say the word, like, it's like my dream, like, sure. you know, yeah. when I yep. was young. Uh, cloud Nine's closed it, and uh, Shiro and me, it's like two different ways of playing <laughs> Okay. Uh, 
VP is James, he's caller. I yep. don't want to join instead of caller. Uh, so that's it. All other teams, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's not so competitive. In Europe, I can find more options for myself, and I see good players here. So I would like to test myself in the international. Yeah. That's good. And I think it's like everywhere in sport. You are joining the Europe team, the Europe organization, and you are finding uh, like another level for yourself. And I want to taste it for myself. Yeah. We'd love to have you. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I really hope you stick around. I want you at the top level. How do you spend time now? Uh, looking for a team. How do you maintain individually your level? What's your routine right now? Actually, I will not gonna lie. After I leave Spirit, I didn't play CS for okay. five days. Uh, here, I just have like one or two hours of practice and uh, one day with a team of full practice. Uh, after this tournament, I think I don't have to stand in for anyone else. I will have player break for myself for first time in my whole life. Ooh. So okay. I want to just feel it. Hope, hope, hope you can have rest, good rest. I already asked some experienced players, how should I have uh, good rest for myself? Mm. Because it's uh, important to don't waste this time uh, and be ready for uh, tournaments after player break. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you feel now mentally that you don't exactly know what's going to happen? Is, there, is it a tough time for you or do you just take it as an opportunity to relax a little bit? What's, uh, what's your mindset okay. about this? I can say uh, the words that I say to myself and say for everyone who is closest to me. I'm confident in my deciders. What I decide with spirit, I'm confident with that and I'm happy with that. I don't uh, feel bad because of it. Uh, when, I when I joined Espada, I was no one. And I make this team, I was the uh, one with Finnegan who was uh, staying in roster until we qualify for the Rio Major. That was cancelled. I joined Spirit, they make to top 10. And I think uh, I am the big part of this uh, achievement. And uh, I stay with Spirit when they put up young players. We qualify for semi-final Major. I'm here with international team. I was not uh, ready for that. But I say yes, I was not scared. I'm confident in myself and all what I'm looking for is just be better and better from each day to each day. And uh, I hope, I believe in myself and I hope to be on the same level as uh, Zaibu and Simple or Nico, to be destroyer of any teams <laughs> and work on it. That's I what that. I want from this game and I want to see these people who is cheating for me because <laughs> I never feel that these people <laughs> is cheating for me in semis. <laughs> I play against Face, I played against uh, Navi <laughs> yesterday <laughs> and everyone is screaming simple. That's cool, yes. it's amazing. I am taking these emotions inside of me but in one day I hope everyone will start to scream Dexter. <laughs> that's it. Listen, you continue down the path you laid for yourself right here. It's just a question of time. And yeah. I've seen a lot of fans already yelling yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks You're doing that. a tremendous job, man. Yeah, yeah, no doubt the impact that you've had on all of the teams that you've been a part of in terms of those lineups. Um, you mentioned Na'Vi, obviously they're going to be in that grand final. We asked Carrigan for his predictions. Now he has a sneaky feeling it's going to be a Zywoo pop-off day today. You okay. agree with that or do you think Na'Vi's going to take it? Uh, I think Na'Vi's going to take that. I don't know why, but I feel that. Like. If, uh, if uh, three of their players will uh, turn on, it's going to be much harder for Vitali Vitality to win this uh, final. I look on the yesterday match and I understand that, yes, if Navi will turn on, it's going to yeah. be much harder than it was against Rito. You know Sonda Young better than most of us. Can you try to put a few words on him? He's the stand-in for Navi coming in and, and getting a great chance of his career to establish himself as a player. Is, do you think he's a great player and do you think he's cut for it for Navi? Uh, first of all, uh, I think in uh, eSport you should say not only about player, you should say about people. Uh, Sam Young is a great teammate, yeah. he's a good person. I never have something bad from him. He was never uh, been toxic. So it's a pleasure for him. He, he got invited in Navi two times, as I remember, and two times it was disaligned. So it's his dream and I'm happy for him. Right now he's playing very good. He is playing in his role. I think the most important thing that Navi need to think about after this tournament that they replaced him by Boomage. And Boomage was much, uh, much more aggressive and he was trying to take a lot of space for Navi. If they want to bring him uh, with the roster for uh, like future, he ne they need to change roles and think who will be this man who will take space for team and who will do this role. Uh, as a player, individually, he's very good. He's working a lot. Uh, as I know, Navi doesn't have a lot of time to practice for this tournament and he was playing by his, himself a lot of uh, time. So I'm happy for him that he's in Grand Final and uh, especially, I will not gonna lie, I love Zeevu, I love, lo I love Apex, I love this Danish uh, 
poor people. Yeah, <laughs> I, I should don't uh, don't forget about Zonic. But uh, in this final, I I, I will be fan of Navi team. Well, Dexter, it's been an absolute pleasure having you up here on the desk. Thank you so much Thank for you your words. Much. And I'm so looking forward to seeing what you're going to be delivering throughout the rest of the year as well. But we have got a show match coming up with Dexter in it too. But now it is time to be kicking off the show here in the Altus Arena. It's my first time here in Portugal. I want to hear you blow this roof off. Lisbon, make some noise! <laughs> are you guys ready for this show match? Lisbon, are you ready for this show match? Na'Vi took on OG in an epic rematch for a spot in the grand final. It started on Dust 2 and Na'Vi demolished OG without giving them a chance. Then we moved on to Inferno and it looked like it could have been a Na'Vi victory, but OG were able to pull it out the bag. Ending on Mirage, it was a clash all the way through, an 8-7 first half and it looked like it was going to be even, but Na'Vi stepped it up again. Our second semi-final and another rematch, Vitality took on G2. It started off on Dust 2 and G2 looked to be able to try and take it, but Vitality once again were able to pick it up. Then moving on to the tried and tested Inferno of G2, they demolished Vitality, not letting off the gas at all. It looked oh so easy. But it certainly wasn't going to be easy when we moved on to the epic decider of Nuke. It was back and forth, it was close the whole way, and although at one point G2 had the lead, Vitality, they managed to sting that little bit harder and grab themselves their first grand final spot with this roster. delivering in every aspect yesterday coming into today's coveted grand final here at the blast premier spring finals of course navi taking on og in that revenge matchup for the ages og managing to make navi bleed in certain aspects but navi looking in that place in that grand final despite coming in here with a new end game leader and a stand -in. yeah a final opportunity for us to give props to og yeah what they were able to do against navi i think a few people thought they would just roll over and navi would steam the same way they did against phase wasn't the case actually wasn't the case we had a competitive game and all the credits to OG. Even the two maps OG lost. I know the scoreline was 16-9, 16-10, to 10, but there were moments in both those games where OG could have made it even closer. They deserve an awful lot of praise, and I think they played a good tournament. And Dexter, we just had him up here. He made a name for himself once again on an international speaking lineup. Yeah, I'm so excited to see, I mean, the future of this whole OG lineup as well, particularly with the new, uh, two new stars, rather, coming into things. And also Dexter going forward. We're not sure exactly where he's going to be landing, what team he's going to be going on to. But yeah, huge stuff from them and the boys on the stage. Vitality also managed to claim some sweet, sweet revenge over G2 to net themselves. Uh, I mean, it's the first time they've been playing in front of the crowd in this iteration True. of Vitality. And we were just saying the amount of days, the amount of years it's been since they've made a grand final in front of the crowd as well. Yeah, from statement to statement for Vitality first, there was that game against Ants that we didn't really suspect or see coming. Remember Ants 
grand favorite here coming as second best team in the world and then they go up against G2 and finally they take them down. Finally they experience that stage, they experience that energy and we had so many cutthroat rounds, rounds where a millisecond, a millimeter would actually decide the fate of it and I think this was the epitome of what Counter-Strike is supposed to be. Moments that make a scream. They're overcoming their problems right now. That's the most positive thing I've said yeah. about Vitality for a long, long time. We even interviewed Magix during the tournament saying that the communication is still a massive issue within Vitality. They're switching from friends to English to Danish from time to time. But the fact of the matter is that they may only be playing at 70, 80% right now and still they're able to make it into the grand final. This is the progress. This is the potential we've all been talking about when it comes to Vitality for a long, long time and we finally get to see it. Heartbreaking though for G2 once again, unable to even edge themselves closer to claiming that first trophy as a squad. Yes, it is heartbreaking. And, and Alexi B had a couple of words for us after her loss and, and I actually, I share his sentiment. He said, you know what? I don't even understand. I felt like we were in control. I felt like I was calling a great game of Counter-Strike and I echo the sentiment. I thought G2 did a great game, but sometimes Counter-Strike can be very cruel. Again, it was a game of details. Few clutches went the way of Vitality. We maybe would have want to see more from this guy right here. I think there's something I mentioned in a pre-show. Nico in the highest of highest of matches, we're talking deep playoffs, has a tendency to not deliver the type of Nico performance we would hope. That could have been that could have been the one thing that makes a difference. Yeah. But I don't want to pin everything on him. I don't no. think that would be fair. No, and he started out so well. The very first half of that matchup, he pulled off a true rating, a 2.0 rating on the CT side, absolutely destroying his opponent on the CT side, and then he went missing. That was part of the problem, of course. But I agree with Alexi B. I agree with Nico as well. On Twitter, he said, I feel devastated in a sense, but I feel that we're getting better, that we were actually on the same page. And to me, that's a positive thing to see the best in a bad loss. Well, we are going to get to see one of Nico's highlights in our CS Money Play of the Day. But coming up at play number three, I believe we have uh, Saiwu Mania. We're starting with one of the hero of yesterday. It's Saiwu with the scout in a so groundbreaking round for Vitality, putting headshots on headshots on headshots and resetting the momentum for them. We talked about Nico and we are going to keep talking about Nico in the future as well. This man is one of the best players in the entire world and we're getting an example us of why right here. With the AK-47 tapping away, control and clinical and as I said, a more than 2.0 rating on that CT side. And I'll pull out your bingo cards and count how many times I'm going to say simple today because it starts right now with this incredible highlight with the AK. You can see how fast and precise he is at the same time. Absolutely disgusting work. And what's even crazier is I'm pretty sure we're going to have something similar today. It's, yeah. it's not a one-time thing. I'm so excited. that Zaiwu Simple going head-to-head oh. -head in this grand final for the ages, of course, coming up later on today. That's going to determine who will be lifting that coveted trophy here in Lisbon. Um, a lot of storylines coming into that one as well, particularly when we're throwing it back to the last time we were here in Lisbon. Navi narrowly missing out on lifting the trophy. They came second. Magic's going to freeze. Uh, uh, felt the, the, the sweet taste of lifting. That. It was more than 900 days since we've seen yeah. the Green Magics and Sonic on the big stage, and now we get to see them in a grand final. There's some grot matches, there's a plenty, plenty of storylines that we can dive into for you. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, we're going to be dissecting that one as we head ever closer to that grand final. But first, we've got a show match to come at you guys here in the arena. It's Team Portugal taking on the Blast Dream Team. And coming up, this break.
fight with you. The Blast team, a dream team rather, taking on the hometown heroes in Team Portugal here to open up the final day of action in the Altus Arena in the Portuguese capital. Uh, both sides of the equation, we have some interesting names coming into the mix. Let's start off with the dream team. We've had Carrigan, we've had Dexter up here. Uh, they're joining a list of other three names with Rops actually being voted uh, by the Blast TV users. Oh, that's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. We were talking with Carrigan, and this man is taking this dream, oh, this dream team, this show match very seriously. He's got them strategies for yep. 1.6 on Tuscan, the map we're about to play, that's going to be lit. He's been rolling back his notebook. Rolling you know, I'm you. sure he keeps a library of his notepads with all the strats in. Probably, probably. I'm curious to how he's going to use uh, Manisi and Dexter at the same team. You know, <laughs> the double up seven on, on Tuscan. We have a guy in throw middle, we have a guy in short. You know, just throw them away and throw them in and in the mix. I love to see Manisi play a game like this as well. Because yeah. he's one of those kids who just has so much awesome raw talent for the game that he's definitely going to come up with some fun how, stuff. How old was Manisi when people were playing Tuscan? Uh, Why did you do the what? maths? Why do you even need probably. to put that on us? <laughs> <laughs> Like, why? Why do we need to ask how old was he? Yes, we get it. I was probably playing the game. He wasn't born. Yes, we get it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, probably. Actually. I mean, Savage Maniac. Do you like Tuscan as a map? I did. I did like Tuscan yeah? very, very yeah, much. Yeah. yeah, I have a great fan of the map. I've been missing it ever since, hoping to make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, we are playing the new version today as well, yeah. I believe. Give me, be me all the Tuscan. It was the best map in Counter-Strike Source, which obviously is the best version of Counter-Strike. Oh, oh, we're, we're starting this debate right no, now. We're, not, we're, we're doing not. this. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to make myself side. more unpopular yeah. than needed, but Tuscan, <laughs> both in 1.6 and Source, was a fantastic map. A Team Portugal as well. We've got a very interesting oh, really uh, uh, names, a, a set of names, rather, uh, coming up in this one. There's a few people that I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Um, I actually saw Fox, I believe it was, in Starbucks did. earlier. He had his caramel macchiato getting his day started off. I'm sure he's got that. He's got that. Hey, I'm not talking him, man. I get my cappuccino in the mix. 99 ratings across the board for all these guys as of well. Of course they do. Pure firepower. Yeah, pure firepower. Some of these player matches, we played against them many, we many did. years ago, right? And they were actually skilled players. It's always been with the Portuguese players that there's always been a lot of raw talent. They never haven't really made it to the big of the big stages. We saw Saw as well. They were super, yeah, super yeah. close making the major. Heartbreaking situation right there. But there's always been an awful lot of talent when it comes to Portuguese Counter-Strike. And I cannot wait to see what they come up with. For as long as Counter-Strike exists in Portugal, Fox is going to be around somewhere yeah. playing Counter-Strike. Yeah. I don't think there's ever going to be a timeline in which he doesn't play in any capacity. I think he's got his signature, his DNA linked to Counter-Strike forever. I've absolutely loved this crowd as well, because they've been incredibly fair to both the teams. Yeah. But I feel like maybe, uh, just maybe, there might be some slight, slight bias. You think so? I think Kerrigan, I mean, what, what, what makes them? you say that, yeah? I, I mean, hometown heroes going up against, I mean, a lot of pro players that they've loved. You think they can so, cheer against Kerrigan? Is that, no, is that what's God, the hardest way? against Kerrigan. Against feel... Kerrigan for your hometown, against Kerrigan? I just feel sorry for Dexter, man. He just wanted to try once to be cheered for, and it's not going to happen this time. I'm going to have the stage for me. <laughs> <laughs> who, who else are we looking at from Team... Who are you looking at from Team Portugal coming into oh, this? We've got, some, we've got some great names coming into this. I think Murdo is, is, is always an interesting yeah. prospect, right? I've seen him play, and i played against him many, many times. Always thought to myself that he's a great rifler, a great aimer, so I want to see him uh, shoot some hits against Manasi and the boys. Well, let's get this show on the road. It's time to get our show match underway here in the Altus Arena. Então, é o Fox. Na pá, temos aqui um problema. Uh, o Batman fez uma equipa nova, mas não é uma equipa qualquer. É uma equipa, uma super equipa. Uma super equipa. Pá, temos que voltar a juntar o gangue. Mas não é uma equipa qualquer. Tem que ser a super equipa. Tens o meu número, não tens? Onde estou? Já estou em Lisboa. Vamos.
We've waited for more than 1,200 days. We start for Blast to join us back in Portugal. Because in 2018, the world stopped as we shook this arena. And today, we're gonna do it again. Today, today we'll show the world what we are made of. Today, we will show everyone that we live and breathe Counter-Strike. Today in Portugal, in Lisbon, a new king will rise. Will it be Navi? Will it be Vitality? We don't know. But what I know is that everyone will be part of this day forever. We did it before, but I'm gonna ask you to do it one more time. James, join me on stage for this special moment. Oh, it is special. It's definitely special. And that was incredible what you just did. Yeah, my man. We've done it, so I need you to put your arms to the side. And when we clap, I want you to show everyone your passion for this game. And when we clap, I want you to scream at the top of your lungs, whoosh, and show me your warrior blood from Portugal. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it, Lisbon. Follow me, James. Let's go. This match <laughs> will bring top players of the entire world in one specific team. To the Sultan! Let's jump, jump! To the Sultan! To the Sultan! Hit it! To the Sultan! To the Sultan! To the Sultan! To the Sultan! Are you ready for the one? Yes. Okay. This will be a show match between the top Portugal versus the top. This is the anthem. This is a super team from Portugal. So I'll see you in a few moments. Tag bunch have been put together to create only chaos on the Counter-Strike server. Carrigan, the fearless leader and major champion. Manessi, the fastest flick on the server. 
He might miss a few, but when you know he hits, he hits hard. Jax the Joker, the man who always put a smile on your face. Dexter, the super standing with the hardest slap. And Robs, the major champion, voted in a Blast TV over Sphinx to compete here in the show match. Let's see if this dream team can find success. Times dominating on the server, and he'll want to do it here now. Roman joining alongside him. Teammates, friends, guys that are going to put on one big ass show. PR making it rain from start to finish. And just, well, he's anything but just, as he is looking to take himself a huge victory over some legendary names. Decided where the crowd is. Who's cheering for our dream team? Ooh. Can I? Yeah. Quem está a torcer por Portugal? Manasi, the crowd may not be on your side, but surely you're not going to lose to so many people like this. Amazing crowd. Everyone is on fire, really. <laughs> they are on fire. It's going to be an interesting game, for sure. Interesting game. Have you ever played Tuscan before? No, never. never. It's the first time for me. <laughs> That's going to be some fun for you. Batman's back out, of course. You love the stage, Carrigan. Yes. <laughs> but this crowd's completely against you. You normally get the crowd on your side. Batman is a villain, and that's what I'm today. I'm going to shut this crowd up. <laughs> So these are pretty washed up players, right? I see Fox. I've seen him for 15 years. I competed against him 15 years, never lost. It's not gonna change here in Lisbon. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Shall we take these? Yeah, go for Portuguese, it. Portuguese, in Portuguese. Em Portuguese, mano. Como é que é estar no meio do Altice Arena contra lendas, sendo vocês lendas, pisarem aqui ao pau? Toda a gente conhece, irmão. É incrível. É a melhor sensação do mundo. E isto aqui, só ouvir este público faz-me faz o dia, o ano, a minha carreira. É incrível. Muito obrigado. Fox, já falei contigo ontem. Já deste tapa em algumas pessoas. Mas agora, 5x5, contra lendas. O Kerrigan, o Odia. O que é que tens a dizer sobre isto? Pá, tem sido um... Não vou falar. Uh, já joguei contra alguns deles, várias vezes, uh, frente a frente. Uh, por isso acho que vai ser tranquilo da nossa parte. Eles também já têm a sua experiência. E nós, como portugueses uh, raçudos, vamos, vamos dar a passar, como o pessoal costuma dizer. One more. One more at least. Ok. Agora a questão é, neste mapa, que não é comum, Quanto é que acha que vai ficar? É para ganhar, hein? é para ganhar! É para ganhar! O número, dá-me o um número, consegues? Não, um 16-10. 16-10? 16-10. 16-10. It's the prediction, yeah. Well, I'll let them have that, they can try. But I think the Dream Team's gonna win. Lisbon, you ready for this show match? Oh, 
Wow. Well, <laughs> this is how we get the final stage started. It is, it's the show match that we're at, Jason, oh, yeah. but it feels incredible in here. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen in a show match, especially just a crowd go completely silent for, for one team, just dead silent. That was unbelievable. Obviously, the entire crowd behind the Portuguese team. I, it should not surprise anybody. No, and Kerrigan's playing the heel as well. <laughs> he's, he's evil Batman. It's amazing. Yeah, what a day it's going to be here at the arena. I really can't wait for it, and uh, we'll see if he can shut up the crowd or not. But certainly, it's going to be exciting. There's a lot to come. Um, I mean, we've we've got a, a pretty heavy star lineup coming your way, so it's going to be uphill, I think, for the Portuguese. Yeah, no but I doubt. Think, I think actually the great equalizer is just with you. The interview with Modesty, where he just said, "Yep, I've never played this map. He's probably never seen it whatsoever." You get a lot of players inexperienced on this map, and the other side, a few players who have probably dabbled in this in competitive times. That is gonna, that might be the thing that can bring them closer together. Yeah, you hope so. Maybe if he's, if he's completely unaware where to run and where <laughs> where anything is. And I had a little rumor that some of this has also been changed from maybe even when when sort of we recognized it a little bit. Um, I don't know. Is there, is there still a is there still a sewer tunnel you can go through? Yeah, I haven't quite done the uh, the walkthrough on the uh, on the new mill, but I keep hearing things about it. This is like the tenth edition of Tuscan that we're trying. Or I said the new mill. You said. Yeah, right. I did say the new mill. I haven't seen the new Tuscan yet. This is like the tenth edition that we've gotten of the map. Still desperately trying to get it added to the pool. It's obviously been a fan favorite for years. So yeah, I, to answer your question, I got no idea. Calling it Mill might I believe be, so. I think, your most boomer moment yet, Jason, on broadcast. So It's muscle memory, isn't Incredible it? It's just Mill is ingrained into my, my brain from childhood. Yeah, well, fair enough. We'll let you get away with it. Yeah, so it's going to be a, a bit learning experience for everybody involved, no doubt about it. Um, I think it'll be, it'll, be some, it'll be interesting to see how this will play out. Show matches are notoriously hard to predict, so we're not even going to try. You never know what's coming your way. Now, the teams, how do we get these, uh, th this star lineup uh, assembled this way? Yeah, well, obviously, there were, there were four players picked by Blast for the Dream Team, and the last one uh, was between Rops and another player. The, the viewers on Blast TV throughout the event have been able to kind of select uh, that fifth player to come in. They selected Rops, obviously. They got to vote between two players. Uh, they also got to pick the map. They voted for Tuscan, which is why we're playing Tuscan. And they even on Blast TV were able to vote uh, throughout the show match which bomb site the team is going to attack in the pistol round. So only the offensive team, only the terrorist team is going to know uh, which bomb site that they are supposed to attack that's been selected by the, yeah. by the viewers in Blast TV. So a little bit of input there if, uh, if you're interested in that in the future. And um, as we speak, they are into the knife. They had to find each other first. So a um, little bit of chaos there. <laughs> I'm disappointed Kerrigan's not playing with the mask on. Playing with say. the mask? Yeah, well, the headset might be an issue with the mask on. That might that might have made it a little bit more difficult. You have to commit to the role, I feel like. <laughs> at this point. Just... You got to go all in or not. Okay, so the Dream Team has won the knife round. They're going to select a start on the CT side. It's going to be Portugal. Team Portugal, obviously, at the head of that, Mutiris and Fox going to be leading the way. They get a start on the <laughs> offensive side. The huddle is so stupid. <laughs> oh, that's great. A little bit of huddle to get get themselves warmed up and tune into the match. All right. I mean, just from the looks of what we've seen so far, the map looks beautiful. We've yeah. Got that going for us. Yeah, it's always looked good. It's always been set in a nice little nice little town somewhere, who knows where. Yeah, you'd Italy, wanna, I'd imagine. Yeah, you'd want to visit when the when there wasn't a there like wasn't a battle whole, going on. Yeah, yeah, whole warfare thing happening. Well, the Portuguese team are sat down and hyped up. They're not, they don't need a huddle. How couldn't you be hyped up? How couldn't you be ready to go? 5,000 Portuguese fans behind you the whole time, even for just a show match. This has been, a, that had to have been just an incredible feeling, an incredible welcome into this arena. Yeah. Uh, so I'd, yeah, I know that translates very well at home, but if you get a chance in the future to come to, come to this arena and experience the atmosphere and the passion that's in here, you must do it. Um, it's, it's, yeah, you will never forget it. We certainly didn't last time we were here, obviously. Um, a lot of fans, I've already met people who said they were here the first time. They've been waiting ever since to come back. And yeah. It's, it's so impressive. Yeah, we've been waiting too. We were waiting four years as well. We were all this is just phenomenal to get back. Beautiful city, beautiful culture. It's been fun running around. That fun ends kind of kind of soon, though, as this show match is going to get underway. Last ready up's coming in hot. Yeah, and word is that they need to go to the B bomb side. Again, voted by all of the fans over at Blast.tv. So they're committed to that. Team uh, Portugal, they don't have a choice. We'll see 
how they do it, though. I That's up to them. I can't imagine in any world that any group of Counter-Strike fans would pick a, a team to attack true. anyone That's other than true. B on, the, on a pistol round. If you had the selection, it's always going to be B. That is true. That's a good point. We've been taught for a couple of decades now. That's what it is. So we shall see. I'm already seeing a couple of duelies that are that are being played with here. So we've got uh, some some potential. Let me see if you can even find the B-bomb side on the Dream Team side. Yeah, they might not even know exactly where it's at. And uh, you know that sound, Portugal. You know that sound. Game is going to get started. It's going to get underway. Players have readied up. Pistol round is locked and loaded. Oh, they're getting ready now, aren't they? You can see Kerrigan. He's got his game face on. We're almost live with the show match. It's going to be on Tuscan. Portugal, let me hear you! Let's go indeed. Pistol round, Dream Team on the CT side. Portugal, remember, they have to attack the B bomb site. That's where they're looking to finish, but Dream Team is looking to push down mid and prevent that from even beginning. Here's where you think that old experience. This is a classic push, and already Dexter's forced away. Kerrigan pushed up, is going to be taken down by Fox. First kill for Portugal. Oh, and Robs, he's got two pistols and hitting none of the shots. That's a big problem. But they've committed to what the fans were voting for, so they're going to get the bomb plant down. They're going for it already. Monacy is finding himself up on the scaffolding, looking into the bomb site, and he is, he's here to play. He's ready. It's PR to take him down finally. And back into a two on two. There is no kit currently in place, so they're going to have to speed it up here on the Dream Team side. They're going to be in trouble. And look at this RMN walking in behind. He's got them lined up. The trigger discipline is amazing. Oh, he's oh he got wants his, a knife. Yeah, you must do it. He's picking up a kit, but he has no idea. Iron Man, he's got that cold steel ready for him. <laughs> oh, the discipline is off the charts. It's too late, Jason. It's going to be Team Portugal with the opening round win. Even the kill at the end, some style points for Roman in the 1v1. Portugal up one to nothing. He was ice cold in that one, wasn't he? He had so many options available to him. <laughs> yeah, soak it in, boys. Start loving it, just shrugs it off. Dream Team on the back foot, early second round bye. Yeah. Jax with the scalp. So Rayardi, he's taking some liberties now that he's uh, <laughs> not being restricted by anyone on his team. Swabs with a headshot. A good return right there, that's what we like to see. They're making their way again towards that B-bomb site. They know what it is. Ooh, trying to find Jax as well. They're cleaning it up right now. Only Monacy left, but he is far away from the action even getting that kill. This is a very different map from what I remember seeing last time. This is cool looking. Yeah, a lot of work uh, gone into it, you could tell. Just I making agree. things pretty. Making it pretty, but also... Not too complicated on the texturing in front, right? You can still see people that are getting f faded into the background. Yeah. The things that we all like. This was a top competitive map for a long, long time. Yeah, for so. good reason. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of really, really cool battles on this map. A lot of really cool ideas. Monacy looks like he's flirting with the idea. Oh, dropped by the Mac 10. He's probably just trying to learn the map. And he's like, please don't shoot. Let me figure <laughs> out what this hallway looks like. Can I just go scouting for a little bit and just figure out? Where on earth I am? Well, the third round is coming up, and they're going to buy a couple of, couple of pistols here on the Dream Team side. We've got a revolver out in the field of play. Hell yeah! Monacy with that. I think the, I think the revolver is underrated. Well, you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I got Monacy on my side, Jason. Perfect. Go for Take you. Take that every single time. All right, well, Fox clearing out middle, making sure nobody's pushed up. He's probably had to deal a lot of those pushes. The revolver's going to get its chance at range. Jax is going to go down. Those AKs just way too strong. Another powerful victory in the round for Team Portugal. Quickly down to just Kerrigan. Sneaking in, but they know where he is. Yeah, not going to get a chance. Running around that back line that basically connects A and B and CT spawn all at once, so... If at any point the CTs lose control of this back line, it's, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in real trouble. They might be in trouble even without losing it. They might just be in trouble in general on this map. Three to nothing. Looking clean for Portugal. 
Didn't lose anyone in this previous round. All five players survived. Money built up. Bonus cash brought over. And it's a party here at the Altice Arena. <laughs> it absolutely is. Oh. What a joy. What an honor to be part of. Oh, here we go. Monacy. That could have been a double, but Muterus will take him down right afterwards. They get just in the early volley there. And they're back to check. Yeah, Muterus, he's got the right idea. <laughs> he's going to catch Kerrigan. Heads up play. Importantly, Kerrigan took down his teammate. Fox was behind him, peering up into the B-bomb. Oh, what a shot. Ready for that peak. Access denied for Rops. Just Dexter remaining with Jax, who's got an AWP, not known for his opping. No armor as well. Flashbang over. Missed a chance. Going to go back for another repeat for sure. And there's Muteris cutting off the rotation. Now it's all on Jax the Joker, as Banks called him. Bomb is being planted inside the smoke. Yeah, let's see if we can find him. Oh, he's going to go down to a no-scope. That's a quad kill, I believe, from Muteris. Another attempt. Jax. Oh, back to back no-scopes. And finally... There's a little bit of a return from the Dream Team. Got to appreciate it. First step to silencing the crowd. First one on the board for Dream Team, but only one player surviving. I, I'm not sure. I heard boos at the end. <laughs> I like it. More boos. Yeah. Shut him down. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's it. Don't make them feel at home. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I can do that. I can do that. Okay, okay. let's uh, <laughs> can we do Let's trip first A round. I have a region. Okay, let's go. I will have a Somebody left me here. As you can tell, mic'd up during the timeouts, going to get a little bit of a glimpse into the teams, into the Dream Team comms there as they talk things over. Where is Ramp? To right, to right. I'm not the fucking right. Oh, Karrion. Still calling the shots. Hard to let go of that power once you've got used to it. Exactly. <laughs> Never relinquish it. They go for a catwalk push. Oh, Jax. He's holding on to that AWP. This is this has maybe been a dream of his for a while. <laughs> oh, Fox! He's going to get outflanked in that one. And Monacy and Dexter. A terrifying combination of skill on that side. Two versus four right now. And they're running up the middle. Nice catch from Uterus. He seems to, he's here to play. Should have gone down already. Monacy's now got the AWP. That's a, lot, that's a lot more scary. He's got to turn around and figure out where he's running off to. Oh, look at the timing on that, but PR's got it. Beautiful find, but Dexter's just too much. Unrelenting aggression from Dream Team. Two to three, they close the gap. And Kerrigan can't hear you. <laughs> oh, what a good time. A nice find from Dexter. He was amazing on the desk. It's hard, it's hard not to love him. It's hard not to like Dexter. It's really, really hard not to. Deep smoke for the CT side down mid. Team Portugal relegated back to Tech 9's Deagles. We got some sewer plays from the rats of the Dream Team, but Monacy's going to find the opening pick. Oh, might be overwhelmed here, Carrigan. It's a nice spray down pistols out, but he can't finish it quite off yet. Carrigan get adjusted to the M4A4. Just a little bit early, getting a jump start. Yeah, for the for the upcoming for the update. Possible meta change, yeah. It's not impossible. Well, they get to equalize the scoreline. <laughs> Carrick is in the zone. He's such a ridiculous character. Three to three, round seven. Let's see if Porter can get back on the board. Haven't won a gun round just yet. We've got a shotgun on Jax. A little bit of disrespect coming out with the noob tube. I think Jax is living his best life right now. <laughs> like, I've, I don't have anyone to disappoint here. Like, I, I just, I can do whatever <laughs> I want. Like, Mid-aggression again from Dream Team. Fox to be the one to challenge. He's going to lose out on the initial battle. Muteris steps up to the plate next. There's the shotgun. Kerrigan chimes in with a little bit of help, and Jax is just a distraction. The kills come from the other angle, and suffocating aggression from Dream Team. Yeah, walking into that part of the team mid is a, if they push on either side, they can, they can really sandwich you in there. A lot of fights over the years have been 
settled in that part of the map. Pretty sure there's a crazy famous Neo clip out there somewhere from 1.6 of him getting four headshots with USB or something. Is like that, that Edward? Oh, there's an Edward one as well. Yeah. Maybe Neo has one. Well, yeah, but definitely. There's probably Edward, a lot. Yeah. yeah, you can go way back. Just is alone with the bomb. All by himself. Himself and his 5,000 closest friends tapping away finds Monacy. One versus three. Look oh. how disciplined it is. He's trying. <laughs> Sandwiching him in. Oh, he sees it coming. Still going to go down. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a pause. And let's listen in to some of the comms. <laughs> let's go. Where's he going? Go, go, go. He's, He's going for drills. Okay, I'm going middle. Follow me, very good. Well, I have a weapon. I go here. I go here with you. Well, we're gonna follow. We're middle. Following me or no? We call that a Batman break. Okay, I just need to get out there and flex in the mask. I don't even think that was meant to be part of the show. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But he did it anyway. Good times. Well, they, they spent their time out without any ability to talk anything over. Batman is back, though. Fighting in the middle. Big uh, double kill. And they're going to clean up that round. No problem. They're taking the lead, Jason. They're up five to three. Yeah, they're not even letting him play the game, all this mid-aggression. Just pistols in that round again for Portugal. But man, no chance at shutting any of that down. Guns are back out, five AK-47s on the board for Team Portugal. More aggression? I think yes. I, I think Dream Team is, they're ready. It's gonna have to be up to Team Portugal to try and find a way out. The crowd is still behind them, no problem. We're not lacking in that. And Uterus, yeah, they're taking the fight. A little bit more of a passive setup this time for Dream Team. Two over towards A, two to B, and Jack's hanging around the middle. But look how far up they are. They can actually almost walk in. The bomb is miles away, but they almost have the bomb site. Oh, but the sewer. The sewer just is never going to expect this. Carrick can go for the knife. Oh, be the ultimate. Be the ultimate heal. Just takes the shot. Bomb crosses quickly. Fox, Muterus, and Roman have taken over the A bomb site. There's no access quite yet for the Dream Team, but Kerrigan coming around the flank. Huge fight for Roman to win. Oh, that's a great job, and he picks up Dexter as well. Four versus three, with the bomb down already. Some grenades left on that Portuguese side, so they could do a lot of work here. Monacy, <laughs> he's not sure. Oh, wait, someone must have told him surely. That is a great Molotov, but it doesn't matter. Roman comes in with a kill. He finally goes down. I don't think it's too late for Jax. There's not much he could do right now. Caught with a nade in hand and sent out of the round. Five to four. Team Portugal back in the mix. Yeah, back on the board, handling that flank really well. Countering the call with a push-up kitty. Roman, that's the first shot. That was excellent on a Kerrigan. The follow-up, the spray down as Dexter tries to follow the flank. Oh, he's even added more onto it. What a round from Roman. They love that. Oh, I am seeing the auto snipers. It's, it's a rare sight here, Jason. We don't get to see this all the time. Double orb, double auto sniper. That's a setup and a half. That is quite the loadout. Modesty with a missed shot. That's a tough angle. Very small target. Flashbang, he wants to keep fighting. He's going to go back for more. Yeah, but the auto sniper, when does the smoke is up? That's where the auto sniper does its real work. Rops is the only one playing a clean game. Yeah, over at the B bomb side, hiding in a corner. There's not a lot of room to work now. He does have Jax on the other side. <laughs> That's not quick enough with that weapon, Rops. Nice little boost up here, gonna fall back down behind the barrels. But Carrigan is finding kills. He's out hunting. Yeah, this is working. Yeah, they're locked out. Ooh, Rops gonna keep pushing. Good angle for Just, tucked against the wall. Rops never had any idea. Roman's up next, he's found Kerrigan. Another auto sniper hits the deck, 55 seconds. They've got the whole map available to them, and Team Portugal gonna bail out. Other side of the map, other bomb site. A is open for the taking. Dexter started to figure it out, making his way down 
through that central connector. But they're taking the long way around. Could they maybe run up middle if they wanted to, but... Yeah, they need a good smoke here against these ops. I don't even think they realize. Lack of communication maybe on the Dream Team side. Not calling it out. Bomb's going to be going down. Monacy is almost dead already. So let's see. A lot of places to hide on this bomb site. Yeah, but will you expect this massive flank from Dexter? There is a kid on Monacy, but he's only got three HP. Roman is looking the stud from last round. Quick shot, narrow miss. But he knows exactly where Roman is. That's one as Dexter comes up from behind. If Roman gets pulled out into the open, that's Monacy down. Now they know. Oh, the auto sniper through the box. He's got one and just to find. Oh, the no scope almost lands, but that's a big clutch. Five to five. Woo. They needed that round. I was afraid that that Molotov was going to go even deeper into the corner, but um, no. Smoking off the squeak door instead. Yeah, tied up again. And a little bit of a timeout. <laughs> He's on the stage. Getting the crowd riled up. Yeah, just taking an encore. You gotta love it. After the clutch as well. And why the hell not? You don't get a lot of opportunities like this, so you've got to enjoy while you can. You get as many of those timeouts as you want. Run out there onto the stage and take a bow. 5-5. <laughs> five, five. Round 11 coming in hot, and Dream Team are pretty much out of funds. Yeah, they've been shut down. Crowd is back. They don't even have to boo anymore. Dream Team are collapsing right in front of our eyes, although they are building a little bit of a tower to try and look over. That's, that's creative. Fox, though, not interested. Shutting it down. Oh, off angle from Jax, but Fox has that as well. Two opening kills provided, and again, the A-bomb site is lost. Molotov forces Kerrigan forward. Portugal with complete control of the map. A lot of angles to clear, but Roman will do it anyway. That's not bad. Dexter is on his own, and surely they're going to go hunt for him. Get uh, everything you can right here. He's doing the, something with that MP9, but it's not enough. Portugal are back in the lead. Might be Six time. to five. Might be time for Dream Team to go back to the aggression and push down mid and just shut things down. That was the good run that they had was preventing Team Portugal from moving across the map at all. It's possible as well they need a non-Batman-related timeout <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. You can see here, Blast.TV, if you want to be involved in the action, have some input on how the games go, have some input on how the broadcast goes, head over to Blast.TV. Viewers get to take part in votes there. Kerrigan goes down first. Again, Fox, another entry. Good start. But that is the bomb. Committed to it. He's still going to win the fight. PR on the other side. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. They have the entire B bomb site, Jason. There's no one here to defend it. This should be a real good round. Look at that. A dream team. Falling behind. Turning into a little bit more of the meme team at this point in time. Need to step it up. Oh, one Roman's chance. got a freebie. Knife. Oh, oh, no! He wanted it. You could hear him. You could see him talking to the team, saying he's got a knife. And Jax takes it away, but Mutris is still here to hold on to everything. Fox goes down. Dexter with another kill, and it's all on this man. 1v2. He's really far away. They do not have a kit in place, so maybe a minute before he gets here, but still. I don't know. They hear him stepping out there. Oh, a little bit of a wall bang attempt. He's drawn them back off. And it's too late. They almost all go up with the bomb instead. And Team Portugal extend the lead even further. Yeah, 7 5. This is great. I don't know what I expected in this game, but it wasn't this. Oh, that's such a horrible timing. Jax ruins everything. I admire the attempt, though. Yeah, you have to try that, right? More of that. Things are looking good right now. Limited money on the Dream Team side once again. But at least they can buy something. They stole an AK-47 as well. Ooh. 
And Monacy is in there. Scout headshot to start the round with. More people want to challenge him. Don't know if that's necessarily a good idea. Although, on the middle of the map, it's a huge opening. The bomb is being brought over. They have all the strats now. They're going to be able to get that A-bomb plant, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they should be able to, but Monacy is going to challenge again out in the open. Oh, that's nasty. That is disgusting. You got to appreciate that one. Fox goes down. Just has the bomb, and he's got a deep angle with the AWP, but him and Robin are a little bit scared. They don't know what's coming. Now just has to move forward, but Rops and Monacy going to start encroaching on this position. There's that scout picked off. That's fast. Does he know where Rops is coming from? There's no help. Does Rops know where he's coming from? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, he's going to open the door. You leave it open, yeah. May pretend that you've gone in there. Molotov will do it if he runs through. HE. Yeah, it's the right idea. <laughs> Robs does not have the health for it. He can't survive that kind of an impact. Tech 9 will do it. This should have been a one round already. Robs is just extending what it will eventually come. <laughs> There's the nade. Oh! It's just all a trick. Nicely done. Eight to five in favor of Team Portugal. And we have a little bit of a listening to the team comms here on the Portuguese side. Beautiful. I, pretty, I especially love it when the comms say that side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's a little bit worrying. No, not that one. Yeah. The other one. So, <laughs> it's like playing a name Mirage if someone says, he's behind the box. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Yeah, you really helped me out there. I appreciate that. Yeah, get him hyped. Eight to five. Coming down to the final rounds of the first half. And Dexter's pushed down mid, but if he are Muterus, they've got the rebuttal. Oh, they love it right now. Two versus four. It's a great start right now here for Portugal. And Dexter sneak it around. Rops inside of the B-bomb site. It's possible that Dexter's going to catch the bomb right here. Just hold the phone for a minute. Yeah, he's hearing the footsteps. I think he might intercept this ball. He's got a shotgun, though. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, good luck. Oh, the damage at the range. Oh, he nearly has it. it. Just makes an escape. He's back for more. And <laughs> that auto shotgun, it blew him up. And now Dexter, he's got no health at all left. And a minute on the clock. So even if they don't know, oh, he's got a knife out. Yeah, Roman, you know you want to slice him. Take him down. And the crowd, they love it. Just having the time of their lives up on the stage. Yeah, this is awesome from Chad. <laughs> Close range. That's so brutal. But just sets his teammate up for this. Roman with the slash. He had one earlier. He knew <laughs> yeah. he was going to be hunting for one more. He wanted to try. <laughs> Even Kerrigan's laughing. <laughs> this is great. Got more auto shotguns in play. Spreading. Huge stack on the A bomb site. Tower of auto shotguns almost. One good nade in that corner, and it, the fun ends. Oh, but they're lined up. It's not ready for it. PR goes down. Are they going to call it in? I think they're going to give time over to Roman, who's infiltrated the back lines. They have no idea. Rops might just be a free kill if Roman keeps moving forward. He's got the play. So if the rest of the team from Portugal can just pause for a second, Roman is going to cause so much chaos in this defense. It's close. Ooh, a little bit of a jump down. That'll. Yeah, Rops is calling it in, saying, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure I just heard something here. Need on Jax, but he puts it out pretty quickly. Bomb is still hanging around on that ramp outside of the A bomb site. 
Looking to look in. Roman goes down. Fox is sneaking around the edge of the smoke. The auto shotgun is right in his face. And he's going to go down, carrying him with the final kill. And that is a 9-6 to six finish in favor of the home team. And we're going to go to a break, and we'll be right back with the second half. Hey guys, I'm Vigo Zera and here is Jax. Hi guys, it's Simple and Madden. I'm Nico and uh, this is Robs and today we're going to be playing a Skin in the Game by CS Money. Maybe it's... No, the Kenny's one is Battle Scared, yeah? Oof, I don't know this, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need second guess, second sticker, please. What did Cole Zera have when he did jump shots on Mirage? With the clip, yeah! <laughs> I just go for Colzera. Colzera, it's MLG Columbus 2016. Fallen, Dreamhack, Cluj, uh, Napoca, Cobalt Stone. Right. Colzera uh, 2016, Major. Uh, what was the name of the MLG Columbus. MLG Columbus 2016. The Clutch King with a red one. I think it's Rob's. I think I two on this one. You have one more help? Rops, you are sure Rops yeah, was yeah, pink? Yeah. Because maybe it's Rops against us in Katowice. I think Katowice, no? It was in Grand Final? Yeah, it was Katowice Grand Final against FaZe, right? Uh, against G2, sorry. Against G2, yeah. yeah. I so just go... It is 100% me then. Rops, Katowice at 2020. I think in finals. I think against G2. In the finals against G2. 2021, Katowice, Rops. I think it was Fnatic, he was playing for Maus. Yes, Maus, Fnatic. Yes, Fnatic on cash, which year? This has to be headshot, yeah? I think it's five headshots. I mean, it's five stars, I mean, it right? it can be like Lacro as well, I think. Who gave more headshots? Happy, right? No, Nico. Nico is a headshot machine move. Simple. What the hell? What is this simple? So, do you think it's a trap? The simple. Uh, Navi against G2, PGL Stockholm 2021. Uh, against Gambit, PGL Stockholm uh, Major. Nico versus Titan, ESL Pro League season 5 or 6. The one I missed, no? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The refresh one if I was with Khalil. Oh, yeah, true. So, yeah, I'd probably my that one. Best guess. We have Refresh, Inferno okay, against so Liquid. 1v5. 1v5 or 1v4. Yeah. On this side. I know who yes, they 23. killed. I know everyone. Has and uh, events, maybe Blast. It was Refresh. I'm probably Team good. Heroic against Team Liquid. Refresh. Yeah. ESL Pro League Season 14. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second half is coming up, and it's the Dream Team versus Team Portugal here on the big stage. And Portugal, they're up 9-6. to six. That's amazing. They're off to a good start. Now, the Dream Team, the fans have voted that they have to rush the B-bomb side. They did that over on Blast.tv, so they're committed to it. They have to do it. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, well, you know Kerrigan likes to get weird. As we mentioned, Yes. We knew that B bomb site would be under a lot of attack today on these pistol rounds whenever, whenever it is to be selected. So, three round lead, but pistol round all important on this T side of Tuscan. Setting it up already. They're so fired up. They're singing all the way through the break. <laughs> There's no slowing this audience down. I think they're chanting for Zaiwu right now. <laughs> it's not impossible. Looking ahead to the finals. Why not? All right, well, over to the B rush. Jackson Monacy. There is just pushing up. That's the bomb hitting the deck. He's going to wrap all the way around. They've got no idea. They've got no clue. And the duelies ring out with a triple kill. Just like you to sign this round just for you, Jason. I appreciate it. I'm going to give him a, a strong high five after this is over. Eventually going to fall down, but the bomb is kind of lost. Oh, hello. All right. Nice shot from Dexter. Rops on a huge flanking mission. Could be another hour before he gets here, but eventually he will. 
problem is Dexter can't really move forward at all. He's got to just wait for this to come to fruition. And if one player has heads up, PR is looking back. Rops' play is given up. Double peek. Two of them there, and he can't get anything. Fox with the headshot, and Dexter just desperately wants a USP, but can't find it on the body. Fox is going to close things out with a double kill. That's 10 to 6 for Portugal. Yeah, they thought they were being sneaky, but they were aware that kind of a slowdown. Look at this. And it's not, uh, it's not exactly artful counter strike, but it was effective. It's not artful, but it is beautiful. <laughs> second round, second round bye for the Dream Team. Foxy's nobody. He'd be wrong. Rops is in here, off angle. Deagle can't do it. The mobility of the SMG is massive, and PR can just back away, cover the Molotovs, let him retreat. Ooh, they still got that revolver on Monacy. I wouldn't count them out yet. Oh, well, so I take it back, Jason. Yeah. Count them out. 11 to 6. Team Portugal. Looking good right now. They've They're got gonna... plans, too. They got protocols. They do. But try harding this one. They're going to have to dig deep. Kerrigan, where is he at? Put on that Batman mask again. <laughs> Rally the team. Yep, get them all around you. Call a cool tactic. Four Galils, one Tech 9 on Monacy. Dream Team going for a quick buy, and why use utility when you don't even know where to throw it? Just gun out everywhere, including for Fox. So it's pushing aggressive right here. Ooh. Nice couple of kills going the way of the Dream Team, and they're going to be catching Muteris as well. That's a beautiful start. Modesty up middle, walking up the stairs, just swings wide. Oh, that's a good flick over. That's a good snap from Modesty. Might be able to find the position of this last player. Bombs following up Kerrigan, but not committed. Now that they know, Kerrigan should back away. They're just going to run over to the B bomb site. Yeah. Jax, Jax is sticking to mid just to cut off the rotation. Yeah, they're taking it they're a little bit more serious now. They're feeling the pressure all of a sudden. Oh, PR, good shot. Taking down Jax, but they're right behind him. Does he find the headshot here? If he can, maybe he could actually win the round. He does have a lot of nades and everything else, but with the bomb planted, he's going to decide to go and try and see if he can take the fight to Kerrigan instead. He's up on the bomb site, certainly listening right now. Oh, PR. This is going to be really tricky. He tries to make the jump up. Kerrigan is there to stop him, though. Oh, shutting it down. And the Dream Team back a little bit again. Picking up something in the second half. Yeah, but if he had won that fight, that could have been something really cool because he also knew the position of Rops. Nicely done from Monacy in middle. The Tech 9 kill over to the M4. This was a great shot as just swung wide. Lead is cut down to four. Yeah, the pressure is building now. Got some Galils in play. Three of them right now on the Dream Team side. And on the other side. I don't know. One M4, MP9, a couple of Eagles. Gonna have to be some great shots to make it back into this round. And Muteris has already been found, flashed, and tried to get back, but I think he might have bumped into something there. Oh, right at the corner. Instant bomb planter. Wow, oh, this. They're ready. Listen, Carrigan did say he wanted to silence the crowd. Yeah, they're, they're pretty quiet after this one. Carrigan doing his signature play, Rush B. Once the Galils come out. 11 to 8. And it's Portugal who's got to save. Just USPs for the home team. Twentieth round. No, nothing really to work with here. It's gonna be tough. That lead is shrinking. Slowly dissipating in front of us. Ah, crowd is trying to get them hot back up. I appreciate that. We got a B rush from the CT side. All five players pushing down. Rops is gonna. Uh oh, uh oh! Didn't hear where that came from, did ya? I don't think he knew. Oh no! A couple of early kills going the way of Team Portugal, as you said, with a CT sided B rush. A rare sight. They obviously pick up the AK-47s. We want to see the back line here, but yeah, there's more of them coming. And if he walks back the middle, got to be careful that AK isn't showing back there. Almost getting the taps away. There's the headshot, and they finally do take him down. 
but that'll slow down everything. Fox fighting inside of the flames, and it's too much to handle. No idea where Dexter is at the moment, and that's a little bit of Molotov damage. Time is running out on this one. No kit in play, so nice effort for Team Portugal in this round, but I don't think they can actually win it. Dexter will close it out. And this is uh, some quick steps back in the game. You can see he was almost like paranoid to get knifed. He heard the crowd going off, and he was like, oh boy, here we I know what this means. 11-9, two-round lead. All rifles for both teams. They're back in business, Team Portugal. Yeah, this was nice. The USB's muffled, and, and Rops just had no idea. It's not at all bad. Would anyone be brave enough to try and knife some of the Portuguese players? You're going to get a lot of booze behind that, I'm sure. Kerrigan would do it for sure if he had the chance. For sure. PR going to push forward, finds the battle against Monacy. But the main attack from Kerrigan and Dexter is coming through the sewers. Four on four. Bring the bomb that way. Long way to go. And there is that squeaky door. So if anyone is nearby, you should be able to hear that. They've all pretty much evacuated, though. Actually, if Kerrigan and Dexter come out here, yeah, there's no one actually paying attention. PR just heard the sound cue, but not enough time to react. So far, so good. Kerrigan promised on the desk. He said he'd be bringing back those 1.6 strats. So, see how much he remembers. Nice wall of smokes. Bomb planted on the other side. Roman trying to get the boost up. He did see someone back then. Pretty cool little boost. But they need to get in and get that bomb plant. Or well, the bomb defuse now. No kits in play either, so time is of the essence. Harrigan and Dexter closing it out. Oh, the series now 10 to 11. The uh, comeback is definitely on. Yeah, in a big way. Game, and we have a little bit of a team speed clip with the Portuguese side. Plus? So, two or three OG. Who's the guy? Who's the guy? Who's the guy? No, no, no. Sit down, sit down. Think so. I'm gonna keep play CT, okay? Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, they're all feeling it. Started out being mostly fun, but now you can tell yeah. <laughs> everyone wants to win. Well, that was the clutch earlier where Just paused it and ran out to the center of the stage as well. He was hyped up after it. But Dream Team has closed the gap in a big way, 11 to 10. It was a lead at halftime for Team Portugal, but that is uh, disappearing before their very eyes. Yeah, the Dream Team getting back into it. AKs, AWP on Monacy. Kerrigan tied for the lead in terms of kills with Dexter and PR. All of them at 21 kills. That's interesting. Kerrigan, though, gets the bullet to the face to start the round with. Oh, and they catch Monacy as well. Up close with the Deagle. PR's definitely turned up to play right here. Jax nearly with the return. But the bomb. Team Portugal has the bomb all the way outside of the A bomb site. So they can win this fight, but they have to go back and get it. This is so weird. Oh, no. That's a, that's a good kind of weird, though. It's yeah. a very good kind of weird. Rops is coming all the way around. He's going to join up. Dexter, Jackson, Rops to retake the staging area. Just in PR to defend. And PR has that AWP picked up, but he's got no HP. He better be perfect with the AWP. Yeah, they're worried about someone coming all the way from behind. That's T-spawn in that direction for anyone that doesn't know. No one's getting that way. PR set up, but let's see if they get the timing. They're going to try. Oh, <laughs> amateurs failing oh. that run boost. Oh, they're going to do it through the smoke. They're definitely going to do it through the smoke. PR has no idea. Oh, quick shot. No chance to scope in. There's the first kill. That's Rops. And just coming up, he's got a chance, but that's shut down quickly. Dream Team has tied it up at 11. <laughs>
<laughs> Character is so fine. Oh, Rob's looks like he's scared in the corner. Like, What's happening? It's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be this guy with you. <laughs> Not against this crowd. Oh, that's funny. All right, round 23. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Good for Kerrigan. When your friends had too many drinks in the bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, let's just go. Let's just go home now. You know. If there's any, if there's any friend you want to be with in that situation, though, it is Kerrigan. No, oh, 100. percent Quick trade to start the round with. Kerrigan. Is he goal, really? He's goal focused. He's so worried. He, he wants this. They tied it up, but Kerrigan, he wants to win this match now. <laughs> you could tell. Oh, man. He said he was going to shut the crowd up. No mercy from Kerrigan. There's him pushing again. Traded headshot onto PR. Oh, lands a shot, and all of a sudden, this is doable. All of a sudden, Rops is in a 1v2. He is spraying it through, and they walk in front. There's a good little lineup there. And now the Dream Team is in the lead, and Kerrigan is not slowing down. <laughs> Trying to end Rob's career a little bit early, maybe. The old Dexter impression. Good spray down from Rob Smuderus was never able to respond in time. Even better. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? Slaps are on point. So are the dream team. Maybe that's what the Portuguese side is missing. We haven't had any desk head slams. No, no head slams. No, no powerful high fives from the team Portugal side. They're just chilling. They're having a good time over there. Or well, maybe not this round. This round is just Eagles in an SMG. Round 24. What can you do with it? See if they stay grouped up again. Oh, they're going to be spreading out a little bit more. Muteris is on the hunt, running down the middle, ready to take the fight with the MP9 as they come for the smoke. And he's going to be able to pick up Kerrigan. It's a great start. Swaps out for the AK. Wants to keep going, but there's just too many angles to hold at the end. It's not bad. They're in a three on three. One nice shot. On to Jax, would do everything, just has him tucked into the corner, that's perfect. And look, the bomb is dropped all the way back. Rops has to try and recover what he can here. He's gone as well. It's all on Modesty 1v3. Don't fight him, it's not worth it. Bomb is in control as well, just is holding down actually fairly close to where Modesty is on the left-hand side, so... Gotta be careful. <laughs> no one's landing anything. Modesty hasn't hit a single shot at this range there. Finally, some connect, but not the kill. Fox has him frozen in place, and Modesty's just going to make the run. Yeah, but remember, Justice still holding that bomb, so they don't have to do this at all. Sneaking up. Oops. Instead of reloading, just picks up another AK. Which also needs to be reloaded. Joke's on you. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the worst feelings when that happens. 40 seconds. Back for that fight again. More smoke's being thrown, but Monas, he's not making any progress. And we've got the accidental jump as well. <laughs> he's got it all in this round. 30 seconds. Oh, oh no. We're so close. How's no one dead yet? Honestly. <laughs> what? <laughs> How is this possible? I don't know. They've just given him blanks. I was going to say, maybe this is, <laughs> this is part of the joke. Yeah, we're trying to get Portugal back in it. We'll just make sure he can't kill anything. Oh, he's run out of time. Yeah, there's no time at all. And that Molotov's even going to slow him. Oh. oh, dear. You hate to see it. Oh, man. They've got him locked out. They'll tie up the scoreline. Gets a kill right there, but it's 12 to 12 and just... Taking him down, even after the round is already lost. Adding insult to injury. That was six straight for Dream Team that's finally shut down. A round with Deagles and SMGs. What a round to do it. Good shot from Just. Another good shot coming over. Knew he had Jax cornered. Okay. 12-12. See what Kerrigan can come up with here. Better be special, because they're out of money after this buy. The bomb over towards that second mid, towards the B side of the map. The rest of them fighting at the A ramp. Just going down early. Fox on that AWP. 
And look at what Monesi's found. He's found the sewer, which is looking way better than I remember. Yeah, it's taken him 25 rounds to realize there's another avenue on this map that he hadn't utilized yet. So he's going to test that out. Go, go circum, uh, circumnavigate the, the underpass. Rops is uh, chilling way far away with the bomb. Nade not going to land right on top of them. Jax gets blown up, though. Oh, Fox. Not quick enough with the flick here. Roman going to get caught off guard as well. And Muteris goes down to Dexter in a straight up fight with that AK 47. So, Dream Team back in the lead. And they would have run out of money, but now instead, it's going to be Team Portugal that are struggling a little bit for the funds. Yeah, it's a bit dicey. They're right on the edge, but I think they're going to go for it. I think they're just going to see what they can buy and see what happens from it. At least Fox is going to have an AWP. Just gets a scout. The rest of them, pistols and armor. So, they want the AWP on Fox. If ever there was a Portuguese player to deliver something special, surely it would be Fox right here in this moment. They need it. They desperately need it. Let's see. Here is up close. It's a good shot. Oh, and the scout! And Fox out hunting with the AWP. And Dexter. What is he made of in this round? One versus four. He's got a good potential for... Certainly his first ever highlight on Tuscan, because he's probably never really played it before. Just goes down. Still another three left. He's, he's got, got a lot of time. He's got 28 kills as well. I never even noticed it. That's, that's crazy. Not a show match for him. Nope. Push, pushing up a little over a minute. Ooh, does he, did he see that? He's pretty sure they're going to come look for him eventually. Now on the upside, he has the bomb. So he can make up his mind and go wherever he wants. He doesn't have to go back and find it like in some of those previous rounds. I mean, we're in boos and some shouts. I'm not sure what's happening. Boos at the tryhard. Yeah, 40 seconds. They want Dexter to run for it, but like you said, he's being real serious. <laughs> oh, he's about to walk right into fantastic Mr. Fox. His third kill. Boom. Of the round, and that's exactly what they needed. That was the only weapon they brought into it. That and a scout and a bunch of pistols. And it worked. Combat opening up close to the start of the round. Really good stuff right here. Oh, that was actually pretty sick. Well struck from Fox. We're all tied up at 13. Two MAC-10s and a Tech-9 on the board for Dream Team's attack in this round, Anders. You know what that usually means. That means a B-Rush. We love those, don't we? I don't know if Roman, well, he's alone in the bomb set. Oh, they're not actually rushing B, they're rushing that second mid instead. And Muter is going to get overrun. Fox up close. Oh, and he can't land that flick. Just trying to get here in time to look through that window. And Robs is aware. Nice headshot. And it's going to be a two on three, but too early to tell who's going to win this one. Roman on a bit of a flank. Smoke. Can't see anything. Does he want to walk through it? That's a big risk on the other side of it. Rops is there and he escapes back through. I can't believe it. Jax is just holding it, but now he is going to get shot at the back instead. And Monacy. Did they see? Well, now they certainly know. PR calling it out. Monacy makes a jump for it. For his life to try and keep in this round, but it's not going to be possible. Instead, it's Team Portugal up to 14 rounds. Uh-oh. They've got control late. That's the last of the money for the Dream Team. They're going to have to back off this round. Or excuse me, I'm, I'm dead wrong. They actually buy up entirely. They don't want to let Portugal get the 15. This is a big risk, though. Well, you have to remember as well, there's no overtime. And I'm going to drill it. If it's a draw, it's going to be surely Team Portugal that... Yeah, we just give the win. We give the win. Like, that's... that's they deserve that at that point. Well, smokes are up. Mid control coming in from Team Portugal. They're deep in their monacy. Sneaking around down below again, just on the other side. This isn't even a sewer anymore. What do we call it now? It's way too clean. Yeah, it's way too established. It's way too well constructed. Kerrigan, that's a dirty little deagle in mid before Materis can even respond. Kerrigan's going to come back for more. He knows he's being pushed. Ooh, careful with that peak. Dexter adds another, and all of a sudden, it's just two. Yeah, and they're in a little bit of trouble here. The force up from the Dream Team. Unexpected, perhaps. Team Portugal not ready to fight it. Roman, he's got the right idea. <laughs> Looking into the smoke. Oh! Comes out with a headshot. 
Taking down Dexter, it's a good start now. The bomb is being brought over to the B-bombs. And Muters is going to be able to hear it. At least some of them running down below. So let's see if we can find the right timing and maybe catch one or two. Oh, they're boosting up into the window. They really try hard now. They want to win. Bomb has been planted, but Muters has made his way far in here. Knife no way. Surely not. Oh, oh no! Oh, okay! Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, so much yes! Still a one on two. But the knife is a victory of sorts. Muteris trying to do everything he can. Modesty and Rops, they could go for a knife back if they wanted to. Wrapping around, Rops won't expect it. There's another kill. Plenty of time in the bomb to still work with. Modesty ducked into the corner. The spam's not going to land. Muteris coming around again, but Modesty's playing a great game here. Smoke flashed down, and that's an immediate headshot. The fact that it was... The fact that it was carrying <laughs> as well. Oh, it's beautiful. I can't believe he almost... Miss this. Yeah, the knife. He even looks at it. He's like, wait a minute. Yeah, how did that happen? Oh, what a highlight. Stadoto is Dexter. Well, it's another name we recognize. 14 14. And the 29th round coming up. And again, there's no overtime. If it's a tie, it's a tie. It's a team Portugal. They're going to have to fight real hard for this one. Oh, great nice. pop flash peak. Jax never saw it coming. More tryharding. Oh, a follow up. Kerrigan's going to eat this one, surely. You better throw it now. You better throw. Oh, the flash over. It was just a little bit late. <laughs> Kerrigan landed on his teammate's head, so he couldn't throw the grenade quite right to extend the fight. Oh, dear. Well, they've got Monesty ready to pop out sewers. He's been like, I like this kind of the map. I like what I'm seeing here. Well, there it is. And oh, he responds in time. The movement on PR, and he still survives in the door. Yeah, PR's been actually been playing really well. He's got 26 kills. Dexter on the other side, the first to hit 30. Rops trying to click a couple of heads there. It's back into a one versus two team Portugal. If Kerrigan wins this. Oh, man. If Kerrigan wins this, he's going to go absolutely nuts. I don't think it's going to be easy. 50 seconds. And they're in the right place. He doesn't have any nades or anything. I don't think this is even going to be doable. He's trying to walk in here, but they're going to know. Oh, the timing! He finds that one on PR, and now the question is Fox. Can he win the fight straight up against Kerrigan coming out? He's looking for it. The spray is in, but Fox will take him down. 15 to 14. And Team Portugal, one shot here at a winning it outright. One chance for a 16-14 win. And they've got Dream Team right where you'd want them. One Galil, Tech Nines, Deagles, and a Mac 10. <laughs> oh, they're laughing at all. That's great. They're, they're loving it. 30th round. Last of the show match. And they're going to be rushing. Look at this. Going for the B rush. Oh, and traded. It's going to be a little bit of an aid in there. Oh, some good damage. The bomb is going down on the other side. Dream Dream. They're trying to see if they can stop this, if they can force the tie instead. And that's going to be disappointing if that happens for the home team, I think. Muteris goes down. Wall bang headshot from Robs. That's a nice way to get started. And now the chaos is unfolding. Oh, they're everywhere. And they shut it down. 15-15. Team Portugal surely going to be happy about that. Yeah, you got to be. I mean, between the entrance, it's a day to remember a tie, but I feel a victory of sorts. Plenty of clutches for the Portugal team in front of the home audience. That had to have been great for a bunch of these guys. Harrigan at the end. Tr trying his best to shut down that crowd. It wasn't going to be possible. They were too, too much passion. <laughs> yeah, just too much. Yeah. Just way can't, too much can't of it. be done. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, look, that was, that was nice. I liked that. That was good seeing those guys together. I've heard there's some stories, uh, obviously a lot of history in the Portuguese Counter-Strike scene. Some of these guys not able to ever kind of work together on, uh, on teams to be able to accomplish all the goals, but awesome to see them here on the stage in front of the crowd. Yeah, some of these names definitely ring out. Been playing for a really, really yeah. long time. So, um, it's cool And eras where something like this didn't even exist. So cool to get them this experience. Yeah, without a doubt. High fives, hugs all around. Yeah, that's what we like to see. What an opportunity. Absolutely fantastic. Well, 
We have the desk ready for us after the show match. Please take it away. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, everybody a winner, I guess, of sorts here in Lisbon. Carrigan didn't get to be the total villain taking down Team Portugal today. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to see just Tuscan getting played out on a big stage. Yeah, it's good to see Tuscan back yeah. in the mix, right? I, I'm not sure whether or not I like the cobblestone edition of the Tuscan. I miss the old style, you know, the Mirage, the Dust 2, the sand on it. But the map is a genius map, and I'm happy, happy, happy to see the both these teams delivered and, and got a 15-15 matchup. I love the map. I love the map, honestly. I yeah. don't know why you're hating on the design. No, I was just kidding, Jacob. No, I love the map. I love <laughs> I like it. I hope it's going to make its way to the map pool. I've been hoping for that for a while now. Just, just get a bit of dust Replacing what map? Replacing what map? Dust yeah. Mirage. Pick your choice. We've seen okay. enough of Dust so Mirage. I know it. Really? It's all right. It's all good. It's out there. Man, I know what's going to happen. my own heart. But uh, yeah, well, thank you for your words, gentlemen. Of course, that we do have a grand final for the ages coming up after this. Na'Vi are going to be taking on Vitality in a battle for the crown here at the Altus Arena. We're throwing it to a quick break. But when we're back, we're we'll breaking down all the action as we head into that grand final. Na'Vi were out for revenge in the arena. They needed all three maps to take down OG. OG falling back, that's precise, and he gets another over the top. God oh, damn. filthy, absolutely filthy! With Simple and Electronic getting up to their old tricks again to net them the win. Already taking a bit of damage, it's Electronic, 32 kills. He's relentless and he's back for more action. He's gonna get the headshot. Oh, he turns it into a triple. Electronic with a quad kill. And now we have made the grand finals here in Lisbon. It'll take more than this dynamic duo to take down Vitality and lift the trophy here in Lisbon. Vitality finally broke free of their issues in Lisbon. 
defeating G2 on the stage in the high stakes game. There's the headshot from the upper, and Apex is gonna answer. Tries to change positions. Modesty's down. Apex oh. with three. The Predator feasts on Ramp. Now glory awaits for them, but first they must deliver their best performance of 2022 to take down Na'Vi. What? what? That's a scope shot? And their hopes meek. Saiwu Peak stops Alexi B, and Jax oh. is dead. He does the unthinkable again. Oh! oh! That's vitality in a grand oh! final. A grand final for the ages and the summit within touching distance. Two icons collide, but only one will plant their flag atop of the Blast Premier Spring Finals. Two different peaks are being scaled, but now both collide with their eyes on the same prize. On one side, we have Vitality finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel after remodeling of their own. On the other, we have Na'Vi trying to prove they are continuously a furious force despite their in-game leader being stripped from the squad and coming in here with a standing. This is the grand final maniac we have all been asking for. Yeah, we wanted it. But as a matter of fact, we didn't expect it. Right at the beginning of this tournament, you had FaZe at the top of the charts. You had ends coming in strong. We thought that could be, you know, the trophy lifting grand final, but it wasn't meant to be. Na'Vi making strife with Electronic, Vitality pushing boundaries. I, for one, am quite happy with where we stand for the grand final. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely spectacular coming into things. Two sides of the story that I'm just so excited to see on Fault, see who's going to be lifting this trophy. Yeah, I 100% agree. The fact that we have Vitality back at a respectable level, back at a level where we all believe, I guess, coming into the final, that they can make a fight out of this going up against Na'Vi. And then, of course, the Cinderella story as well when it comes to Na'Vi. Bringing in SDY, integrating him as a stand-in, Electronic as an in-game leader, simple popping off, Electronic popping off. There's already so many storylines we can attack right here. But the fact of the matter is, you said it so correctly, a final that we want. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely spectacular to see how it does play out. Let's start off with a kind of a higher level overview of both the sides coming into things. I, I want to start off just by talking about Vitality's run through here, because as you were saying, Maniac, uh, some question marks about their form coming of into course. things. Uh, still, some questions I, I think that we're wanting to be answered, but some answers that we have been getting throughout uh, some of these matches, particularly that Ents one. Yeah, I think the story of Vitality and the dialogue around our team kind of changed throughout the tournament, Freya, because obviously our expectations and demands were relatively low due to that tumultuous start of 2022. These have been six kind of hard months. But then suddenly, after that second map loss or that second map that they lost against Spain, Vitality showed us a face we hadn't seen in a long time. They, as I said, have been pushing boundaries. First, it was about taking finally a top 10 down. That was ends, top 10 out. Then it was playing on the big stage. They beat G2, something they hadn't been able to achieve. And now they go up against Na'Vi, a team they haven't beaten in 18 months. So talk about a challenge. Yeah, that's a ch huge challenge at hand. But I love a, a word that you brought up when we were kind of summarizing what we've seen from Vitality and the improvements. Uh, resilience. We've seen them be able to fight back into matches where uh, usually we'd kind of just be seeing them roll all over and let the momentum shift to the other side. Yeah, I agree. It's a team that is still clearly from the outside struggling a little bit with the communication. We heard Mackie saying the same thing, right? They're still not feeling comfortable with it. They now find a, a bandage solution where they sometimes will speak in French if all the Danish players are deaf and vice versa. So in that regard, they're trying to work on the issues. They're trying to bend the problems so they can be good right here, right now. That to me is the big storyline for Vitality coming into this final. I still believe they're only playing at 70 to 80%. I still don't believe Vitality is up there where we can expect them to be, yet they're still good enough. They're still competitive competitive enough in order to get into a final, and that makes me incredibly excited. We had the pleasure to have Kerrigan with us during the pre-show, and he gave a few words about the mentality of a team, what it means to sometimes be in a slump and have that victories, that key victories. I, for one, think that it is possible that a team out there has a couple of reference games that changes the whole narrative for them. Not only for the community, not only for the pundits and the experts, but for themselves as well. When suddenly they start thinking of themselves as a team differently, they start feeling the game in a different way. Sure, I'm being romantic, but these are where the hopes are kind of placed on. The fact that that win against Ends, the win against G2, has built a new vitality that can tackle on the Ogres and Navi today. I don't even think you're being too romantic in that respect, because we literally heard it from Dupree uh, in an interview with HLT. TV. He said that win against G2, that gave them full force confidence coming into this grand final. He said it was the game that they needed to be kind of cementing themselves as a squad. It's winning despite the struggles, right? You, yeah. You're not going to erase all the problems they're having because they still have deep communication problems. You still see rounds where they're not together, where the synergy is not there, but 
the fact that they're able to overcome them and still deliver at a high level despite struggling with all these internal issues is to me a great step in the right direction. That was the potential I wanted to see. That was the potential we talked about when it came to Vitality. So I'm happy to see they're finally finding some footing in the game. It's the game of 5%. It's the game of 5%. Please all remember where FaZe was two weeks ago. Yeah. Untouchable. Winning every single event they attended. They had the, obviously the, um, the major. They come to Dallas, they lose, and then here they get absolutely slapped around by Navi. And we ask Kerrigan, we say, but, but what is going on? Like, it's the same team, it's the same lineup. But he'll tell you, in a game of such high level in Counter-Strike, a little bit less confidence, a little bit less communication, maybe skill-wise, 5 10% down. And suddenly that's it, that can be a difference. So who's to say Vitality aren't just too close now from these 5% plus instead of negative as they always? Well, a lot of questions, but hopefully we can get some answers courtesy of Magisk with Parla earlier on today. Magisk, great to see you. How are you and the team doing today? We are feeling really great. Um, yesterday was a really tough game and it was a great atmosphere. I think the, the emotions and the adrenaline was just flying around all the place. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing to be on the, on, on the fun side again, to being the grand final. And uh, I'm just looking forward to play some Counter-Strike. You've been in this position before, heading into a grand final. But this time, are there any extra nerves or tension? I think we have no reason to be nervous, obviously. To some degree, you're going to be nervous and there's going to be uh, feelings because obviously we are here to win as well. Um, but on the other side, we do not have any pressure on us. Uh, we do not have expect expectations from people to go and win the event. So uh, we can freely enjoy the moment. And I think that's what we focus on right now that we take it one step at a time. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a grand final. So of course, we're going to do everything in, in our hands to, to be able to lift the trophy. Uh, but it's going to be a, a tough, but also a, a long road to get there. Magisk, we spoke last night after your semi-final win. I think you were still processing everything going on. What are the emotions now when you're so close to potentially, once again, lifting a trophy? I mean, of course I would love to do, uh, lift a trophy. I mean, that's why we all play Counter-Strike. We are not here to, to be second. Um, we all play to, to win the tournaments, uh, to lift the trophies as a team. And, and of course, playing, being in the grand finals uh, for the first time, as a team, it's going to be special. Uh, there's going to be nerves as well, but um, on the other side, we have uh, done two upsets now, and we might as well do a third. Magisk, final questions. Simply, are you as prepared as possible for Na'Vi and the Vitality taking the W? I think we have done uh, what we could. Uh, obviously, it's a new lineup, so it's it's not really much uh, preparation you can do on them. But we have done as much as we can, and we feel comfortable going into the to the map, uh, the maps we are going to play. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to a good finals, and I hope everyone will enjoy it. And Magisk, anything for our fans watching? I hope everyone is going to cheer for us. Uh, I know it's going to be tough with the fans because uh, now we have a lot of fans, but um, yeah, we appreciate all the support, even though it's been a difficult time. So, yeah, uh, keep cheering for us. Magisk, best of luck. Thank you so much. What's a third uptake, Magic says, you know, coming into a grand final just to be lifting the trophy here in the Altus Arena. I do want to pick up on something else he said in that interview, though, saying that he feels like Vitality are coming in with not much pressure on their shoulders. I would like to play devil's advocate and maybe disagree with that point. A, because we've been expecting quite a lot more from Vitality uh, since this kind of transformation since the Danes coming in. B, because Na'Vi, they're coming in with the stand-in and they're coming in with Electronic taking on the reins of in-game leader. I get what you're saying and I, I somewhat agree with you, but also would like you to remember two things, right? He's played with Glaive and he's played with Sonic for a long, long time. And if there was ever any two players out there who would be good at, you know, downplaying the pressure, it would be those two. You're going to hear Magic say that even the Astralis era, they were saying like, nah, we're not the favorites. We're playing with no pressure in the finals. So I think that's, you know, a, a work damage right there. The second thing is Vitality is a top 10 team. Vitality right now is ranked number 10 in the world. Vitality at Dallas finished 7 to 8. Vitality at the Major finished 11 to 19, oh, sorry, 11 to 13. They're not better than a top 10 team right now. So yeah. going in a final against Navi, they are honestly playing with no pressure. I, I don't care whether Na'Vi is playing with a standard or not. They're supposed to beat Vitality any given day as it is right now. Yeah, Vitality have already exceeded expectations. I think this is the, the statement to start with that we can go into this conversation. They hadn't seen the light of a playoff in 2022. That's been done. Same with the stage. So I can understand that from that standpoint, sure, mission accomplished. But I think there is a there is a sentiment, there is a feeling of now or never against this Na'Vi. And of course, if you're Vitality, you want to be very careful with that narrative because it comes with pressure attached to it. But from the outside, we're not fools. I think the Vitality fans around the world know that you play against Na'Vi that just changed IGL, that have a, a standby in the name of Sundayong right there. If you can't beat Na'Vi now, 
when the hell can you beat Navi? Yeah, no, no, it is kind of the golden opportunity for mm. Vitality coming into this one. Um, I mean, it's getting pretty electric in the arena already. Yeah. We're not even started the grand final and beach balls coming out. I don't mind it, as long as don't, don't <laughs> want to land in my head. Yeah, there's been at least three that have already <laughs> been aimed at us. Uh, I'm glad they can't hear us in the arena because I don't want to become a target no. here. Um, but fixating on the target of Vitality coming into this. Uh, and I, I want to keep on uh, the storyline of the Danes uh, as well, because coming into this tournament, we wanted to see more of Madis and Dupree. Have we seen enough from them so far? Yeah, we've seen enough for them to, to be in the final. I yeah. think that's a positive. I think we've seen Sonic as well finding some impact. You know, Sonic is, is the type of coach that he's involved in every aspect of the game, both in the tactical department, but especially when he's on the stage, you see how he's animating his players 24-7. I think the combination of having Sonic and Apex on the same team is very, very good. You have the good guy and you have the bad guy in Apex who sometimes get a little bit out of emotions and, and maybe reacts a little bit too harsh, where Sonic can calm the guys down while still being the hype guy. So the fact that we see more from the trio of the Danish guys, mm. to me, is a good thing. I still I still want to see more from Magis. I still want to see more from Dupree. I think individually speaking on the server, they can do better than they have done. Even Dupree coming into this tournament saying that he's not playing great Counter-Strike right now. He wants to show more. So again, that's my storyline coming into this matchup. They are in the final without being at 100%. And to me, that's a positive thing because then they can strive for the 100%. I think we have to demand more from the Danes, honestly, sure. personally speaking. Because if, yeah. we, if we were to do a head-to-head -head or a pound-for-pound -pound comparison of two lineups, we'd give the edge to Navi every day of the week. Yeah. We'd watch the, whole, the full roster coast-to-coast -coast, and they would take over Vitality. But that's because we have this idea deep inside ourselves that this man, Dupree, or Magis for that matter, can play a better Counter-Strike. And we know you can't win a game based on one player. Simple has tried to do that for years and years and years, and it wasn't enough, even though he had electronic. For Zaiwu, even though we're seeing a gala Zaiwu right now, we're seeing exceptional Zaiwu, one man won't do it. One man won't lift the trophy. He needs people behind him. He needs people making difference. And I'm looking at the Danes for that. I think something is in the water today because everybody we've spoken to has said they're feeling like it's going to be a Zaiwu pop-off day. I actually spoke to him uh, earlier on at the hotel. I've never seen a Zaiwu smile quite as wide as this one with the prospect of coming into a grand final here. I, I think people are onto something. He's lovely, isn't he? The fact that we get to hear him in, in English interviews as well, he seems more confident. He seems more outspoken. I love this version of, of Zaiwu we're seeing right now, especially considering he got a lot of flack in the beginning of the season for not playing up to par. He was also struggling. But that's another thing, right, when you look towards Vitality. There's so many positive signs we can pick left, right, and center. And of course, having Sai Wu back to his best, that's a massive win condition for Vitality. And it's a never-ending conversation, Freya. That, that's the thing about Sai Wu. I think we all have a collective amnesia sometimes when it comes to simple and his development as a player, right? We used to play against him six, seven years ago when we started seeing the potential that this man had. You look at these numbers we have on our graph. Sure, they're completely stupid they're stupidly exceptional and simple right now has turned into what is close to the perfect product when it comes to counter-strike not only a, a, a monster on the server but also a champion outside of it you, you hear the interviews he's giving but he wasn't always like that it took time it took time to mature as a person as a player as a champion Shall we give that time to Zaiwu as well? The man literally just started by being the best player in the world. Yeah. Now maybe he still has some areas where he needs to develop. Hence, being a bit more out there, being more outgoing, having more confidence. That's his path. He's not a finished product. Not at all. He's not a finished product at all. And when do you learn the most as a player, right? We talked to Kerrigan, he said it as well. When you're facing struggles, when you're in a downtime, when everything is not working out for you, that's when you work a little harder. That's when you're involved as a human being. And we've seen Saibu struggle for the first time. Coming into this lineup, having to integrate himself into an English-speaking lineup, maybe not getting off to the best start, that would only elevate him to a higher level when he comes out on the other side. So I agree with you, Matthew. Saibu has only been a pro player for two and a half years, and he's already one of the greatest of all time. Well, we speak about the superstar himself, and luckily we do have a few words with him with Paul. Zaiwu, great to see you. You're smiling. You look ready. Is that the case? Yeah, I'm always ready. I'm excited to play in front of this huge ground. I'm always ready. Zaiwu, I think from the start of your professional career, you've always dealt with the pressure so well. Have you ever had nerves? Do you have any nerves right now? I mean, obviously, I've, I'm always nervous, but I try to charge from this nervous, like to, to be good, like chill, not like no pressure. Why do I have pressure when you, your business play CSGO? Like, I just want to have fun now. Zaiwu, you and Simple are so close, neck and neck, in terms of performance here in Lisbon. Do you think you'll come out on top in this grand final? Ah, I hope so, but I, I, I don't like to say like, I'm, I'm above Simple or whatever. But I just want to do my best, like, ever, like, like always, with my team, team player individually. I just want to do my best, like always. Zaiwu, are you and Vitality as prepared as possible for Na'Vi? 
Uh, of course, we prepared, but like like every game, we didn't really prepare because it's Navi or what. we prepare like it's normal team. We're just gonna do our best, like a, like a team. That's it. All right, Zaiwu, if you'd like to say anything to you and Vitality's fans watching, now is the time. I uh, hope Vitality and the fans support us really well for this game. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, we, we, we are really exciting to play this game, so support us well. Zaiwu, thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is one of my favorite growths coming into 2022. Yeah. Zaiwu finally doing interviews. I love getting to hear from him. Just the passion, <laughs> the confidence as well coming up on this stage. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see him in the server. Seems so happy, right? Yeah. Seems like a guy who's just enjoying the best of his life right now. Living the life as a professional Counter-Strike player and as we discussed, Matthew, the fact that he's only been on the scene, you know, regularly speaking, as a pro player for two and a half years. He came in bursting out, being the best player in the world, and he's only maturing right now as, an, as a guy who's speaking in an English-speaking lineup and as a guy that I guess is only going to grow older and only going to grow better as well. Yeah, I guess the question is what magnitude his legend is going to establish. And right now, he's, a, he's at a juncture point. He's at a crossroad yeah. in his career. We knew that in the French lineup he had, he was an absolute beast, no question. The man came into Counter-Strike, took everyone by storm. Now he's got to play with an international lineup. With it comes challenges attached, maybe pressure, maybe frustration. Maybe he gets to play in a new philosophy. He struggled at the very beginning. The beginning of 2022 wasn't great for Zai. I might be a fanboy, completely uh, aficionado. I don't think he was great. But now he's doing better. And this is why legends actually survive the test of time. Yeah. That's why we have to always take time in consideration. And that's the thing. We talk about the individuals uh, on the side of Vitality as well. I want to bring up a point that Dupree had in an interview earlier on. Coming into this grand final with HLTV, he was saying it is up to the individuals to be standing up today. I agree with that somewhat, but I do also think it's about the team chemistry, which yes. we've been talking about. We've been questioning up here. Look, I, I would agree with Dupree because I think this is the most polished vitality I have seen in quite a while. We even heard Magis talk about their 4v5 and how they're not giving away rounds. They try and play with a bit more team play, a bit more serious and disciplined. That's great. I acknowledge it. But yes, there is a there is a minimum, there is a floor at, as an individual level that they need to hit in order to get into these situations with Navi. Struggle on the defense. We know how Counter-Strike is skill heavy right now and that might be an area where they struggle in the grand final. Let's just be completely honest right here. There's no way in hell that Vitality is going to have as much synergy as the Navi's players when you're not speaking in a language which where everyone is feeling comfortable. There's a reason Dupree is out saying that we sometimes switch from Danish to English to yeah. French to everything, right? When you have that environment in a team, you're trying to, as we talked about, you're trying to bandage the solution, right? You're trying to make up uh, a scenario within the team where you can mask the issues. And so far, they're doing that well, but that's when the individual skill comes in. If Saibu is having a good game, it doesn't matter whether or not there's a little bit of lack of synergy in a 3v3. If he's going to kill three people anyway, and that's what they're talking about when they want the individuals to step up. Yeah, and that's a really good point coming up against Navi as well, particularly as we've seen a, a bit of a shift around in terms of this in-game leading role. Um, I want to get your overview of what we've seen of mm. Na'Vi coming into this tournament with all the changes going away inside the squad. It's been good without being great. Let's put it that way. I think Na'Vi so far has played a decent tournament. They're in the final, obviously. Great result. But it's the win against FaZe that has like, kind of left me puzzled in a way. What sure. does that mean? The way they absolutely destroyed FaZe Clan in that game, the way Simple destroyed them single-handedly on Inferno left me wondering, okay, is that the Na'Vi we're going to see of the future or is that a one-off? We talked to Kerry and he said nothing worked for us, right? We just got completely outplayed. We didn't really play up to our par, and obviously Navi had preparation going into that one as well. But when you beat FaZe 16 to 6 and 16 oh. to 1, there's a statement to be made right here. That was the peak level Navi. But outside of that, it's been shaky, right? The win, oh, sorry, the loss against OG wasn't too good. The win against OG, sure, yesterday, it was a good win, but they were pressured on all three maps. So I don't really know where to put Navi right now, which is also why I think the final in itself is going to be crazy, crazy close. You talk about maps, Jacob. I want to point your attention towards something on that graphic. From the big moment on, there's only three different maps that Navi have yeah. played. It's Dust 2, it's Inferno, it's Mirage. These are the three maps that we have seen from Navi. I don't think it's foolish to, to think and anticipate that there might be issues on some more tactical maps where maybe Electronic hasn't exactly found where he wants to play, how does he want to play. We know on Dust 2 it works. Hell, the man is a beast already in yeah. his role. But I'm talking about the overpass of this world, the nuke of yeah. this world, to win a grand final, you gotta have to have a deep maple. Is this where we start to see issues and weaknesses potentially for Navi? And you're putting nuke in the cart right there. Nuke, a map that Vitality have won twice in a row, first against Enz, yesterday against G2. That could be a comfort pick, you know, or a potential punish pick coming in for G2, or sorry, for, uh, for Vitality, despite the fact that we know Navi, at least under normal circumstances, with Boomers on the lineup, were a great, great new team. Yeah, I'm really excited to see exactly how that map veto does play out. But I am excited also to hear from Danny. He has a moment from Navi and their team chemistry coming into this one. Yeah, uh, that's correct. So Navi, despite having them, you know, have an IGL swap, it doesn't really change the actual chemistry within the team. And I have a round that kind of demonstrates that. So right here, this is a round from yesterday 
where, you know, they're going for a simple B pop here. SDY, he comes out, he ends up dying. Same thing with Perfecto, he comes into the site, he dies as well. And Electronic, he comes here towards Cat, gets the trade. And then Simple, he covers him by taking down the player towards site. Now, what I actually want to focus on here is more so the post plant situation. So 3v3 situation and Simple and Electronic, they're going to position themselves in two different spots. So you'll see that Simple, he's going to be playing here more towards Catwalk. And then Electronic, he's going to be here towards Van. Now, Bit, he's pretty far out of this picture. So it really relies on both Simple and Electronic to work together to hold the site off as much as possible. What you're going to see here is that they're, they're both going to be holding different areas. And actually, I want to back that up just a little bit. They're both going to be holding different areas. Simple's going to be holding towards Market and then Electronic's going to be holding Upper B. What you'll see here, though, is that when Simple takes contact on the player towards Market and Electronic, he's going to take contact on the player towards Upper B, what they're going to do is they're going to do a bit of a swap. Simple, who was watching towards this Market position, he's now going to watch towards Upper B. And then Electronic, who was watching Upper B, he's now going to watch towards Market. And this is because for the CTs, they know exactly where both these players are. So to combat this, they're going to do a little swap here. And you'll see that it works out for them perfectly. So Simple, instead of watching Market, now he watches Upper B. And then Electronic, instead of focusing on Upper B, now he peeks towards Market, he gets that kill. And then Simple is able to find that kill on the player Upper B. And you can see how difficult this is for the CTs, where, where Flames, he's coming through this Market area. He, even though he knows where both of these players are, it's difficult for him to figure out who should he actually fight. And he ends up dying to the side to Electronic. And the same thing with Fiku. He tries to isolate with the smoke, and he ends up dying to Simple. Uh, from the catwalk position. So that's why it's so important that even though Navi have an IGL swap, it doesn't change the chemistry that they have when it comes to these mid-round situations. And that's what's been really impressive so far about Na'Vi coming into this. The fact that we had a lot of questions about exactly what Electronic would be delivering as an in-game leader, let alone his individual ability as well, uh, doesn't seem to have been affected all that much on the maps that we have seen, Matthew. I mean, they had so much to prove showing up at this event. We had so many questions when it comes to Na'Vi. Uh, some of us, I myself included, thought it's possible they just crumble, right? How hard is it to change your IGL to have one of the most consistent fragger in the entire scene in Nemo Electronic going up to be an IGL? when we have all these legends and myth about, you know, you have to be an IGL, suddenly you're not putting out the frags. I was thinking there would be a disbalance, there would be an issue. I didn't know how SDY would, would show up or not. I didn't know if he would seize the opportunity. So many questions we had, and yet they, they shut us all up and they're still in the grand final. Well, I don't want to take anything away from Electronic whatsoever, or Boomit for that matter as yeah. well. I wasn't really that worried when I think about it, right? I never saw Boomit as this kind of demanding in-game leader that was controlling the team on the server. It's always been Boomit and Simple and Electronic in tandem working together, and then with a very strong card behind them in Blade. I think Blade is the pivot point right here. I think Blade is the catalyst behind the success of Na'Vi in terms of the way he's coaching, in terms of the way he's preparing his team. So yeah, of course, it's impressive that Electronic is coming in, running Na'Vi so far, so good. We haven't seen them on Nuke, we haven't seen them on especially many maps, right? But what I do want to say is that Electronic has been under the system for a very, very long time. So had you changed, let's take it as an example, Kerrigan from face, it would have been a much, much bigger problem than it is changing Boomage for Electronic on Na'Vi. Fair enough. I was just wondering, as you were making your point, I was wondering if we could apply that to Zonic, because I think Zonic is definitely in, in the gold category when it comes to coaching. Mm -hmm. Would that be the same thing for Apex? Is Apex definitely not following the steps of Electronic on an individual level. It's yeah, a bit yeah. more complicated, but I agree. We have to give the flowers to Blade because he deserves them every single time. Uh, and I think one thing that we really have to just continue giving praise for uh, on the side of Electronic, there's opening ability uh, as well. He's just looks so lethal in terms of making space for Na'Vi. There's nothing better than when you have an in-game leader who's in the center of the map and who's able to win his opening duels. You see all modern in-game leaders trying to do it. You have the likes of Glaive, Alexi B, even my old teammate MSL, love to be in the center of the map. The, I guess the disability for those guys is they don't have the individual skill as electronic, right? When you have an in-game leader who's in the center of the map, who can get the kills, and from that point, call the rest of the team around and control them, that's when you have an in-game leader who can really dictate mm. the game, not only in terms of fracking, but also in terms of calling. Yeah, but that's why I'm surprised that electronic is doing so well. Al although there is the coaching staff, although the game plan might be built, you're talking about these mid-round lurking positions where not only do you have to analyze what the hell is going on around you, you have to think through your timings, you potentially have to communicate, micromanage what's going on around you, and then on top of that, you have to make the difference individually. Yeah. And that is that Sudoku of issues that IGL usually can't you know, prevail. They will be looking at the radar, they'll be talking suddenly, they won't take an actual clear duel. That right here is the challenge of being an IGL that's fragging, doing all these things at once and still winning the duel. 
I love it. I love it. But that's what we've seen Electronic do from the get-go. He's always been in those positions. And take that as an example when we're watching him play Dust 2. For the vast majority of the times he's playing, he's always going to be up catwalk. He's always going to be out middle, trying to find the opening kills. Even when Boomich was calling, I bet you it was Electronic controlling some of those rounds, saying that, okay, I'm listening to rotations right now from catwalk. Let's do X, Y, and C. So he's kind of comfortable in that scenario already. He has been mid-round calling, and that's my point, right? I thought Electronic, the way he was working in Navi before, was being sort of like the secondary caller with Simple. So it's a way, way easier a transition for him coming in now playing the main role being the in-game leader yeah no it is a very good point a testament to both electronic and the navi system through and through somebody that we did have uh, some more questions about though as well uh sdy coming into the equation obviously uh, we know enough him mostly from his tenure on the side of team spirit but still uh, questions about what exactly he would be bringing to the server ha have you had uh, many answers to those questions uh, yeah i think he's done enough i think he's done enough the reason i say that and i won't praise him too much is that i don't believe his role is too demanding i think he just not have to mess up. That's why SDY has yeah. to do. He has to be reliable, he has to be stolid and stable in his position. He's not getting a lot of space, he's not getting a lot of resources, but as long as he doesn't cost Navi rounds, I think he'll be fine. He seems to be a very selfish dude. We talked with Dexter about him, a beautiful human being, that's great. I just want him not to be a liability. I don't think we should ask more from SDY, and in that regard, I think mission accomplished so far. Liability is the keyword right there, Matthew. He cannot be a liability, and he hasn't been a liability so far. Take Dust 2 as an example. The way he's playing the TT side, they're leaving him on long for the vast majority of the time completely by himself. There's a limit to how much he can do, but he's so far, so far, he's done a decent job. He's not a liability, he's not a carry, he's not a fragger, but he's doing a decent job. Well, it wouldn't be a correct death segment about Na'Vi without talking about the GOAT himself in Simple. We have a few words from him with Parla earlier on today. Simple, great to see you. How are you and the team doing today? Great, great. Prepared, prepared already and uh, finally we know what maps we're going to play. It's going to be a fun final. What has the mood like been in the team whilst you've been going through your preparations across the morning and the afternoon? Uh, it's great, especially when you have result. Uh, you just know that you're progressing, you're fixing your mistakes because you want to win this tournament. And even if we had small time of preparation with new player, we still uh, always want to get this trophy. Simple, are there any extra nerves personally for you considering we're in a grand final? Uh, not really. I, uh, like, I think more about my team. How are they going to react on this final, especially someday young. So hopefully everyone's going to be calm and we're going to play our game. Simple, you have had a brilliant personal performance across Blast Premier Spring Finals here in Lisbon. Can we see the best simple yet in this grand final? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> this this uh, questions. Of course, uh, individual I can always deliver, but as I said, it always depends on whole mood of our team. Simple, thank you so much. Any words to the fans watching? Yeah, thank you guys. I hope you all enjoy this game. Great words there from Simple. This is going to be an absolute banger of a game. And you guys at home can have your say over on Blast.tv. Make sure you go over there to vote for who should be coming out in front of this incredible crowd on the stage first. It can be either Vitality or Na'Vi. Make sure you get your votes in over there. But uh, as Simple was saying, you know, just going to full focus, play their own game, which has a historically worked quite well for them, Matthew. I mean, I think it's the best answer we've gotten in interviews. Yikes. Play your own game. But in the case of Na'Vi, please do not adjust the TV, do not adjust the brightness, <laughs> nor the volume. We have the correct information. It's been 18 months since the core of Vitality, since Mizuta, Saiwu, and Apex were able to take down the Ogres of Na'Vi. There was one best of five during Pro League that was extremely close, as close as can be, but the domination could not be more one-sided. Simple has Apex right in his back pocket. There must be some emotional damage within Apex right after so, so many games where every single time they end up losing. And look how many of those games that is a 2-0 for I know. You said it, right? It's four maps. A couple of close games, a couple of matches where you could say, okay, maybe Vitality could have won, but there's a lot of convincing wins coming out of Na'Vi. You're right, Simple has not only Apex in his pocket, but also Saibu yeah. in a lot of those matches, right? And that's the duel we're going to talk about later. The, the domination is established. It has been established time and time again that Na'Vi, full functioning, full force Na'Vi, was a better team, is a better team than, than Vitality. But the reason why we have this debate is that we are rightfully wondering whether yeah. we're going to see 100% Na'Vi. There are many different circumstances now when it comes to 
to IGLs, standing and whatnot. That's why we can dream. That's why we can hope. Yeah, this is what makes this grand final matchup going into this so damn exciting. We can get the picks and bands rolling on in, which is incredibly exciting in itself because uh, some questions about, Ooh. for me, the vitality yes. pick in this one, that could be kind of tactical. Yeah, we can get rid of Ancient and Vertigo. I'd be very surprised to see them right there. Now, for Na'Vi, They've done a couple of different picks uh, throughout this event. I think Dust2 is a possibility. I think Mirage is a possibility for them. Uh, these would be relative punishers for Vitality. I don't think Electronic is going to steer too, too far away from that. He sticks on with Mirage. Now for Vitality, this is a true test of the depth of their map pool. If they have the cojones, there is an overpass or a new that could be there. I you want to push that. Electronic onto a map that is extremely Give tactical. It. And there we go. Damn. Here we go. Vamos. He picks the overpass. Now that's a risk. We've seen them break their teeth on overpass a couple of times. It's been a little bit better, but this is where you test the limits of the map pool for Na'Vi. They had a very good overpass game against Insta. That was bring the confidence for Vitality to pick Overpass, but I honestly would have loved to see a new pick. I think that's one of the maps where you really would channel Electronic and SDY as well into a very uncomfortable scenario. Unfortunately, we're not going to see Nuke. Navi, wisely enough, we're moving it, and then we have Ooh. Dust2 Ooh. as the third deciding wow. map. I like that for both teams, and yeah. hear me out right here. Navi have picked Dust2 a lot of times so far in this tournament, so obviously for Navi, that's a comfort pick right here, but Vitality is a strong Dust2 unit. They have also picked into Dust2 against a couple of teams here, so it's a middle ground where both teams feel comfortable, and we have a map pool including both Mirage and Dust2 and that opens up the playing field for all these individuals that we love to talk about. I, I would have loved to see Vitality go for Inferno towards the very end but I have to acknowledge the defensive issues they've had recently yeah. and to me that's the reason why they steer away from it. T side I think they have a good grasp of the tactical side of the map they have good timings but the defense hasn't worked out the, the B side's been an absolute Swiss cheese if you allow me the expression <laughs> uh, holds more than actual cheese so they have to go for Dust2 towards the very end but the second man we have right there walking around Electronic man that's been his castle. Yeah let's co continue to look at uh, the individuals on the side of Na'Vi and talk about the man right in front here because Bit, uh, Pimp, you are highlighting just how dominant, just how persuasive he's been on these land stages before and you were hoping to see more from him because uh, in the early stages of the tournament, we kind of somewhat lacked the impact from him. Are you content with what you've seen? I, I think he's been all right. He had a, a couple of rough matches. I remember an Inferno game where he went completely missing, but outside of that, Bit has been playing some decent Counter-Strike. What I want to bring up as a point right here is that Bit is getting a lot more responsibilities on his shoulders. We're praising Electronic right now for being a great in-game leader, for being a great fragger as an in-game leader. But as Kerrigan so rightfully said, there's going to be a, a day when that's going to chime down just a little bit. There's mm. going to be a normal work day for Electronic where he's not going to pull off a 1.4 rating as an in-game leader. And that's when you need the firepower a bit to come in. We talked about him during the Major. We talked about him when they won the Stockholm Major as well. He was doing a great, great job. But now we need to see him involved into that, you know, I guess, known quantity. A guy that you can always count on. Because if yep. we go back to the Navi as of before, where it was always simple and the rest, that's not a Navi that is the world's number one. So we need to see a bit chime in to be the secondary star and be a consistent secondary star. Yeah, I think within the system, he's already provided that insurance. Yeah. If you look at Na'Vi, you just look at the last six months, it's been very rare that bit disappointed us or went missing. But the question that I have is, under the chaos, are you actually able to find your way into the darkness, to find your way into the shadow realm if you are bit? Because I agree with Jacob. We often talk about how firepower compensates lack of polish, tactically speaking. Sure, around Maybe there's a flash missing. Maybe your smoke is missed time. Maybe the trade isn't exactly great. You need an individual to step up, maybe deliver a couple of headshots, suddenly you're back on track. Bit is the man we're looking for in that regard. And I think he's been delivering it, but he's got the greatest test coming his way. He's the future of Navi. Yeah. He's the future of Navi. There's going to be a day where Electronic and Simple perhaps is not going to be around anymore. And I think Bit is the franchise player coming in for Navi. You have the likes of Bit, you have the likes of Monacy, some of these young prodigies who are coming into the scene, taking everyone by storm. And I agree. I think we've seen Bit being a known quantity, but I want to see him take this step, uh, I guess, further. Electronic, for the longest period, was the second best player in Navi, but he was the second best player in Navi by being the fifth best player in the entire world, that's the bit I want to see more consistent. In terms of strategic elements from the side of Vitality as well, sure, we had kind of a few things to be desired coming into this tournament. What has particularly impressed you about them though, Jacob? Well, to bring you back uh, the memory lanes, right? You have this addition of Magix, Dupree and Sonic coming into Vitality. And one of the things Astralis were known for was creating this uh, nade, grenade damage and utility, uh, I guess, meta, let's call it that way. They've taken that know-how and brought that into Vitality. You see it right here from the CT side stats so far in this tournament. On average, they're dealing 40 damage 
damage every single round. And the reason why that sometimes goes a little bit unnoticed is this. When you have an M4A1S, you need two shots in order to kill an opponent if you headshot them. But if every single player is already down 10 damage or a couple of players is down 20 damage due to the utility damage, then you should have a much easier time on the CT side. So to compensate for the lack of firepower that we talked about when it comes to the individual and vitality, mm. they compensate just a little bit for that by being the best in the tournament with the ADR. There's been improvement on the CT side. Uh, if we talk about the T side as well, I think we have a vitality now that is accepting to slow down the pace a little bit more than they have in the past. If you remember, the signature Apex calling style was either 6-0 or 0-6. I either know how to beat you in the three first rounds, they're going to last about 27 seconds combined, and that's going to be it. In this event, I think like they have been playing the clock way more. Mm. But that also puts pressure on the quality of the protocols. When you have 25 left on the round, I guarantee you um, a flash missed, that's it. You lose the bomb, it's over. So you test the quality of your protocols. And I think Vitality have done much better now than they have, let's say, the past few months. Yeah, and that's a really key evolution for Vitality going forward. And it's something that I feel like, uh, you know, I think Anders and Moses are picking up in one of the Na'Vi games as well. The fact that they were kind of pushing the clock sometimes. We saw them maybe going back to the sort of more vintage style of Na'Vi too, leaving those rounds down to the wire. Yeah, it's sort of the combination, right? It's always a balance. You've got to be able to do both. A team who's only able to play aggressive Counter-Strike, let's take Fury as an example, right? They die out pretty quickly. It becomes way too one dimensional. Whereas Field Vitality and Navi is getting into a point right now where they can do both. I also want to praise Vitality for being able to be aggressive and being yeah. explosive. We saw that on the T side yesterday in Nuke where they exploded inside three times yes. in a row and actually destroyed their opponents. So I love the fact that right now they're able to find a balance and again taking a step in the right direction. The rounds that Jacob is talking about, these are low effort round, high on return on investment if you Apex. You don't have to think about it too, too much. You don't have to handle a late 3v3 situation where you have to micromanage seven different factors at the same time. No, Guys, split A, rush B, rush ram, contact long. These are rounds that give you peace of mind when it works. It gives you a buffer to breathe, and they were able to use that against G2. I think that's the thing that makes this matchup and this clash so exciting as well. The fact that we get to see Apex, somebody that we know is not afraid to get down in the mud, get down and dirty, but also electronic as well with the opening ability that we have been praising to the hills. That's what makes me, again, just so excited to see another head-to-head -head of that going down. And then let's take the addition to praise Apex a little bit. I think yeah. he's played a good tournament so far. He's been having some great calls, some great TC. Side, but as an individual as well, of course he's not matching Electronic and he won't be matching Electronic tonight, don't get me wrong, but Apex is back at a level where he's not a liability, which I think he sometimes have had the tendency to be for Vitality. So the fact that we have an Apex that is playing well as an individual, I guess um, loads up the headbanging we may get to see between him and Electronic on the server. And we need to see that, we know how aggressive he is. If Apex is having a bad day, he's got a survivability of what, 12, 13 seconds into round, we were laughing about it in the green room, <laughs> but suddenly when he's in shape, when he's hitting the shots and he's being just a little bit more modern, it, then he actually can have impact in late rounds because just as much as we like to pit him as this crazy guy erratic rushing around he's got a hell lot of experience he knows how to play these late round situations he knows how to handle shit so try to survive man like survive more than 15 seconds and then have impact in the late round because whenever he disappears that obviously leaves a gap for vitality you're asking for a lot here <laughs> yeah, i mean I, a man can dream right well uh, hopefully we'll get some answers to those questions as we are edging ever closer to getting this grand final underway here in the altus arena in lisbon the history books have favored navi coming into this one but a chance for vitality to rewrite them the grand final is going to be going down in just a few moments join us back after this
deploying it to this very moment and all worth it in front of this incredible crowd here in Lisbon. Everybody is getting fired up to see Na'Vi taking on Vitality in this grand final for the ages. Just look at the energy here, Maniac. I mean, I can barely hear myself speak. I can barely hear you, Freya, but remember <laughs> when I told you playing in an arena isn't a birthright in Counter-Strike. You have to earn it. You have to fight for it. You have to deserve it. And that's why we appreciate these moments so much. That's why the players do what they do. That's why they put so many hours in this freaking game and they head butt their head against the desk lab debris <laughs> just to be here against these people. This is how Counter-Strike is supposed to be enjoyed, yes. right? Online Counter-Strike is cool, qualifying Counter-Strike is cool, but when you're inside an arena with it in this atmosphere, there's no doubt that this is the place for Counter-Strike. This is where it's supposed to be played out. And as you said, Matthew, you have to earn your right in order Hell to yeah. be here, not only as a player, but also as an audience. Truly the city of light here in Lisbon. But coming into this one, Mirage coming up as the first pick, Navi's pick coming into this best of three grand yes. final. Uh, how how are we setting the scene for them coming into this one? Uh, last time Navi played Mirage, I remember a guy called Electronic dropping a nuclear performance. I believe it was 35, 36 Ooh. ranks in a game where he had a 3.06 CT side rating. The highest CT side rating I've ever seen in a top, top match. Electronic was killing it. So I hope if you're Vitality that you're prepared for that. You have the likes of Saivu feeling comfortable on Mirage. You have the likes of Makisk and Dupuy actually feeling comfortable on Mirage as well. And then you have two weak links. I'm going to mention it right here. Misuta, we haven't mentioned his name even at so far at this point, and Apex. Those two guys are struggling a little bit getting it done on Mirage, and those two are the, at least according to me, the win condition mm. for Vitality. If they play well, there's a chance. It's the toughest map for Vitality in this entire pool. I cannot say anything about it. I cannot turn the story in any way that allows me to hope for Vitality on Mirage. The only time we've seen it here during the event, that was against G2, and that was a very lackluster situation, very lackluster performance, only winning pistols, some rounds at the very beginning, but as soon as the guns came out on both sides, you could see Vitality being completely outclassed by Alexi B and by G2. And I don't know how much work they've been able to put in. I don't know if they're gonna be able to kind of figure out the issues. So if you're Navi, I think uh, I think you got a good chance on that Mirage, that's for sure. Yeah, is this clearly gonna be Navi taking this map one here, Jacob? I don't think it's gonna be clearly. I think we're gonna okay. get a match out of it. I think uh, as, as we discussed, right, Saivu, he's uh, ready. I think Dupree is ready. I think Magic is ready. I think Vitality is ready to give us a fight, but there's no doubt Vitality are the favorites on Mirage. Well, it's time to get this show on the road, ladies and gentlemen, deserving of a hero's welcome here in Lisbon. Let's get this grand final underway. Navi taking on Vitality. If this was 2021, this was one of the best matches you could be looking at. But it's a new 
faced vitality. You know, some Danish players come in, they finally made it to the stage here in Lisbon, where, well, if you remember the at least Australis players that are now on vitality had success here within Lisbon. They're looking to do it again, but Na'Vi stand in their way. Now Na'Vi, changing in-game leader, bringing SDY in, yet they have still made it this far. Now, have some fun with me here, Lisbon. I want to hear you guys roar, but first of all, I want to see where this crowd is. If you're cheering for Vitality, make some noise! Okay, okay, pretty good. What about Na'Vi? Now, if you just want an amazing grand final, Lisbon, make some noise! No, 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 no. That was not good enough. Lisbon, I said make some noise! It's time for the grand final! Nothing worth having comes without the fight. Falling back, that's precise, and he gets another over the top. Got oh, him. Filthy, absolutely filthy. The fight is necessary. The fight is inevitable. The fight is where heroes are forged. A little bit of a random Molotov misses the oh, shot in one scene, the clutch of a lifetime! No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, no, way. no matter the pain. Good luck. Good luck. Every win lifts you higher. Every loss makes you stronger. Every trophy builds a legacy. Their hopes peak, Zywu peak, stops Alexi B, and Jax oh. is dead! Only one team can become legends today. Lisbon. This is where heroes are made. favorites in Na'Vi come to this tournament with recent changes to their roster, looking better than anyone expected. No strangers to the stage, no strangers to lifting trophies, but the route has not been easy. Now the Na'Vi nation must stand behind them, behind every shot and give them all their energy to help them raise the trophy here in Lisbon. Simple, electronic, perfecto, bit, and the new stand-in player, SDY, looking to find success here. This is Na'Vi! Vitality back on the stage in what feels like an eternity. Facing their ultimate rival from 2021, but with a different color added to the beams. All of these players have achieved great things, but they are yet to do it together. Here they must show us why this team was built and why the last six months meant something. They are built to be winners. They are built to be champions. Apex, Zywu, Misuta, Dupree, Magis. V is for victory. V is for vitality.
The grand final is set. And this is what we're talking about. The pre. How does it feel, man? Yeah, it feels amazing being here again. I mean, look at this crowd. Look at all the crazy people here. It's amazing, guys. It's uh, really creating for the atmosphere. Masuta. Ah, it's what you said. Amazing feelings all the time. And it's been a long time. Did uh, it feel nervous to go back on the stage after uh, some course. time? There is a little bit nervous, but uh, it's a good nervous, you know? Good nerves. That's what we want to hear. Now, Apex, it's been a journey. The crowd is still against you. This is the rival from 2021. But what is different this time? How can you stop this Na'Vi? Well, I think it's been one year and a half we didn't beat them. I guess it's a bit too long. <laughs> a bit too long. Now, Sundar Young, you mentioned to me at the very beginning of this tournament that this was a great opportunity for you. How important will it be for you to lift your first career trophy on a big international event like this? It will be perfect, and I just want to say, let's play some beautiful Counter-Strike. That's what we're talking about. Beautiful Counter-Strike. Sasha. Yes. The battle between you and Zaiwu. Now, Zaiwu says it doesn't matter to him, but for you, you want to win, right? You want to be the best player in the world. Yeah, but it matters better how we're going to play as a team against them because it's always close games. And uh, yeah, hopefully Portugal is going to cheer for us and we're going to win again. Now, it has not been an easy tournament for you guys. You're learning how Electronics leading. You've got a new stand-in. But how confident do you feel to take the trophy here? Uh, we're just uh, confident from every game in uh, our playoffs. And we're playing much better, better. And uh, with our new player, it's a new good experience in finals. That new experience is about to be here, delivered in this stage. Lisbon! Are you ready? Let's go! Yeah, I'd say it's safe to say that Lisbon is ready to rock and roll. Ah, uh, a grand finals that is deserving of a crowd like this. Yes, I, uh, I think they've, they've definitely shown that they, they want to be here. It's been too long since we've been in Lisbon and everybody has been so fantastic. And we've got the dream grand final in a lot of ways with the amounts that, of history between these two rosters. And the story for me today is the team of Vitality that were not only built to win championships, but the team of Vitality that combined the best of Vitality and Astralis to beat Na'Vi. Coming out of 2021, that was the story for G2 picking up Monacy, and the same goes for Vitality. These rosters were not only built to win championships, they were built to team win, be the only team who could win championships in Nadas Vincere. So now they get a chance here in the Grand Finals, in a LAN, in front of a packed arena, and Magisk, in his interview with Paula, was talking about nerves. And he said, of course, we're always going to be a little bit nervous, but they know how to win. They're, all these teams have, all these players have picked up so many trophies in their long and illustrious careers that this stage, it should remind them of what's at stake, but at the same time, it should remind them of all their past successes, all the victories that they've had, all the amazing moments that they've been able to pull off in the highest pressure situations. A Na'Vi, though, that's not necessarily the same, right? We're talking about world beaters. They were designed to defeat Na'Vi, but this is a Na'Vi that has recently made big moves. And Electronic, I mean, exceeding, would you say, every single expectation so far? As an IGL, I can't honestly believe in the amount of time that they've had, which is very little, how good and how clean the team looks on all of their halves. It's basically, it's been a revelation to have him, you know, calling for this roster at the moment. I mean, they're even in a situation where Sum Dai Young, with very little, if any, crowd experience, is able to compete, help them take down some of the biggest competition. They literally beat FaZe in under two hours in a best of three, which is nothing short of impossible these days in CS. So he was a part of that very much. We've seen a lot of role switches on all maps, CT and T side, and for the most part, there are moments of discomfort, but for the most part, it has been very solid. And for whatever reason, because Electronic can control the round and make it doesn't make it about him, but understands where everything is happening, he's able to play better. That's the last thing we expected, right? Yeah. The number one story would be performance hit. It was the opposite. 
the absolute opposite. Puts himself in the front of things and then continues to just show that there is even further depth. And when I saw that Simple was coming out in interviews saying, you know, we could be better with Electronic, and Blade mentioned, yeah, this guy could be even better than Boomich in terms of this role, I thought it was just sort of fluff. I thought it's what they had to say in order to kind of prop him up in this last minute, kind of sudden change. But he's gone ahead and proven it. And, and now the question will be, for how long can he prove it? And the question will be on the other end, of course, are, are we now being disproven that this project of vitality has not failed? A Dupree and a Magisk that are starting to step up alongside Zaiwu with a slow start to the year. There are now a lot of pundits, a lot of players out there looking at Zaiwu today specifically and telling us, watch out, he could be here to deliver. Yeah, and he has the numbers to prove it that this day should be no different, of course. The only difference between a matchmaking game, a scrim you play, an official, a LAN group stage, a major final, is the circumstances. It's not the game itself. That is always the same. And now, in a final, in a LAN final in front of the full crowd, the most amount of pressure possible, the stakes at its absolute highest, that is the only reason anything should be different for Zaiwu today than it was yesterday. And this is a Zaiwu who's been in grand finals before with Vitality, but not alongside the Danes. Their first playoff matches in front of an audience, and they go from quarterfinals, beating Entz, the world's number two, into the semifinals, busting down another roster who was just as desperate for a win, who needed this just as bad. They showed they wanted it more, and that, I think that comes with having the veterans that they have. I also, we can only know so much, but looking at Zonic off the tack pauses, it feels like what Blade brings for Na'Vi, and it felt like the game changed a lot when, they, when he chimed in. Now, there were moments and there are maps that are not perfect here for Vitality, and I think that even though they can figure it out halfway through, you know, the middle of a game, sometimes that's too late, and that might be an issue versus Na'Vi, who they are going to be the hardest team to beat here. The hardest, the final. Three upsets in a row is what they would be looking at, which is absolutely insane to think about. Thinking about the last two Nuke games as well that they won versus G2 and versus Ents, who again were 18 and two, shows us that all of these previous statistics matter somewhat for Vitality, but they don't define them right now. We're seeing a very special event take place. Very special indeed, right? And while there were calls for the rematch of Katowice, well, instead we get the rematch of what was Blast Fall Final in Copenhagen just at the end of last year. That, of course, when Vitality, led by Apex, were still fully French. They walked into that match, they end up losing, but they still exceeded expectations, and unbelievably, even just within that game of Nuke. So let us set our expectations on what could be a phenomenal grand final in front of what has been a phenomenal crowd. Because I have to say, Portugal, you guys have been special. And so I'm gonna set this up. Portugal, I wanna hear you roar! Portugal, are you ready? And we jump into Mirage. There's questions here for Vitality. Big questions. Desk said, maybe not much to believe in. Flash grenade on SDY. No utility here from Vitality. <laughs> and right into round one. Dupree opens. Where's that come from? Off of Cat. Magisk dead, Ooh. simple. Finds it right back. A little peek into the window. Bit's gonna try to chase this around. Zaiwu's ready. Ooh, he sure is. Four versus two off that one. Sumdai Young tries to get out from ramp. And simple just keeps this one tucked inside the ladder. Yeah, they're actually stuck at ends right now. I mean. So much information here for the CT side, and it looks like Navi are trying to change that as best as they can. Tag comes in. Simple with the signature P250. Already rang off in this round. Finds the other kill. Oh! oh! That's the B site crack wide open. He's not done, though. He goes back? He said, as if he hasn't had enough? He said, rotate slower, son. 
goes in for the peek. Now, he's had the bomb the whole time. Some die young just got info. Maybe we do get a helping hand to Simple. Or maybe he is the hand of God himself. Three kills queued up. Tries to tap back. Oh, it had to be all Simple in the end, but Apex is his answer. Ooh. And Vitality will pick up CT Pistol. Felt like they were actually looking at another 2v4 situation. Of course Masuda can stand there. His teammate just died in front of him. There's no way that Simple would be totally ready for that exact position, but the shot, the shot is unbelievable. And for Apex, controlling that USP for the guy in the back. SDY swung right in front of Simple. Of course, they didn't know exactly where Apex was coming from. Bomb plan still matters. But Vitality can rejoice. They won the rounds. It got very sketchy. Here on Mirage, we know historically, uh, this is, Navi have been the best map, best team on this map for an incredibly long time. And now there are other Mirage teams that can test them. Of course, it's a very sensible place to go inside of this veto. We've got maps here with a ton of history. We're looking at their fourth best map by stats and still an 80 plus percent win rate. Two wins recently over OG and Big, of course. We know OG have made a home of Mirage and so have Big in the past. No slouches whatsoever. Decide not as kind to Vitality. I'm actually here. We have the one AK purchased up. Wait, whoa, one AK and one kill. Uh, all they need is one. Oh! What? Or maybe two. He was in another time zone. Apex, that headshot in, I mean, I feel like nine times out of 10, you get some damage in that situation, but not the frag. Now it's 5v3. <laughs> oh, that's like, that's quite wonderful. Electronic is the other player with armor in this situation. I love that Simple hands that AK to Electronic because like you're saying, he's got the armor, Electronic turns around, gives it right back. Mm -hmm. Says, no, no, you keep going. He's, I'm not the one who got two kills this round. Yes, sir. And I'm not the one Ooh. who nearly single-handedly won them a pistol. Masuda inside of the apartments. He goes for the peak at his SDY sidearm to manage to put that Fomus into the hands of Electronic so he doesn't need the AK. And Team Vitality, they are nowhere to be found on this B site. Jesus Christ. I mean, the double dink right there with the P250 off the push, you know, they had to do something. I mean, even though they have three guns, it doesn't really stand to a pack of T's in that situation. So, Masuda missed a small timing. Of course, the double dink in from SDY. No chance to fire back. Magical look for some damage, but he can't even find that. So, Dupree down as well. well. Simple adds another to the tally. Three kills in the pistol, not enough. Three kills in the follow-up, and Navi bounced right back. It's actually astounding how quickly Simple can start off into a game. And again, we're looking at this from uh, his POV. This crosshair, and that shot is just unreal, right? That's, that's unreal. CT's not going to be as well set up as Navi just were. No AK here for Vitality to try to answer, but what about the five digs? Honestly, the complexion of that setup is still totally fine, as even if Apex takes some damage. War world of difference in that one bullet. Ooh, frag. Softens up Apex, Zaiwu tries. Apex spams, no contact. They've got a smoke, they got a flash. That smoke grenade goes down right ahead of Pit. Finds a little bit of damage. Simple on the other end. They're getting squeezed by Vitality, sure enough, from both sides. But no clear opening. No killer conviction. Man. The amount of confidence that we're seeing him play with at the moment. Instantly taking space. They haven't decided to skill. What's interesting is how far away this AK is with the bomb on the other side of the map. Simple waits a second, has Electronic to duel around with. And these two heavy hitters for Navi. 
Man, yeah, were there it, enough to just shred mere mortals? That's huge, man. What they did right there, I haven't even seen them do an anti eco like that ever, actually. So that's uh, the cap press up, and normally you'd have two guys up in B-Halls, and then you could split, no problem, versus anti eco In this situation, they go the extra distance. They forego the upper B push. I mean, they just killed Masuda pushing there. Maybe he's scared, and they say, well, let's see if they squeeze on the other side of the map, and then they get the two kills they need. Two bodyguards up front can press up and make sure that no one can push in. SEY gets the bomb down. Totally secure. No shot for Vitality. And they didn't know about the players that were waiting. You know, Dupree coming into this match straight up said, this boils down to individuals. The individuals on Vitality have to perform as they were paid to do. And we've seen flashes of it. That's always been the tale, right? The glimpse of what could be. Pimp coming into this match saying that he still thinks we're only seeing maybe 70, 80% of what Vitality really has to offer. Yes, and if that true. is good enough to get to Grand Finals, that's one thing. But this isn't a team designed to get into Grand Finals. They're here to lift trophies. Yeah, what's interesting is, you know, in some ways, Na'Vi were playing at 100%, right, when they took down FaZe at this tournament. And they did it with help from SDY, but not, like, needing the carry. There was no flash in the pan performance from the stand-in like we saw from Dexter on OG. It wasn't that at all. It was just the other players that we already know who stepped up to the challenge to prove that they could survive a roster move, and it worked out. Now, in my all my years of casting Counter-Strike, I never thought we would get a situation where there would be a player like Simple, and I'm talking about Zaiwu, who might have less help than Simple on their, on their right, roster, yeah. and that is what Zaiwu has right now. Oh, uh, are we sure about that? Matt just tries to lean in. Electronic and Perfecto able to answer. And so the little hope that Vitality could have had here in round four is very quickly uh -oh. soaked right up. If you're going to miss an incendiary, now's the round to do it. Yeah, at least it clears up the top of the, the balcony. Both can work. Yeah, silver linings. SDY at the front of it. Perfecto right behind him. There's that Deagle on Zaiwu. But we won't get too excited until he shows us otherwise. Some of the clutches shots that we've ever seen from Zaiwu over on uh, Nuke in that end match, and or sorry, in the um, match yesterday, unbelievable plays. You know that scope shot in the Hunter in the vents. I still the, understand. the play on the back of the site that he did versus ends NG two, once with the scout, once with the op. I really have no doubt that you know Zaiwu will play well. That is just not even a question for me. Coming into the match. But it is more than that. I think Navi have shown that they are the better team at this event. And that uh, Vitality are playing at a level that they know they can play at, but still have flaws. As they got better from Ents to G2, they will need to get better from G2 to Navi. And there's no real reason to doubt that they can do it. They've already shown us stuff that you couldn't predict. Yeah, like Simple getting two kills inside of Palace to take back all this momentum. And now we see the extension of it. 3-1 to the lead of Na'Vi as Team Vitality finally get a chance to bounce back. No op, though, for Zaiwu, and that'll be countered out by Simple, who's already off to that 7-2 start. Remember, three kills in pistol, three kills in the follow-up. The cool part about the individual story for Vitality was that towards the end of the game versus G2, everyone came up clutching a round or two, right? Masuda killing Monacy on that ramp push. Uh, Zaiwu, of course. Magic's from the upper site, the clutch 1v2 at the end to close it out. So many moments of brilliance. They spread up and take a lot of control, of course. We know a lot of players in their usual positions. Oh, man. Oof. Perfecto oh. finds it. That's the ticket player down. Yeah. But towards mid, there is the answer from Vitality. With that flashbang, they begin their cross. Apex taking the place of his fallen Magisk. And the utility is just going to keep that connector presence back enough for the bomb plant to go down. Oh, perfecto! Dangerous. But he comes off that bomb plant alive and kicking. And the T's just tuck back. Electronic could 100% catch them off guard. The utility comes through from Vitality, nading out what is Electronic's position, but Perfecto and Simple, well, that's two back for Na'Vi, and a man advantage with it. Bomb beyond the halfway point, and Na'Vi beyond the point that Vitality wow. think they can take this back. They concede, and Na'Vi find four.
the plan was susceptible, right? They had to put it down in the open. They were a little bit concerned. They wanted to get in the post plant positions. There wasn't that much pressure coming in from Vitality. There was no big flank as well uh, in a round like that. SDY could have made a lap around to mid. They decided to play it standard, and that was actually just enough to scare Vitality. And they put their op in a good position. Symbol got his frag. They denied that CT retake player. And Perfecto getting a ton of leverage here, taking out Apex. It subdues him to put him in a position like CT spawn. Of course, it was great that he got there in time, but they could not stop that plant. And we are back to Value Village with the mixed buy. It'll be clear to Navi how much money is left over. But we've got a tech. Dead round. Okay. No damage, so... It's fine. All good. They could start that over. Nobody's seen anybody either. Easy reset. Round like that is a, a little bit troubling with the the way that it went down. It was it, it was around that you look at the retake and where it's set up. You don't have a higher percentage chance of winning versus the team who's already post blended, but you have a pretty good chance. And it didn't feel like they had any as soon as they started to go forward with that. So they also had a good amount of utility as well. I thought that uh, Navi went quite quickly towards A, following up on Perfecto's aggressive lurk up the ramp. And in that situation, they defaulted B for a couple of seconds. SDY tried to draw out some utility, but I think Vitality were, were pretty prude about like using it. They made sure they, they kept on to a good amount. They didn't fall for the lurk smoke. They didn't think a fast B rush was coming in, dropping all their incendiaries. But they didn't get that utility down as well as they could have in the retake. Frag that did find electronic. Let him just stay tucked for the time being. Felt like maybe if Apex is able to run in, get the quick sandwich kill, he'll find that dual point blank. If you're just tuning into the event, of course, a huge story is Apex, and the same for Alexi in this tournament, being able to consistently have good maps. And Apex, actually higher peaks, maybe some lower lows. There was a one, one bad game from him, I think, where it, it stood out, but for the most part, he had some games where he was top fragging. You know, he was a far ahead of the pack, even on, on Nuke yesterday. There was a lot of moments where it felt like Apex was the reason they were winning. And uh, that's great to see. And of course, again, in their most historic win over Na'Vi at the, the Fall Final, it was Apex was the individual reason that they were able to win. So we'll see how much pressure he puts on himself to actually make that performance happen. But he should be riding the momentum. They're trending upwards so hard at the moment. They understand that these opportunities don't come that often. It's just not many lands or land finals that they get to play together. To think that this, you know, project's been alive for as long as it has, and this is the first time they get in front of a stage just seems unfathomable. Yeah. But let that be the evidence to just how difficult of a journey it has been. And I'm sure when they put this project together, they thought to themselves, it wouldn't be easy. But I'm sure they hoped it would have been easier than it has been. Yeah, you can tell they made some kind of concessions. They probably came in saying, okay, we're just going to stick to English until everyone is really, really good with it, and then we can kind of work off that. Even in the mid-round situations, we'll demand it so that there's no separation. We're playing like as a team. I mean, these guys are hiking mountains and stuff together, right? Yeah. So they're trying to go that. But now they decided, all right, I mean, if it is a, a, a two-player two, two situation with Madge is going to do pretty alive, speak Danish. You know, if that's the comfort zone, that's going to win you the round. That's going to help you be the most comfortable when the communication is the hardest, then go for it. And it seems that's been working. Let's go tilt it. Yeah. It's funny because I don't think we would love Apex as much if he didn't get so tilted. Right? Yeah. Everyone's like, get less tilted. So you got to be careful what you wish for. That's where the energy comes from. The source of his power, Vitality's power. You know, I've noticed with Arkham on the stage, you guys love to give us a chant or two. Yeah. Can I get one of those Portugal chants, please? <laughs> you want me to start it or you got it? <laughs> oh, wow. There oh, we go. That was fast. Louder. Louder. <laughs> wow. Honestly, I was thinking, how do they agree on this? But well, the best part about this crowd, they're it's always organic. on the same page. They're always on the same page. God damn. That glorious trophy. Back in the day at Blast, you know, was the one day in the stadium. Short, three short games match, at the same three time. Three games at the same time. But now you look at that trophy and you look at the runs that some of these teams have had, the best of threes that they've had to play. And it, it means that much more. Uh, become so much more real. 
and just in time for all these wonderful storylines of super teams being put together left, right, and center to take down Na'Vi, coalescing. Well, all those storylines continue to be told here because Lisbon, we're getting back underway. Of course, right off the back of that, Team Vitality decide to take a pause. Okay. <laughs> From tech to tack. Yeah, that's okay. They should probably talk about this. Uh, in the situation, save guns again. Two as they had last time. Zonic getting involved, and that was something that was, that was keeping our attention. In their last couple of series, it feels like he's taken a lot more of an active role. And I think more than that, it feels like his words are having an impact more directly. Like, even if it's before it might have been advice, maybe it was exactly how to call around. Whatever has changed has made a world of difference. The way that they changed, the way that they played on Inferno when things were going south. He said the right thing, they fixed it. Yeah, and here on Mirage, they need him. Such a fast start for Na'Vi. But a little cooler. And a chance for Vitality to bounce right back. Let's see, double M4s. And Simple postures that up over towards B-side immediately, looking for somebody to jump up. Nobody there, though. In fact, there's, there's a good amount of spacing here that Na'Vi can definitely go and consume. This is interesting. I mean, we've got uh, both the guns working together. Well, hello, Lady Luck. Man, I want to say that was luck, but it looked like he read that so well. Dupree responds. Yeah, Boost will be called out, but they also were smart to smoke this. It's one of those M4s, right? The few pieces the Vitality will have to work with. Sunday Young hits the dirt, so does Masuda. Now, these M4s are in the right positions. But can Dupree deliver? Oh, no. Tagged out from the left side. Perfecto gets vision over top of the van. And with it, the chances that Vitality's two M4s were going to stop Na'Vi come to an abrupt end. They scaled so effectively, and they made sure to smoke out the crossfire. And they, uh, yeah, that was SDY. He's gotten so many entries, actually, on Mirage. And I think with the conversation around SDY is that he has actually taken some space. He has gotten some roles that he likes. Some positions are new to him. Uh, but on T's side, he's got to play that really selfless role of getting in first. And that can come down, that can make the difference, right? That's a situation where both rifles are in the B site. A 2v5 hit or hold, or if actually it was in a 4v4, totally viable. But he gets a kill without dying. They survived the rounds. One gun saved here for Vitality. No, oh, there was a chance for the second, but Zaiwu. Not going to get to move anything forward. You can see that bit spammed in the connector and just was about to pre-fire the window, right? Didn't even wait for Apex to shoot him back. I think they shot at the exact same time. So cerebral. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... He knew he wanted some. Rips up Masuda. There's Perfecto taking what little was left right out of it. Yeah. Navi now on fire. Five straight off the back of the force by round two. Good grenade damage, of course, but that's not going to stop Bit. He goes right back to bottom mid and decides to continue to tear up Vitality. Apex, a singular trade, but how about Magisk? Yes, sir! Off of Tetris, that's two, but with 15 health, he dies oh to the Glock of Simple. Simply trying to escape, to try and offer us something more. Now, Bomb needs to be picked up. That's been retrieved. No problem. Yeah. Another they, round where Simple decides to give us three kills or more. They have the uh, they have Bit in the uh, perfect position, kind of controlling everything in the center, as he normally is. Masuda comes through. Does have a chance for individual duels, but that will certainly make things harder. He's got utility of his own. Such a dangerous game to try and go through that smoke. And of course, Bit holds it the entire time. That's mm. six instantly out of Navi. So incredibly well played. They caught Zaiwu off the fast connector presence. Flew down here. Instant shot. And another death for Apex through the smoke, this time by a simple. And simple understands the opportunity with Magisk looking to reposition as soon as possible. Doesn't know if there's more players behind the smoke on the ramp. Flies up the stairs with only a Glock in hand. I guess it, was been, it had been corroborated that he'd been hit down low or something, and he said, let me end this. 
So he does. Yeah. What do you, Vitality, have in their bag of tricks? Currently just rolling down this steep hill. Oh, Zaiwu, though. That's one out of the bottom mid Deagle Peak. And not one of the best tools that Vitality actually have to work with. It was nice to see matches give us two kills last round. Now the tale will be who else other than Zaiwu will be here if Vitality knock Navi down a peg. Magisk showing us a glimpse. But then showing Navi nothing else here in round eight. Middle is theirs, and there's nobody even close to trying to challenge. Yeah, these defaults are so powerful, and there is an opportunity at mid if they wanted to take it, but uh, Vitality have just been letting them have it, dying in connector. Another round where they have an excuse, right? Not everything that they need to work with, but... We're talking about a 7-1 scoreline if Na'Vi pull this off. Two players on the B site hold. From last time, we'll get a second chance. SDY back on the entry. Nobody behind Arch this time, so he goes really deep. So deep that Dupree's dead. Then the peek out of Magis. Done. Now they haven't found Masuda, but he reveals himself and unfortunately doesn't take anybody with him. Apex tries to get in, but by the time he arrives, everybody else is already dead and done for. Jeez. And as he reaches for the M4, that is the end of him. Navi, six round lead. Yeah, it's like clockwork. And I'll give it a second, you know, before, because we need to get back on utility, but we need to have a more proactive defense. This has been a consistent issue for Vitality. Figuring this out a little bit too late. They can let Bit walk underpass every round, but he is going to kill you if he gets comfortable and gets to the end of that. Killing him right away might be the best way to resolve the situation. Not shying away from the upper B push and not only doing it when it's 3v5, doing it in the 5v5. No prophylaxis here from Vitality and that's something that, again, as I stress with the players that they have, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they participate more? Now, mid control, of course, is going to be the center of it. And we haven't got to a situation where Navi are pulled back and have to come in late or try new tactics. So testing the waters there could be a great idea. And the investment this time around is good. They have the money. They have the utility. They have the players. They have the op. Let's show a better face, Vitality. Play like you're winning. It's a transition that we saw happen yesterday, and it worked. Zaiwu. Oh, I mean, look at that. Instant into mid control as well. Deep Peak looks for more. No, he is going to have to go above and beyond. Bit tries to chase in. Apex can't escape. Electronic hot on his heels. We get the smokes up. So because they transition into that mid control, it does kind of give a pocket over to Na'Vi to play oh. within. Nade hunting down Magisk, drops him to 69 health. Man advantage though, still for Vitality. But how about this position? Electronic catching Magisk off. Oh, they have no idea that he could have been in that spot. Oh, and then a bit of damage onto Zywu Electronic. He could have heard that. Oh, and point blank, it is in fact Electronic to extend the advantage again for Navi. Round after round, kill after kill. Dupree starting to attack from behind. Sure enough, flanks right into the back of Perfecto. So the retake's on. Bomb half gone. CTs with a smoke, they could drop that on top, but Dupree would have to come out from the palace. And there is no kit, so they have to get this going. Some die young to send, to send them packing. Oh man, that's yes, Masuda gone. That was, I mean, the key trade right there. And a few situations with key trades, right? Magisk, Electronic does not sit at the bottom of stairs. If he knows that, Magisk has tucked left pocket. It's a little dangerous for him. He's clearly crosshair-wise, wasn't aware of that situation. Magis equally scared, doesn't hit a bullet. Masuda dies on this trade, trying to just stop this bomb from getting the fuse. Look at Electronic, he was worried about the window player. Not a chance in hell for that. And as soon as Electronic hears Zaiwu shoot, he gets into his outpost. He punishes the re-emergence of Zaiwu. And this is an early 5v4, man. Navi, full credit, they ran hard up the A ramp to put as much pressure on the one anchor that was left there as Zaiwu went to go help Magisk. 
trying to fire up this War Machine. You hear Zonic even in between the rounds just yelling, talk, just talk. Yeah. There's no way you decide to survive the Navi onslaught without that teamwork, without that communication. I mean, you can lose playing passive, or you can you can lose playing with ideas, yeah. but one is much more dignified. You want it, fight for it. Absolutely. As Mad just said, there's no pressure. No one's expecting them to win this series. The odds are three to one against Vitality. They should be playing like it. Excellent play from Bit. Gets boosted up early. Dupree just walks right into his own demise. Magisk attempts the recovery, but that's also going the way of Na'Vi. And so 10 rounds into this game, and we're looking at 9 for Na'Vi. If they can just get through the weapons, those three weapons. And sure enough, the follow-ups, Electronic and Simple, continue to just tear up this A-Site. And every time they decide to get something going, it is theirs for the taking. A perfect round out of Na'Vi. Ooh. Spacing is immaculate. I want everybody to take a second. Look at the money on the side of Navi. They are almost all max cash. Yeah. This is just perfection. That amount of money they could buy the bank that owns Ninja's house. Touching on 14K here. Another easy frag for Bit. Been so aware of when he can get into window, does it with almost no help at all. And... Yeah, look at the scaling, though, as they get into the connector. There are three players right behind this attack as well. Every time they peek, they see five. But another round with some hope as Vitality invest and get that op up again. How many times before something just sticks? Again, they go towards mid, and Zaiwu, not the first time that he sets up the fight before. He survives the AK damage. Apex wants a little piece of this, but Electronic doubles back, and we get a quick move from Navi. Tech 9 at the front, and Masuda, with the lesser of the rifles, is able to answer. Then Dupree comes in from underground. Oh, yeah. And that's Electronic dead. Finally, something from Vitality. Sure enough, Zaiwu gets in, but simple answers. And in a 1v5, his whole team dead around him. He, at the very least, gets the better of Zaiwu. Bit of damage through the windowsill, but a second for Simple. And he knows where Masuda is, but that's drawing him into the cat player. So sure enough, Masuda from down beneath shoots through, and Vitality absolutely needs something. Get in their face, man. That's another 5v4, but this time the conversion. That'll fire you, fire you up. You have Dupree going in for the underclass play just as Zaiwu comes out here. And I don't know if that smoke was whisked inside of the window or if it was a CT smoke thrown out of the window. It doesn't look like it. that's how you would smoke underpass, but uh, either way, it's an opportunity. Zaiwu takes it. And we see how much that hit gets slowed down when SDY doesn't get the kill, right? They're still trying to continue for the same tactic. Oh, push into upper. Oh, and Perfecto gets one, but it's answered back. They're fighting. And now the T's are trying to get drawn in. Magisk, his chance! Three kills on the round! Saiwa wants to finish this. Some die young and simple. We've seen their synergy. And they get away. Plenty of time to try and piece something together. But they lose map control as they do stick around towards the A site. It's Apex to go hunting. Oh, these ones just look so classically good. Another. Opening kill, another bit of mid-control, another potential flank coming in and uh, instantly Vitality or Navi into two players. Catch 22 no matter where they go at this point. They understand that. Looking for an unforced error, error here out of Vitality. Now, there's no questions for Vitality because they have that deep T spawn. Apex breathing down their neck this entire time. And time about oh, to force it. the hand of Navi. Here he comes. He peeks out and Saiwu, just the sidearm needed to end that. It is not much, but it is three for Vitality.
Yeah, Miss Molly there for SDY, but it doesn't feel like it would have mattered at all. It's this double push upper, right? First kill goes the way, actually, of, of Navi, but the trade back is huge. Mad just falling into the site. Nice multi frag. And, yeah, that's the anchor we know. Locking it down with the rifle. They didn't have to stress the rotations back. They made sure Apex cut him off at the pass on a good timing. It's been dominant, but this half could easily look alive in just a few minutes. Taiwu, easy first test. Electronic trying to cross that one dry. Oh, but a missed shot. Taiwu just tries to look straight down. Meanwhile, Bit, he compromises window. Masuda and Dupree soon to be pressured. Yeah. Zaiwu, he has to, I mean, he has to worry about everything now, right? He doesn't know if uh, Bit could be flanking him from the top of Khan. Matt just taking his time to peek back and forward. Zaiwu's no stress playing in this spot. Hasn't moved. Yep. Sat still. Ooh. Delivers into Bit. The other offer on the other end. Oh, Simple gets hit by the incendiary. Zaiwu just waits. And then that right side peak <laughs> is his end. Ooh. Simple finds it. Yeah, Perfecto's he... been inside ladder the whole time. And now there's a question mark because not only do you lose Apex in window first, but you lose the connector player. And with that, any answers as to what Navi are up to? It's just about thinking of when will the CTs get insecure? This is a spot where, of course, you have to split up. But where do you come back and get information? Oh, shadow advantage, not enough. Wow. Swing duel here. We've already seen Magus deliver multi-kills from this position. Whether that's Tetris or inside sight, he's been solid. And now he hears them as they start to press into this A site. Sure enough, some die young is dead. But it's simple in his place. 16 frags already. He was able to answer Zaiwu and Connector, and they give him enough space to make decisions. Masuda's got the kit, but Dupree, such little amounts of HP, and there's not one person in this crowd who doesn't know what Simple can deliver. He tucks in silently, awaits them. They get closer. They tap that bomb. A first in from Simple, oh. but a wall bang for Masuda. Woo. And Vitality, by the skin of their teeth, continue to rack up rounds. He had to bust out the power drill to finish him off through the box, and, and they, they make it happen. Uh, Magisk, I honestly thought he was going to die for sure without getting a kill. Used so much of his ammo in this spot, and still was able to control the rifle enough to take out SDY. That's raises their odds dramatically, and of course, in this one-on-one, -on -one, who knows what happens if Masuda doesn't find that final bullet. But it's Vitality to pick up another Dupree with the X-Factor off of Cat. A demoralizing way to die. A quick boost. And they search. Catwalk has been a point of contest. So is bottom mid bit. Such a nuisance, such a consistency for Navi, whether that's into window, testing connector. I've seen him do the speeding up through underpass. Dupree ready. Oh, flash turn, and that's the side anchor down. Rotations are coming in, but there's no one left here. A new position from Dupree delivers. We got a lot of feet from Navi inside this site. Simple, a little preoccupied, almost has a chance to turn that back onto Apex. So now suddenly Navi surrounded. From all fronts they fight. Such little HP for Vitality as well. And when you're just fighting for a mere five rounds, you have to think, can we take this chance? Is it justifiable? Is it even doable? Oh man. They waste. Too much time contemplating the option, and now, sure enough, they oh have to let this God. slip. The damage is there from Navi, and damage is enough. Ten rounds on a T-side that wins yet again. They respect that T-side advantage, being able to sit and wait. And, uh, okay, Madge is the last player with uh, with any help, and he'll take those duels. Perfecto dies. That's some death, but moving into the last round, I'm not sure it'll matter at all. No, it, it absolutely will not. It'll be nice for him and his money. But I think they had enough saves there. Wow, Vitality, that must have been insanely hard to figure out and call as an IGL, right? Four players alive, ultimately.
three players with no HP. If Navi made one mistake, they would 100% pounce on that. But it wasn't there. Looks like Masuda just needed the one kill on the hold. Navi on to 10. We've had those moments of microaggression from Vitality, and we've seen the peaks into the palace. Yeah, they're bringing it. They're bringing it now. I mean, in that sense. But this one a little bit more of the same. Masuda, sure, okay, within apartments, but nothing too egregious, and instantly given up. So, more of what wasn't working for Vitality. Yeah, he didn't get him totally locked into that spot. Like how much value comes out of that single flash, right? His smoke comes through. He loses vision. And the idea is how, how, oh, how free can we make this set up vanilla Apex shooting again from the window? And they know who, exact, who exactly that is. Yeah, Bit has had such, I think they, such a problem for Vitality. They know the Opple B ticket in this position with the rifle shooting just now. Well, Dupree has been trying to be devilish on Cat. And Navi do let this one get down to the final 30 seconds. They've squeezed out the utility from Vitality. It's only Zaiwu sitting on a frag. It's actually kind of hard considering their spots to throw the nades down for the ticket player. So let's see. I, I think this is a great rotation, of course, from Vitality, as we can see. Let's finish this half with a bang. 15 seconds for the 15th round. Bomb gets taken out. Apex double kill. Oh. And he's looking for a little bit more. It's Saiwu to help. Simple last man up. 1v3, surrounded and done for. Navi bleed out that clock. And every single time it seems Vitality get to sprinkle just one more round in. We will be back, Lisbon, in just a second with the second half of Mirage. Hi, I'm Twist. Hello, I'm Zagu from Team Vitality. This is Tizian from Big. This is Alexi Beef. And this is Buying Tips with Coinbase. In this kind of round, I'm gonna buy a Kevlar. I'd say for a piss around with $800, uh, I'm just gonna buy Kevlar. I would most likely buy just Kevlar. I think it just gives you the, the best chance at uh, having a fair duel. I think depending on the spawn, if I have a top spawn, for example, um, I will just buy Kevlar and op, um, peek into second mid. Because of the fact that it's usually better to have the utility towards a B player or a player that is holding A long, for example. You have utility on, and push around on A side, you're not going to have time to use the utility when the, the hit comes in. It's going to happen too fast. $2,800. Obviously, I think I'm going to buy some aid because it's really important. Uh, I would go for uh, MP9 and Kevlar. Light cap. And then I would buy an MP9. This is the best advice. Deagle armor or Deagle small armor and full nades. If you don't have nade and you, if you only play with confidence, you're going to lose because it's so hard. You have to play with some nades. I'm going to give a boring comment, but it depends if I'm the guy who is entering or if I'm the guy who's supporting the, the entry. Like me personally, I like, I like to play Galil. I would like for me to have an AK and a helmet. At least one slot and flashes because we need that for taking B. But obviously one of the options is just AK armor with the, the money available. I mean the nade and be a good teammate and going with the teammates is it's enough to, to go B side. Like armor glow and, and util would probably be the, the better bet. Just so like if you try contacting B and it doesn't work, you can still uh, deny info with a smoke or you can apply pressure later with utility. I would for sure buy full equipment, M4, Kevlar, diffuse kit of course. M4 and, and full utility sets. Open Kevlar because I've, yeah, I have enough for both. I'll go for an M4 silence. Because I'm used to, to flash for my teammates in the island. I'm just gonna flash twice if, if the enemy is gonna attack long. Yeah, just try to survive, play with your team, don't stay in, too long, all, uh, in long all the time. Sometimes smoke it off and play in short with your mates. I think when you have 5400, it's just like a normal like default a full buy anyway, so I don't think there's anything special to really do. Make sure that you buy a flash for yourself just to 
have some cover and make sure to buy some utility just to make it easier for you. And so we find Navi comfortably sitting on 10 rounds after the T side of Mirage. But Mirage was meant to be a problem for Vitality. Should it have been this big of a problem? And even though we've seen good T sides out of Vitality in this event, is this going to be too much to handle? I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's a team that I pretty much would ever pick against Navi on Mirage. That is the size of the task. It is absolutely colossal at this point. So. Obviously, you know, they'll have to play better than they have been, but again, they've been breaking new ground, so why don't we wait and find out? Looking for a pistol now. As they start off with a five-round deficit. Half two, map one, grand finals. Perfecto taking first peaks. Vitality parading with utility into the B site. Oh, nice flash out of pit. That sets up Perfecto wonderfully. We've got three counter terrorists just sitting within this site. Masuda's able to get one. We've got a quick clash. Gunfights all over, but a man advantage for oh, Navi. Okay. And Perfecto taps them down. Yeah. Four frags to his name and an 11th round to Navi. You can make that the uh, Maersk anchor play of the day. All right, yeah. because uh, Perfecto is the guy to watch all in small sites. When he has to dodge flashes, I don't think there's anybody better. And hell of a job right here with that aim. Played an interview recently where he just talked and basically inferred that if Perfecto had more space on this team, he would be able to step up this channel. So I think he sees something special in Perfecto. And of course, ever since he's joined the team, he's shown us the, the best version of Navi in history. But that one could be damning. Really is uncanny how Navi just continue to find exactly what they need with each of their roster moves. It's just, no, it's no coincidence, is it? Yeah. I mean, it, there's got to be somebody out there. I mean, it's, yeah. Maybe a man named Blade. I think so. I think so. Electronic with the MP9. Dead after just the first. That's not going to be the end of the world for Vitality. Oh, we, we casted Bit's first match, right? How nervous did that kid look playing on Inferno? That was the, that was the moment where it was like, man, he's just, he ain't ready. He's not ready for all this pressure. And the reason was, is because Blade shoved the textbook on, onto his chest and said, read all this while you're gaming. <laughs> we saw him at every single pause, looking through the nose, trying to figure out how to play correctly. And he did figure out how to learn right. Focused on his aim later. And then that paid off as fast as you could expect or hope. I mean, you never know how well someone's going to do under pressure, but sometimes it's the preparedness that can help you with that pressure. And that's what they always put first. Well, it is a three-on-three -three situation. There is Zaiwu left alive. Surely that Desert Eagle's not meant to do much. Surely they come out of the top of Connector and simply get wrecked by Navi, as they have in 11 other rounds. Some die young. Guns him down with the A1S. Two easy kills versus these unarmored Vitality players. And that, folks, is a seven round lead as they get through the little tidbits that Vitality wanted to offer us in this one. But now it truly begins. I mean, it's already begun for Navi, but how about Vitality? Yeah. AKs up in their hands on a T side that we need to see blow us all away. Seriously. And we saw SDY, I mean, we saw Perfecto and Press on the B side. SDY has been equivalently good in the couple of Mirage games that they played uh, over on A. I think that's the spot where he stole the attention the most and delivered. If you look just at the stats, he's just kind of doing okay at the bottom of the board for, uh, for all of his teammates. But if you watch the matches, you saw he's actually playing his spots very well. Man, 
Four rounds to go to overpass, and that'll be a real interesting affair, but for now, Vitality. Little shoulder. Ooh, but it's bit with the opening kill. And Perfecto, he's doing such a good job of just keeping himself hidden. No trade out of Masuda, so he has to walk away. Swallow the pride and look to come at it from a different direction. Electronic's gonna be locked into this. Molotov on his feet, he has nowhere no to run. He's got a fight, and Zaiwu insta headshot. As maybe there is a little something here for Vitality. They claw back man advantage. Movement here from Sundai Young, that'll be heard by Magisk, who runs the risk and walks out. And sure enough, we get a little life over towards that A site. Simple immediately takes it back down. Ooh. His 20th kill on Mirage. And he's looking to be the first player to have 20 MVPs. This could be his event. This could be his history. Begins to write it on Mirage. Bit, well, he still just sits on that back site. He's got teammates all around. What's left of Vitality? Zaiwu tries to fight back towards Cat. Bit pushes in, drops that bomb. Here comes Dupree. A single shot is all he needs. Wow. We got life on Vitality. Damn, they pulled that off. Man, it looked like the spot was so good. That bit made the move that he needed to. Simple picking off Magisk was huge. But you know what? Vitality in that three, 4v3 situation, they let Magisk go through with the Lurk, but they already at the same time organized for the B split, right? They had the full intention to let him stay alive, get kills, whatever. Take all the attention. That was enough to give Vitality a chance. And Dupree pulls out the clutch. To one in rounds, but they have sucked the money off of all of out of all of Navi's bank accounts. They've got electronic and simple on M4s, full investment. Looks like they have a little bit of a change of hearts, right? I mean, they're actually. Coming back to search with the bomb in this situation. Thinking their plan isn't bulletproof. Meanwhile, Nobby just chilling. We have seen Vitality take too much time sometimes. That yep. is a problem on these T sides. Could be yet again. Just missing the nade though, so timing works out in that regard. Remember, it's simple and electronic with the M4s. Two pistols inside a sight. This palace peak could be the end all. Electronic, he wants to get damage in. Magisk, sure enough, adding himself into the mix. Zaiwu, two kills. All is good for Vitality so far, but a bunch of damage continues to rack up. And simple shutout by Apex, but every member of Vitality is low. And Perfecto's still near enough to kill them all. Every single one of them could fall. Perfecto now also down into the 30s. Not a comfortable spot. Vitality a seventh. And only five rounds make the difference. I mean, the HP looks scary, but at the same time, they save four. They save four. They move on to round seven. That's nice. They know that uh, Navi are broke once again. Two and fours come in. They get some damage. Oh, my okay. God. It's okay. Yeah. Don't poke the Zybor. Pace was good there. Got control of what they needed to. Hit the A site. Peaked all their choke points simultaneously. Finally, a chance to breathe for Vitality as well. Just versus one Desert Eagle. Yeah, I think for all of us who've been watching CS for so long, like at 12 to 8 looks so different than 12 to 6. Even if it's just two rounds, it just feels completely different. I mean, you can literally hear that feeling. We got a Vitality chant, we got a Zaiwu chant. Nice to know you guys are out there. Hello. But you better keep it loud, because the Navi fans are coming back. Magisk over the ticket. Close pistol down. Not half bad. Two kills come through. Don't let this be their end. Masuda, sure enough, recovers it all. Alongside Zaiwu, they clamp down on what could have been a cost at the end of this. But there it is, 20 rounds deep and for the difference. Time for Navi to buy back. Nice mid-situation flash to make sure that there was no hope for those pistols to pull the retake off.
three straight. But the buy's great. We're actually talking about no kits here. Lacking head armor for Navi. No op in play. Electronic feeling frisky. They haven't had to deal with real any underground issues. Contrast that to Bit's consistency with it. Navi just looking to hold on to some grenades. They could be so valuable when the time truly comes. And this is the first test. Two T's out from apartments. They get swamped by Perfecto and Bit. And a smoke grenade for Bit to walk around with. Two kills straight back. Three versus three, bit in the open, finds that head of Dupree and dives back into the cover, leaving Zaiwu on his own, his teammate not yet here. He does just get out ever so slightly and Simple doesn't see him, but Zaiwu looks away oh. and bit decides to end him. Magisk, 16 kills deep, a 1v3 and a back turned to a very lethal Navi. There he goes. Okay. It's Navi right back, three guns up. Man, leave it to the B anchors right now. I mean, if they want to try to lurk out, of course, they've got to get through Perfecto once again. So good at taking the minimal amount of flash. And I think it eats it at first, but just enough time for him to see a player jumping out. Bit's got this covered perfectly. This is a matter of timings. I was holding that for what feels like days. And just as he turned away, his opponent turns towards him. Fortunately for Vitality, the buy gets one step better for Navi. But still no op. Yesterday went from OK map one to unbelievable map three. <laughs> yeah, it did. No telling what happens. It comes to a decider. And of course, within that series, we also get the Inferno game where Vitality just you know, kind of limped away. People thinking G2 had it after that second. It's not over till two maps won. And there's no real pressure here applied by Navi. They're going to allow for Vitality to make the move they want, and that is the pressure outside ramp. The reason they want it is because Simple's here. And with that flash, it is a beautiful two kills. Electronic, an excellent assist, but just like last round, Vitality bounced back, and this time, they go one better. They get themselves into the advantage. They get themselves into the A-site. Magisk can't manage to hold on to all of it, though. Electronic keeping this one lively. Shots to the top of mid. Perfecto falls back. Ooh. 25 seconds, bomb separated from its teammate. We've got individual 1v1s incrementally working towards one another. Oh, he got the info. He Perfecto did. has a clear picture as to what's up. I Meanwhile, know. Electronic, he gets dropped to 28, and Dupree, he just sits. That gives space to Perfecto to try and pressure that site instead. Oh. He wastes no time getting away from that mid-fight, but the bomb, of course, is still planted for Dupree. Electronic's got the kit, no smoke for it. Dupree peeks up, a couple of taps. Electronic, oh, all the way! Oh. Ice cold! No way, looking down, trusting Perfecto. That's a guy you can believe in. Did you see that move? Jumping to spot Cat, finding out where his opponent was after disengaging, making sure to prioritize, staying alive, dropping a smoke, finding a way back and connect into connector, getting up into the site, dodging twice at the top of connector, getting to the stairs and helping his teammate just by staying alive. That's why we talk about Perfecto. And he's body blocking so well, you can't even tell the bomb is still stuck. They had no idea what to do about that. Can't understate how hard it is to figure out how to make all those decisions and put them together in that sequence so well. And make it happen. You throw a smoke in there, okay, I get it. To just stick a defuse in the middle of the open. Man. You know, I was thinking, is he rotating out to, to, to upper B to go back to mid, to go 
to stay and, and wait an underpass for that lurk. No, he got in the middle of that. Simple setup again. Flash is over, both CTs back. Wow, this is a full court press here from Vitality. They've been coming in a little bit later, but they got info early as well. Top boxes did not get mollied in this spot. Actually, there's just not one available here. Simple for purveying the scene. And getting closer and closer to peeking down. Oh, but he oh. floats. <laughs> he was on top of electronic. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's man, like, how's this guy floating? He was like the trench coat with two kids, you know? Yeah. We've seen Cloud9 use that boost recently on Mirage. It works really well to get full view of the underpants. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> There's a fight. Oh, what the hell? Bit! Are we playing Quake? Just the jacks off of the ladder. Perfecto comes through with the ticket peak. We're right back to the 2v2. Low health, though. You know, we said Vitality yesterday over G2 just had that little bit more clutch. Well, with such little health, Navi shooting for 15. But the calculator, that is Zaiwu. <laughs> known to have a clutch or two. is very comfortable here inside the back site. Perfecto jumps up and he is dead. But what about Bit? He's in the open oh. and Zaiwu goes down smooth. Hey. From one great rookie to another. Bit shows him what's up. Low on help. Nice attempt in the clutch. But no result, and look at this, I mean, <laughs> oh, that's a tilting way to go. A uh, bit persists, right, throughout every sequence in this round. Match point done. And Vita Navi have proved a lot, right? Not only have they just dominated in the first half, pulled out the second pistol, but even though they let round slip in the second half, in the mid-round situation, they proved they were the better team consistently. Lost maybe one 3v3. Outside of that, no issues whatsoever. Massive comeback required here for the Frenchman and the Danes. Mirage just simply seems out of grasp. It, it does, it does certainly feel like it. And it's one of the final pieces here for Simple yep. in this story of him looking for his 20th MVP with another unbelievable performance. And we've seen later in that second half, Zaiwu started to open up rounds. He's gotten a couple of very important kills, but not really. He's really just in the shadow, I think, of Simple so far on Mirage. We'll have overpass to look forward to, of course. Uh, Vitality spend down to their bottom dollar. And a curious simple hunt. Smoke will stall things out, but we do get a cross from Apex. Oh, down he goes. Some die young, looking for another bit. In the meanwhile, he's got two kills. And in a four versus two, it looks like Navi oh. keep it gnarly on Mirage. <sighs> Masuda hoping to thrash back. Bomb picked up. Oh, I mean, I don't even know. Can they even commit to the site right now? They have absolutely no utility left over. Th three of the Navi players are playing together. No one's in spawn at the moment. It does feel like they need a bit more action. And this little lull in the action, well, that gives Perfecto a chance to wrap back around into the CT spawn. So, sure enough, Vitality's job will not get any easier. If Masuda can't cross over, then at some point, Magisk, he's going to have to just try to plant with an absolute gamble. A hope that nobody pushes in from Ticket, unless he decides to go clear it, but he only has 10 seconds left. Oh, and Masuda, he gets cleared off. Magisk, he knows Perfecto's going to run. Does he have the time? Absolutely not! 
A red flag raised on Mirage coming into this matchup. Our analyst said Vitality shouldn't have it, that Navi are simply too strong. And with a lights out performance from Simple, sure enough, this first map goes down easy. 16 to eight for Navi. Yeah, like a glass of milk right there. That's the Mirage they know. That's that level they showed versus FaZe. Doing it in the finals. Vitality have their work cut out for them. We will switch to Overpass, of course, a map that we've watched Vitality recently work on, show improvement. They tried to pull it out back in Antwerp, it cost them. They got absolutely dismantled. But those improvements, whether it's on T side specifically, we'll find out. For now, we hand this down to James Banks with an interview with Blade. A very convincing Mirage to start off with there. Things look like they're very much sorted out, at least on Mirage. How did you feel about that one, though? Some mistakes still? I think we are really confident, and we just play our stuff. We just communicate properly, mm -hmm. don't panic a lot. So focus is very good. Now, going into Overpass, i got to ask, how prepared are you for that? How does Electronic feel on that having to lead it? We haven't seen you play it. We didn't play it yeah, yet, but we practiced it, and uh, it looks good because uh, Sunday Yank is uh, on city side. He's changing Boomage. Boomage was on rotation, not a hard position. Okay. So we will play our all our things that we played before. It's it's good, and we start CT. So like, I hope we will snowball. <laughs> you want to snowball it? You want this 2-0? But how hard is it for Electronic to come in and lead on a map like Overpass? I think and he, he's fine. He's just trying new things and uh, trying to understand what, where he's wrong, what, is, what are mistakes. So nothing, so no problems now. No more mistakes now. Let's see if we can get it done. I've got to ask as well, right? For you, obviously you've had to fit in a new in-game leader, fit in SDY. How much extra work has this taken to slotting this in? It's the same, same, same work that we made with Boomish and uh, now I just want to see how electronic is, how much comfortable he is. Yeah to know what I need to add, what I need to help. Well, Blade, good luck and go get on with all the overpass stuff. Lisbon, make some noise, let's bring the hype, let's keep it going! I beatbox like I do the song with my mouth. <laughs> Interesting, I've never done that one before. It's gonna be pretty hard for me to make some sounds. Firearms is not very relaxing in my opinion. Just like that. Mm. <laughs> 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 
looking lethal as theirs and their fans battle cry loud and proud on Mirage. And at the tip of that spear, of course, it was simple. Incredible impact early on. I might sound like a broken record maniac, but he was instrumental in terms of that flying start for Na'Vi on this map. There's no other way to put it. Simple was the hero of that game, and I don't care about the rating. I don't care about the fact that Pit has a 148. I don't care about Perfecto's 135. It was simple, and his 1.32, but simple start is what put Na'Vi on the map in stick and final. He took the key to the castle and gave them to Electronics and said, listen, dear IGL, hereby I offer you the win of this first map. Please accept my offer as I pledge my life to Navi. Now I've simple did it again. He does it again. Yeah, maybe a little over dramatic in, in that regard, but I agree it's with crazy. you. Crazy. T-Side on Mirage is getting <laughs> off to a strong start and Vitaly on the other hand getting off to the worst possible start. I have a round two I want to bring up as an economy clip right here, because that is the worst possible start you can get if you're Vitaly. You, you win the pistol, Apex doing a good job, and then this happens. Simple happens. As you said, Matthew, with an AK-47 in hand, of course, he's the guy you're gifting in this one. Getting the first kill and then going back in for the second one right here. Apex do not believe what is happening. Simple oh. gets another one, and they end up winning the round. I was saying to myself, okay, Vitality, you win the pistol, you convert, you may have a chance of getting off to a good start. You may have a chance of game making this game competitive. But when Simple is delivering so, so well within the first five to six rounds, I somewhat agree with you, he was offering the win to Navi early on. You cannot make a mistake against that Simple. Right here, right now, Apex makes a mistake. Zaiwu gets found by Simple in the apps. The information is supposed to be relayed, that's supposed to be clear. Apex takes a chance, takes a risk, leaps over jungle. Simple insta headshot. Yeah, that's the highest level. That's and happens. it was absolutely incredible as well, because Navi then went on an absolute terror from a huge streak for them uh, on particular in terms of that first half. Round yeah. nine was a moment where Vitality might have had a road back into it, uh, but Electronic, he said no. Yeah, led in the half, Vitality found some footing, find some oxygen, some breathing room, but Electronic did them dirty in this round nine. And we're going to talk about the genius that this man have. It starts with Zaiwu and the opening kill onto Simple. Basically the perfect scenario for Vitality to kick things off. Abe is going to be able to find one kill, and then it's Electronic with the trade, but then the game sense, the V-step from this man, He's going to be crossing that smoke towards stairs, holding Magis, great flick, and then he changes his position. He does one better. He knows that his position is known, so what does he do? He changes it. He's been proactive, he's been assertive, and he's going to hide against that pillar, surprises Zaiwu, and just like that, Electronic secured round number nine. Look, we talked about the woes of Vitality on the CT side. It's not the first time in this event that they have a slow start, that they go on missing. Remember, CT side on Inferno against G2. Yeah. But my point was, and still is, whenever you have an opportunity to win a round, that that was it right there. That was their opportunity. You can't miss it. Yeah, and they were unable to be taking that one. But Vitality is their map pick coming into overpass as the second map of this grand final. And Danny has a moment for us to be looking at. What have you got for us, Mahone? Yeah, so coming into overpass, this is obviously Vitality's pick. But what's more interesting is actually that Navi haven't played this map with their new roster yet. So what I want to talk about first is what to expect from their positions. So just to set up some context, this is what their positions used to be with Boomage still on the roster. Now, uh, the one spot to pay attention to is Electronic. Now, with Electronic, he used to play short, and very often, uh, IGLs typically like to play the spot that Boomage does as the basically the B rotator. So we should expect Electronic to kind of slot in as that B rotate position. And what's actually very interesting is that SDY on his old team, he used to play this B short position. So we should see a very direct swap and how their positions are going to work out. Now the second thing that we want to look out for is Vitality. Something that they've started doing a lot more are these late round hits. Take a look at this round here, we're against Ents. There's about 15 seconds remaining, and they're going to try to hit the A bomb site. And the reason why teams like to do this is because with such low time remaining, the CTs typically don't have much utility left to, to hold off the push. That's what you see in this round by Vitality. They basically just set up one flash from Apex on the left side. And pay attention to the spacing here. Because the CTs don't have any counters here, it allows them to set up these trades in a perfect way. Mad just jumps out. Dupree's able to get this kill on the player truck. And then Apex and Dupree set up a double peek towards that side there. You'll notice here from that from Hades' point of view, as Mad just comes out, there's just no way for him to get away from Dupree right there. And as well for Deha, who's playing towards the truck side, he's set up for a double peek here, where even if he gets this first kill, he's 
he's not going to get that second one. So that's really the power that Vitality have with these late round hits. It's something that isn't that is that something that's actually pretty hard to deal with when you don't have utility, and that's why Vitality have incorporated it into their playbook nowadays. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how that one's going to be playing out. We will be seeing uh, Vitality starting on that T side of things as well. But I am very interested when we flip over to Na'Vi's T side. This is going to be maybe one of the biggest testing grounds to see if Electronic really can step up as a knight. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what Electronic and Blade has in store for us when it comes to Na'Vi, especially on the T side, as you're mentioning it right here. Na'Vi and Overpass is a map they don't really play a lot. They don't really remove it that much, but no teams are really picking it against them either. The last two times they have played the map, though, it's been a 16-7 victory against Heroic and a 16-2 victory against ET. Despite not playing the map a lot, they still have some know-how, and I think that could be a problem for Vitality. It's all going to be about the first half, but yeah, this is where we decide the fate of this grand final. It's either Vitality and Apex breaking their teeth against the defense of Na'Vi, or they have just enough to move on to the CT side, and then we can start to think about those two. This is the very interesting prospect as well for Vitality coming into this. We were saying, you know, maybe a nuke pick, perhaps the overpass sure. pick, because we send them picking into it a little bit more. What has impressed you about Vitality's growth on this overpass? Because uh, back at the Major, I don't want to give you too much PTSD, man. Yeah, but that uh, no. pick against NIP, um, that gave us some nightmares for many nights. Look, the T side, of course, is for me where the conversation has to start. We've seen Vitality run very dry on it, not being able to play that half part of the map, these gray areas of the map where Apex would be read way too quickly and easily by his opponent. Where on the CT side, I think Dupree is doing much, much better work in his forward position on the A side, and I know it's a pivotal point, So, but still, T side. All of the, uh, the, the heroes and the hopes of Vitality on the T side. I'll allow myself to disagree a little bit when it comes to Dupree. I remember him in Astralis. We all remember the double D combo device in Dupree on that A-bomb side. He hasn't found that melody in Vitality whatsoever. In fact, him and Masuda are the two lowest rated players when it comes to Vitality. Dupree with a rating of 0.94 on average over the five times they've played overpass. And that is the key to victory for me, because I agree with Matthew in the sense that when Dupree is playing well, when he's finding impact on the CT side, when he's finding impact on the T side as well as the Entrefragger, then we can start to hope for Vitality to win this map. But without Dupree playing well, it's not going to happen. Another point I want to make is Saivu is not the highest rated player when it comes to Vitality on this map. That is Makis, and we need Saivu. We need him to play as well as he did on Mirage, but with the team behind him to help. That's exactly the point I was going to be bringing up. Uh, he was just eclipsed in terms of uh, Simple's performance on this map, but it wasn't to say that Saivu was doing badly at all. He did look pretty solid on that first map. Of yeah, I thought he did what he had to do. Look, he could have, I guess, he could have done one better, in, uh, which is giving rounds to Apex. But, but if you look at the work he was doing, even though, or I guess when Vitality was finding their way back into this game, he was very decisive in kill number two and three, right? He's not going to be the one finding the opening kill, but if you allow him to go behind the, the entry frag, he's going to make sure the round is going your way. He did that a couple of times on the A side. He followed Apex closely, and he had that kill two and three. I thought he was on one. I thought he was on point, but still one step behind Simple quite clearly. I think talking to all the best in-game leaders in the world right now, you talk to Kerrigan, you talk to Snappy, you talk to Glaive, they all agree on one thing, and that is the T side of Overpass may be the hardest T side to play out of all the maps right now, which is why I'm super excited that Vitality is starting on the T side. Yeah. They have shown us against Ents that they can play a good T side. They've shown us they should be able to get four, five, maybe six rounds, and by then, you know, open up the game to make it a competitive one, and then I hope we get to see Electronic play on the T side. I hope we get to see Navi being pressured, because I want to see what Electronic and Blade has in store for us when the pressure is amounting on a map like Overpass, where it's hot on the T side. Well, we've spoken about win conditions for both sides of the server coming into this. Do you see Vitality having the hopes, having the ability to push this to the third and final decider? Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. I think they have given us enough to believe on their T side of Overpass. I think the game against Ents has to be a reference. And if it's a reference for any purpose, it's supposed to be right now in the Grand Final. What good does it do to play a better Overpass against Ents if you just roll over against Na'Vi? That can't be. Well, this is their opportunity on the Grand Stage in front of an incredible crowd in Lisbon, no less. So let's get the show under the uh, underway, rather. Scrawny and Launders, take this one away. Well. Under the road, under the pass, I guess, is where we go into map two. And we'll see if Vitality's kind of curveball pick can work out for them. They got pieced up on Mirage, man. That was honestly not really that close. That's the kind of Navi that just turns around in 2-0's grand finals, I think. It's not absolutely locked in. You know, we've seen the promise, and, and there are still questions around Electronics in-game leadership on that difficult T side that Pimp and the pros are alluding to. Yeah. Uh, this could be a test for Navi, but it's already been a test for Vitality, and you've got to be able to just sit back down into those very same chairs in front of this very same crowd and somehow turn things around after that dominating mirage. You want the good news or the bad news? S mm, <laughs> let's start with the bad. Okay, the bad news is, when Vitality played this map at the Major, 
They played against NIP. Okay. And this attack was the best op on the server by an enormous margin. Yes. To the point that not only was it a win, but it was a 16-4. And what's the what's what's the other news? The good news is that at least out of the maps they've lost, Vitality took down Heroic okay. at the same major okay. with the Magis carry. Okay, and you want to know the best news? What is it? Well, the best news is that we're in Lisbon! That's true. That's true. That's true. That's great. That's great news. It's never bad being in Lisbon. And this crowd wants a little more CS, so let's do it. Navi, Vitality, Map 2 at the Blast Spring Finals Grand Finals. And immediately, Navi to the CT side, take into connector. And it might be a great response. You know, middle of the map play, of course, is very normal uh, on pistol rounds. Vitality doing a lap so they can clear out some of these usual positions. And no information is still information here. They don't find anything, but they're at the same time holding on to space. Wow, this, I think, is a counter to the setup right now. Game plan coming through for Vitality. Look at the rotation. It's delayed. Yeah, it's perfect, in fact. I mean, Dupree, he'll just be allowed to sit here and wait and, and oh, hopefully strike at the right time. But has that timing gone by already? Yeah, Bits, he really holds. It's just waiting for him exactly. Can't find him right now. Dupree coming in slow. Ooh, nice and slow. And some die young catches Masuda first. Dupree trying to chase it towards long. There's the Gushin frag behind it. That's going to allow for the long player in Zywoo to just try and lock in. Apex known to be towards bank. Double kill. Health down on Zywoo. Apex low. Perfecto pushing in, but zywoo has got cover from boxes. And now some die young's got to prove his worth as the stand in. And down he goes at the hands of Dupree. That extra, extra late lurk comes through wow. for Vitality's T side pistol. That was clearly a demo round right there from uh, Vitality just off of that. Okay, maybe 40% of the time they, they go with the stair stack. Let's wrap around long, and Dupree waits for all the rotations to have enough time to get decongested in the stairs, come up through the bathrooms, and he enters the fray at the exact right moment. Taking out bit and getting the final kill of the round as well. That's a great sign. That's a great start and a great sign. Quick impact into the B site. Vitality gonna find this one for free. Okay. About as free as things can get. It's almost nothing these days. So, Insta 2-0. Potential for five to survive. Damn, man, Simple doesn't even get to shoot that deagle. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Yeah, that's the best way to beat him. Avoid him. Well, so far so good. Two good kind of game plan rounds. They pick the open site on the conversion. The pistol has Navi guessing completely. And I think in, in a nor more normal situation, you know, Dupree might just take that peak a little earlier, try to fight them as they're coming out of the stairs, but kind of feels exactly what he's supposed to. So it looks like there'll be no further investment. We don't know if uh, one of these MAC-10s will be dropped for an AK in the next round, but what we do know is that with five saved in this spot, Vitality could not be happier. The only reason the pistols don't push is because they don't want to give them free money. Ain't no way they're going to get a kill in that retake, so... The first buy comes through, and again, trying to see if Vitality are going to get rid of any of their MAC-10s, because there's, there's a situation right here where half-armor players will exist. They know that that's very possible based on the economy. So these MAC-10s could be all the more powerful. Pay attention to see if Bit and Electronic take a duel with them. We didn't see that B hit get tested in any stretch, oh. and so they try to go right back at it. Dupree, he's gonna open up. Electronic looking to deliver, but he eats a flashbang. Simple's down in water, though. Deagle popping off. Sumdai Young shaved away. And in an instant, it is Vitality just getting through the guns of Navi. That first one, absolutely free. Whoa, okay. Electronic eating a flashbang. It's not the first time that we've seen, you know, these just these little issues within Navi and getting team flashed. You know, most notably, I saw Electronic backsight Inferno. In what could have been, you know, a pinnacle round, just get absolutely team flashed and die for it. And this is a map where we have to question, like, how smooth is the Navi War Machine? 
Yeah, I mean, at least at least in their favor. And, you know, Vitality, as the underdogs in the situation, have to take it somewhere a little different and a little crazy. And both these guys do not have that many maps played. Now, the smoke misses at the back of Monster. And honestly, it wouldn't even have mattered if it landed because they were going so quickly. They tried to get in front of it, but the spawns were excellent. B-Rush called. Man, that's an easy day in the office for Apex. Clean with it on the execution. Back in the 2018 Astralis days, they had the very best B executes on an overpass. Any Liquid fans will know. They could hit the site, you could have five people there, everyone would be blind. With a completely open skybox, it's a sandbox. And you can make that utility go extremely far. Doesn't mean it's going to work every time. But now they're also putting specific pressure on SDY, who's playing the B site in place of Boomage. We haven't yet seen Na'Vi play with SDY on this map. So his skills will be tested as an anchor. Coming up positive so far, but failing on the rush. And a half investment. Yeah, plenty of nades here for Navi. So this one could boil down to just the timing. There's a gap on that one, but no CT is deciding to push up behind it. Our eyes fall on bit as he is in a very important position with a very important rifle. The only one that Na'Vi have, and sure enough, there goes Masuda. He turns his attention back down towards Dupree. Now this entire time, he's gonna know he's being pinched, but they have to do something about him. And he will fight every single step of the way. He gets away from the right side. Ooh, and now he's gonna decide to take this fight to Dupree, who knows he's under pressure, but deals Ooh. with it. Apex oh. can't quite. AK offered to Simple, well, and now we're playing dangerous games. Apex was very much ahead of everybody else. Man, that looked very promising for a second, but now it's not only equally good, but maybe even better for the CT side. However, with Magus, the guy that we talked about, coming into Overpass, finding a first head and getting the second frag, not even an opponent shooting back. Electronic hits a zinger. Great deagle shot, but only one. Utility and a gun picked up here. Oh, I like that. Passes it over. Neither of which working with armor, of course. But remember, low health on Dupree because of Bit being able to no. set it up. Sure enough, down into the 1v1. It's Saiwu's clutch to take. Aim punch makes a difference. But talk about costs. Vitality. Four round wins, but this time one survivor. I think that just equalizes for the last two unbelievably clean B exacts that came through. Got to appreciate Dupree willing and knowing that he has to eventually take this duel and Bit closing in on space. And Bit is mad about it. <laughs> what you gonna Bit, punch, bud? Yeah, honestly, I think it would rather be Bit in that situation. He already got some damage off, right? He was getting closer and closer. And he knows how much that could have meant. That one frag very easily could have also been the round. But it's one that Vitality should have won from the jump. Yeah, there was nothing that would have stopped him from getting that kill versus Dupree. And then we still get to see Apex die to simple. Yeah. Then that's two guns held up. But check this out. Aggression from Navi. Straight through the monster Ooh. smoke. Simple catching Zaiwu with the deep op peak. And with it, Navi's guns net them 5v3. Wow, the two rush down through monster. Instant with a flash. And now safe and sound are Navi as all they have to do is pull back and Vitality have no choice but to respect the amount of space that was just taken. And they can just buy time. An interesting angle, you know, normally you're holding deep like that pixel on divider and Dupree, whoa, hold on. Two players on the B side die. And then Bomb leaves. Masuda gets a bit faster. Simple still keeping an eye on this. One shot here from Simple could suddenly take the life right out of it, but there it is. If only Masuda had come around that corner while Simple checked long. That could have been his golden ticket. Yeah, small moment of time, but he was, he was very responsible there with the way that he For fell sure. back. He was constantly keeping most of his attention towards bathrooms. So it falls back into the hands of Apex. If he really wants to keep Vitality's winning ways going, then it's just three CTs between him and five. It's a little unorthodox, right? The spot being played right now to defend against this. There is a world where Apex can find a timing. He's managed to cross around. Bit does a ton of damage, though. Smoke grenade into heaven. No nade here for the CT. So Apex now having to do this with such little health. 
gets blinded on the cross, and as he tries to run, he still manages to survive, but too many flashbangs thrown. Some Dai Young just guns him down and gives Na'Vi their first. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, overall a very nice round between uh, Simple and the Tactic, right? They go through with this very unexpected monster push, and they have a perfect flash timing from SDY to assist in it, and hard shot here, here from uh, Simple on Zaiwu, who doesn't have an op to respond. It's also, again, very responsible, very careful about watching for any type of lurk that could come through. That was the mid-round moments. That could have changed the complexion of the round, but didn't result in anything. So Navi back in the game. You can tell by Bit's reaction earlier, they don't just believe they're going to win this. They know they'll have to work, even if they're favored. That's easy just from our perspective to say so. They respect the legends on the other side of the server. They've seen them do a lot, many times in the server as well. Bullets back and forth, they know about each other. Nothing connects, though. This whole time, of course, Zaiwu just patiently expecting somebody to try and maybe take that little gander around the side of Connector. It's not there. Bit far more patient. What a, what a statement this game would be for both teams. The amount of time going into the rosters, Navi's success, and then bounce back, take out in phase already in this final to get to this final. And, and the way they did it, too. And, yeah, the fashion in which they did it. Oh, oh, nicely done. Clean. Flash assist comes up from the B site. Bit makes the most. Again, perfecto. He then throws another. Oh, oh and Bit turns it down into connector. Looking to escape with 17 health. He is a one-man army. Yeah, chews him up like a tender steak. You give him the keys when you put him in the stairs and you say, peek whatever the hell you want. He calls for the flashes. He's the man set up to shine. The spotlight was on him. And now he can proceed to the back of the stairs. He knows that it's a very low chance that anybody's going to come for him in this spot. Another trying mid-round situation. It's this one man that has completely controlled the tempo. This is the difference between a 7-second rotation and a 20-plus second rotation all the way around through spawn. That's why it's so important to have a stairs player. But you don't just put anybody here. You put your best rifler, bottom line. Magic and Zaiwu are going to let that time expire. CT's looking for a hunt, but they're not going to get it. So two weapons move forward. Navi, a second round win. And one that comes solely off of the back of Bit. And they waited for him, right? He could have any moment gone for a peek into that fight that he had versus Dupree a round ago. But he waited, and he knew, of course, that SDY and Perfecto were going to set him up perfectly. And, and look how clean these kills are, right? He literally has enough bullets left in the A1S to get the third kill spraying through the wall because he did the first two with such sharpness. Any bit of nervousness can take you off the headshots. Doesn't affect Bit. He's immune. Oh, mechanical. Here he is, right back at it. Decides to bail, doesn't like that amount of pressure, and I don't blame him. Vitality trying to throw bodies at it, Masuda included. He's the guy with the Tech-9. He is their limitation. So it feels like once the guns come out, it's kind of Vitality step one to just get some more map control, right? Don't die to the two players pushing through Monster. Alleviate pressure by getting Bit to fall back. And now, at least here in round seven, that's exactly what Vitality have established. The map control they couldn't in those last two rounds that Na'Vi pick up. But now Simple's not too far off either. Gotta be careful about how far away they get from the bomb while they make progress, right? If the inability to follow kills as soon as you can can sometimes cost Vitality situations. We've seen them be... Oh, very structured about the way they, they leave it in defaults, but okay, there's an opener. Oh, and it looks like Zaiwu's peak. Oh my god, he goes high, then he goes low, shows an elbow. Just Comes back from underneath, the uppercut from Zaiwu. Slides underneath him. Sumdai Young under pressure. Holding it off from Truck, though. First one's his. Then Electronic offers us another kill. 15 seconds. Vitality 
I mean, they've just got to keep on pressing in, but no bomb plan's going to be safe. A fight from Electronic and a trade back from Dupree. It's the two Danes inside the site, and it's good night. Ooh. Navi lock it in. A lot of that comes down to SDY right there, the first one. That allows for the rotate to come in. If he dies, then suddenly you're back in CT spawn. No one on site. They had the help. Nice kill from Masuda at the very least. And this second peek from Zaiwu, unreal. I mean, I don't know if he baited that purposefully, but it worked. Good awareness of the fight. You can see he didn't overswing. But that's three in a row for Na'Vi. Just pistols here for Vitality. SDY top of the board. That's the last thing that Vitality need right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of problems at the moment. And they take SDY to a brand new map and then he pops off, okay, bit, doing more, doing uh, the most. If I'm not mistaken, right, for all the years that Sum Dai Young was playing with Spirit, they did love a little overpass. Right, yeah. So that is the cool part about map pools between yep. these two. Like, like the one question was maybe ancient everything else. He's been good. So he is right here with the rest of Navi as they continue to collect rounds and keep Vitality at arm's reach. That's four rounds, both teams. A tied game after the four round streak and a potential to get on fire. Why don't we contextualize a little bit and take a look at some of the recent overpass matches? Yeah, he's on point on points overall, but uh, yeah, a fair few times played in uh, 2022. Last map was a good one. New level of competition, however. Most of the teams that he was playing against back then wouldn't hold a candle to Vitality. Oh, oh my God! Again? Do, again? Oh my God! They do it again. Uh, it, it, you do not push Monster that often, right? It is the, one of the hardest and most risky pushes that you can try to pull off uh, on any map. It has become more and more popular, sometimes phasing the smoke, sometimes coming out late when you don't think they're there. But to do it when you expect it with the flash is always risky. You're coming into potential anti-flash. But they've done it now at the beginning of the round twice, and I'm not surprised Vitality weren't ready. Flash coming in. Chance for another goal, but... Maybe that jump a bit ambitious. Saiwu, he's going to punish him for it. We get Vitality into the man advantage. SDY, he's been everywhere, and he has been a problem for them. Saiwu is up above, perched, but popped as he tried to drop Dak down into the water. It's bit and simple, but it's a complicated situation because Bomb's been dropped in the open, and Dupree is nowhere to be found. He's got to take his time, and time is of the essence. 30 seconds to the clock. Apex just tucked in, and Navi trying to piece together the picture. Oh, it'll have to be the veterans, of course. The amount of quiet that's going on right now. He's turning back, and now everybody's getting nervous. But they're actually making it at the same time, coming back to this site. <gasps> Matter of oh. timing. He cracks it down into Dupree, but Apex, we saw him last time in a clutch attempt. Just get lost with all the util. Now, he's simply gunned down by Bit, Ooh. and we've got Navi in a 5-4 lead. Opens up that situation if he gets a kill on Heaven, right? Rare shot missed by Simple. Could have gone to the right. One of the best plays to 1v1 if you know no one's Heaven is on the right side of the site, but can't win his duel versus Bit. They go back to search, and listen, uh, even though the map gets quiet, and people start making noise, at that point, without Apex putting any pressure down on the site, of course you're going to check your flank. And they actually split up to do it. So if there's a world where Dupree goes one way or the other, he has to take a fight. And he also can't get away if he tries to disengage. So it's well handled. But there really wasn't more that Apex could do from his position. He had to wait, staying alive, as has been talked about, is so key for him. Now there is a lead for Naughty Navi. Naughty Navi. Not always naughty, always naughty. causing trouble. <laughs> oh, bit sure as hell is. Ten kills, four deaths. Yeah. yeah. He's a mercenary, man. He's a renegade. They put him in the stairs. He makes the map feel bigger. It's that Nico effect. Magisk looking to take on a risk. Magisk is a player that the deaths were really highlighting. 
Because Saiwoo isn't their highest rated player on Overpass. Yes. It is Magisk. It is meant to be him. But Electronic is killing his teammates. And now Perfecto will have a chance to step up. It's a nearly dead Dupree, but they still are able to just evacuate the monster for now. Minute 20, still plenty of time and no control for Na'Vi anywhere towards this A site. So they have no real clue as to what's up. Yeah, they've been really light on the short B pushes and there's been tons of monster action. And this time it doesn't go so well for Vitality. That was one of their kind of prime locations to attack in early rounds. Resetting is not fun in this spot, right? Dupree has already been tagged low. That communication has been corresponded. Perfecto knows he can just chill. They and be, they got to be careful, though, about this uh, this 40-second timing, right? At the top, the player, if they're pushed up long, they're going to make it their way through bathrooms to make sure it's not A. And Vitality will start to move. Navi on high alert. Two players inside of the water. Simple holding cross. Easy. It's Magisk and Zaiwu right there with it. Apex trying to claw it back. Jumps into the site. But Simple continuing to cut them down one after another. Oh. And Apex is his fourth victim. Oh, he's putting on a show. He's a turret. They built him in there. Didn't have to move from graffiti. Just a quick pivot over and over again. Just nasty. Unfortunately, I, I want to use this moment to say, I mean, we had some nades coming out. No flashes with that attack. No scaling with the mollies in that position. They threw their nades, they waited, then they moved. So simple, full view the entire time. But let's move forward. Six in a row, opening kill again for Bit. Fast attack from Vitality through that first molly, but it's smoked out. It's understood. They're trying to take some kind of risk with just the pistols that they have. Bit's got that first one dead. Who follows suit? Oh, the other two! Four kills from Bit! And unleash this beast. Let him go hunting for his ace. Let him find that final fifth. Bit's oh. got it with the headshot! Navi keep themselves on fire, and Bit continues to power up. The kid is taking names. 15 and 4. And his favorite are French and Danes. He is just keeping this map wide open. And he's even had riflers right behind him. You know, just in case, backup dancers. But he's the star of the show. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. That's good. That's good. Ooh. You know, th this is a bit whose carries were wasted at the PGL Major, right? He was so good. He was looking like the best player on the team. Simply as as he was at Stockholm, all the way up in the semifinals, number one rated player at the event. When it came to the big lands, he was back. But his team weren't playing like they are now. That's why Navi are on fire. That's why this situation looks as scary as it is, as dire here for Vitality as it could be. We've seen Vitality try to play through the procedures. And look at the like how dynamic in terms of the different positions being played. Right now we have um, SDY helping out with B. Last round he was helping out with A. Bit is the rifler to support. Simple back on the site. Oh, oh another flick shot hit. He just doesn't miss, does he? And then he kind of sells the fallback by dropping that smoke. Apex, oh, he comes around and clears the corner. Heads up from Apex not to fall for that bait. Oh, and a oh. huge scalp to take as well. Get rid of Simple, and maybe there's just one less problem. And with that one less problem, maybe you find yourself with one more round win. But he walks in, and Sumdai Young one. just survives the op shot. Bit, he's behind Truck within the fire. He cranks the heat, 
and he gives it to Vitality. Zaiwu tries his damnedest, but Electronic finds that last kill. Navi, a comfortable 8-4 score. Can you believe the pristine rifle work coming out of it right now? So damn sharp at every single turn. They missed a molly on Optimus. He has a perfect spot to stand in, and he's actually, you know, one-waying this against them, so they have to trust it. This is letting Magis down when he comes onto the site, knowing that there shouldn't be anybody in this position. And then he just pops off. So even though Simple does give him back a kill where he decided to make the confident move that he didn't absolutely have to, Pit's right there. Pit is right there. SDY, of course, surviving on one HP is tragic, but he also finds an opener before that hit comes in. Pit looking for a, like a plus 2.0 rating in this half with this start. No free wins versus Na'Vi. Hell, no free map control. Every step, a new test. And I don't know if Vitality are well enough studied for a solo AK play versus a Na'Vi that's hitting this hard bit. 17 frags now sitting silently inside of bathrooms and that internal timing ticks. Getting himself somewhat away. The flash is over top. He's primed and ready. Oh, there's some die young. It's two assists from Bit instead. AK hits the ground. Magisk, meanwhile, hoping to recover inside of Connector. Electronic looks the wrong way. Turns the attention back. That Desert Eagle goes down. The bomb right with it. Zaiwu hands oh. on to the AK, but a nade oh. with his name on it. Damn. And Atlanta Electronic just illuminating Connector, giving Navi nine. The alley oop with no help required. His own nade, his own spray. SDY right to the jump. Ready to compliment all that damage that bit did with kills. Oh my god, did you just write that sign? It's, a, it's something that will only matter, of course, if the loss comes in, right? But it does feel like, you know, we're in that position. We also have Magisk on three kills who, yeah, as already pointed out, in their one big overpass win, he was a hyper carry. 1.30 rating over Heroic, a grueling game. And I think we'll see more from the CT side, but it doesn't mean you don't have to play both. Little contact. Simple spots a target, but no casualties. Gonna try to test bathrooms again? Nope. It's a quick redirect. But again, map control's not been an issue all the time for Vitality. They have been given free space in some of these rounds. And this is looking like one of them. They start to clamber over top of the railings creeping ever closer to a B site where Perfecto, maybe he won't be able to hold this many players back. He peeks into the fire. That's half his health gone. Now he does a ton of damage and Electronic actually finds one with the fire. Yeah, he cuts the first head of the Hydro. That's the important one and the Molly still exists. And Electronic does too, locking in these kills. Low HP for the remaining three of Vitality. Do they want to take this chance? Because if they do, it could just get slaughtered at a potential second ace for the side of Navi. They're going to try to run, but Apex, you can't hide. <laughs> 17 kills for Electronic, all five in this one. And Navi are absolutely feasting. Dude, oh uh, man, I, what can you say? I thought this game was going to be all about Bit, but look at how they play off this Molly. Electronic second, Molly comes in, it finds the refrag for Perfecto. They try to use it to one way, gets damage off. That assist Electronic. Then the flash timing from his teammates here is perfect. Actually, was that Zywoo's? It might have been. My god, he's picking up those pieces, following them every single way they go. They got stalked that round. Round 15 coming up, we've seen basically 15 different setups. Simple being incredibly proactive all over the map. Bit even more so as a player with just a rifle. Impressive to see SDY helping on both sides. When we saw Bit get integrated to the team at first, 
one of the hardest things about it was the fact that Simple is so pervasive. He's rotating all the time, and you just have to respond. You have to be able to play multiple positions. On Inferno, Simple will be lane sometimes. He'll be Arch. He'll be beat. That's why he has the most amount of impact, because he has the maximum amount of space. And SDY, he's getting shoved in all of these different new angles way more than he would have had to play on the on Mad Lions or Spirit, and he is coming up good. That he is. You know, it's one of the things Simple kind of gave Electronic credit for was the fact that if somebody on the team feels like they've got an opening or want to make a move, make a change, well, they're allowed to go for those moments. Navi simply vibing. With an 11th CT round queued up. Now, there's an auto sniper on the field somewhere. I want everybody to know that. Oh, okay. Simple bought it, maybe left it in spawn, but it's out there. Oh, it's always out there. Yeah, that would be fun. Double op set up here to try to close things out with a damning 11th CT round oh, win. It looks more like ROPS every day, picking up the op every once in a while. The depth on this kid. But a missed shot and a second Ooh. that doesn't follow up for him. Meanwhile, 15 rounds deep, and we still have to ask, where is Magisk? If they're going to get a fifth in this first 15, this could be the round he offers it. At the helm of that monster hit, Apex comes around the corner, back of Electronic turned. A double man advantage that feels like surely Vitality have already got enough. But what about that flash from SDY? How about this hold from Perfecto? Incendiary to the right. Sundai Young turns his attention. Oh! All three! Sundai Young and Sundai again and again and again. 11 4, 11 rounds straight, and a dominant overpass CT side.
And so here we find ourselves, folks, back in the server with Navi versus Vitality. And before this round starts, I want to take a second. This is a special day, not only because we're here in Lisbon, but because this is Counter-Strike's 23rd birthday. And I want everybody here to give us a Counter-Strike chant. Start with me and keep it going. Counter-Strike! 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 Hell yes. Not too shabby. Happy birthday to Counter-Strike. 23 years and going. The game we can't stop loving. Zaiwu. Oh, man. One with the game. Made for it. But currently being made mincemeat by Navi, him and his teammates. This is a Navi that you just struggle to keep up with. And Zaiwu, well, down he goes. Electronic and simple. Two additional kills at a CT side that we may never even get to oh, see. Oh, man, don't say that. This pistol. Look who's come up. He's seen the targets. Can't hit the shots. Still a chance to get in this. Has to hit a crazy one, but it's perfecto. Mr. Crazy himself. And Majisk, the guy on CT side who needs to deliver, also falls. No kills between the two. 12 to 4. Dire circumstances. Cavernous depth between the rounds of Navi and Vitality. An unbelievable mental lead, numerical lead. I mean, if you ask anybody on Navi right now, do they think they won this game? They, they do. They already feel like that. You can see by the way that Simple was playing with his op in that first half. Yep. The confidence is there, the belief is there. I mean, it, Vitality have to prove them wrong. I have to show them why it's not true. Now, I will say, we can still look forward to CT side. We can still look forward to CT side. I think on all maps, Vitality are almost consistently better to the point that it's unbelievable. They put up great halves. Nuke was kind of an anomaly with their two recent maps being good on the T side, and that's just a good sign for the health of the team in their map pool. But on Overpass, this is the half that they figured out first. We know how difficult T-Side can be sometimes. And it looks like the search on this T-Side round from Na'Vi has paid off. SDY's got all the info that he needs. Which is not seeing a single person. Absolutely free for the taking. You know, you said that if you were to ask the players on Na'Vi whether they've already got this one, they would all say yes. And as much as it hurts, if you were to ask that same question to Vitality as to whether they've already lost, I think maybe at least one or two may feel that way. Down in the depths, Masuda Magisk, rough match. And this is SDY as technically a stand-in looking to pick up his tournament win. Oh, oh, okay. It's electronic from top bathrooms instead, but it's still nice and clean, and it's still netting them what they need, which is more and more round wins. Getting ever closer to that coveted trophy lift. Electronic 21 kills, nine deaths, as he mops up three more within round 17. What a, what a beautiful story it would be for some Dai Young. You know, he's a guy that, he's a player's player. Everybody knows who has watched CS for a long time that this guy's always been underrated. He was someone who almost joined Na'Vi at one point in history. Now the rumor said that maybe he wanted to play with his friends, maybe it didn't work out because of logistics, and that this opportunity when he came into this event was the biggest of his life. And now he stands here in the Grand Finals, three rounds away from picking up a trophy with a team you dream of playing with. Alongside the best players of all time from your region and in the world in some cases. And potentially not even close. Oh, but a little bit here from Vitality. The double peek around long just kind of catches Navi asleep at the wheel. They weren't ready for that one. You know, and there will still be the question of Navi's T side, whether Electronic can can go ahead and pick up the mantle and own them all again. Ooh. Man, when you pick off an anchor like that, that can mean a lot. They're not seeing the 
this, the info on the setup. It's going to be kind of scary. But with the monster smoke down, I don't think Vitality are going to be too scared. They don't have to raise a suspicion about whether they've rotated to the right or left. Flash comes in. Simple will scale. Matt just has to, has to get this kill right now. Oh, Simple, he's going to be blinded. That flash comes through from Zaiwu, certainly helps. Some die young. Oh, double kill with the MAC-10. He's looking for the upgrade. He's got the CT separate, but that little moment where he scrambled looking yeah. for the upgrade, that is where he's ended. Apex comes in, gives Vitality, at the very, very least, a fifth. Yeah, no, a little scary. Nice couple of kills at the end. Vitality overall picked him off. Great push here on the A side. I think that was the big one. Some money made, actually. 600 bucks per off these two frags. And the early portion of this half, that could make a difference. But the tactic comes through, and what did we see from Vitality in basically every single map? Was playing way too passive to begin with. They start off with some aggression, they win the round. Playing to win. They have to. They've got to fight. They've got to fight, oh, well, they've no, got to keep it up, the but... The flash is so late. Dupree's waiting, it doesn't come through. Oh, but there's a little bit of a recovery boost from Masuda. Doing to Na'Vi what was done to them. Vitality, get back a man advantage. Another 3VX, but this time it's not two MAC-10s and only Simple with the AK. Yeah, this is about reading the rotation, right? Oh, they're really close to the smoke, and it's actually not perfect, so... Bit gets comfy in front of it. Jump spot coming in from the site. No way to know about this. Vitality will get some space back on the other side of the map, but they are dedicating two players to this push. The move is coming in somewhat fast. Perfecto will not be able to watch theirs with the bomb on his back, and they're actually kind of worried about it. I mean, Vitality, they did their job, right? They got their info, they got their kills. How could this go wrong? Tronic toying with it, runs away. Of course, that will be heard. Perfecto passes him another flashbang. Bit at the front of it all. Comes in, clears the corner. Zai Whoa! Whoa! And Apex! No way! No way he's that fast! Just guillotines Apex as he tries to come out from Dumpster. Masuda fast on that flank. Bomb planted within the dice. A smoke gives cover to the cross. Now we've got two T's locked into truck. How the hell do Masuda and Magisk manage to piece this together? They don't have a smoke to cover, they do have a kit. Perfecto in the same corner, crossfire set, there's another. At least one goes down, it falls onto Magisk, his back turn, and Navi two away. What in the hell was that from Bit? How did he get that second kill? I, I cannot believe the speed of this trade. Just mechanical mastery. Oh my god. That was slowed down. It looked like a normal shot. I mean, Apex, of course he's not ready to shoot. How can you react to that? That is unbelievable. And it's the kill that makes the round bit. Two-way player coming off CT side, extremely hot. White hot. On the T side, getting the refrags they need. I asked, how does Vitality lose that round? I guess that's that's the only, that's got to be the only way. Yeah, because Bit, bit decides it's over. Yeah, he just wanted to, wanted and now to get through this. He's got, really dinner, he's got nothing, dinner plans. Really nothing standing between Vitality, Navi, and their 15th round. Navi can sense it, blood in the water. We're talking about a team that knows how to win with a new guy ready to do it for the very first time. There's something from Magisk, but it is far too little, far too late, and a Simple comes around. Oh, okay. You make sure you take down the King when you come for the crown. Instead, Simple clears out that bomb site, plants right there with it, and a 15th locked in for Navi. 10 map and match points in Lisbon. Oh my god, yeah, they've, they've nearly completed it. Oh! Uh. And poor Dupree can't even find Perfecto with his back turned. Nothing is easy hey, when good. it comes to killing Navi. Brimming with confidence. Trying to stave off defeat for as long as possible. Before you can really look to your team and tell them, yeah, we can do this. You've just got to hope you win some rounds at first. And we just saw Hope get taken away, right? That 4v3 situation, full flanks, two tactics, aggressive plays that all worked out beautifully, and then they lose. Nothing will feel worse. They put their best foot forward and still got tripped. Completely swept. 
We saw FaZe in the situation losing so badly and literally smiling because they didn't know yeah. how they could have won, even if they had a second chance. That's the position that Vitality are in right now. And this just goes to show us that Navi truly can be the best. The talent runs so deep. And some die young, the newest gun on Navi has slotted right in and shoots right through this B bomb site. Zaiwu, Dupree, a desperate situation in a two versus four as they try to keep Navi away from that coveted 16. But no matter the direction, Zaiwu met by utility. And all that remains of Navi runs rampant into this B site, a bomb plant that cannot be stopped. Despite Zaiwu's best efforts, it is again him against the world. He tries to encroach ever closer, but uh, once more bit from the side of it and a single kill. There it is! Perfecto, the cherry on top as Navi have turned around and dominated not only the major champions of FaZe Clan, but the best version of Vitality that we have ever seen. Teams designed to defeat them, but nobody can take down Navi. How are you gonna find a Colossus bigger than that? Whatever you throw at them, they come back. 2021 was theirs, and they're looking to prove that that doesn't end now. To think of some young, some die young's position coming through short notice as a stand in to slot in with some of the world's best. For Navi to return to Lisbon, a city that has been a spectacular Counter Strike crowd, to try again versus two of the players that took it from them last time. Dupree and Magis, they couldn't replicate that success. But these players right here, draped in the flag of Ukraine, the best player to ever do it, defeating his biggest challenger. Time and time again, Lisbon, it is one more time I ask of you. Everyone together, give it up for the Blast Spring Final Grand Champions, Navi! Instagram post? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> For sure, man. How proud are you of these guys and managed to pull this off? Overpass was incredibly impressive. I'm very proud. It's, it kind of looks like we dominated them and it looks very easy in the final, but it's not, it's not, it's only one event. It's only one event. Sasha, it's been a few events without trophies. It's been a tough time for you. Does this one mean more? Yeah, this one is another good trophy to our collection. I just want to say happy birthday to my girlfriend. I know she's sitting somewhere here. Happy birthday, Arena. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Electronic, I know you don't give me words, but how good does it feel to win as the IGL? It's a great little feelings. I'm really happy about that. Thanks everyone for cheering us. Hope uh, we can show that, uh, that game in future, you know? Definitely, definitely. Now, SDY, yeah. your first big trophy. Yeah. You were the first man to lift it as well. Was that everything you dreamed of? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you can Enjoy it. it. And obviously your first event for Na'Vi, you come in as a stand-in. 
You put up a great performance on overpass, very impactful. Did you imagine this moment? Yeah, I imagine it uh, almost every day of my life, actually. Wow. It's, it's a really good moment. And what do you think of this crowd? Is this the right crowd to do it in front of? I can hear you right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. Perfecto. Yeah. Another trophy, you've done it again. I just want to say... Two! <laughs> And bit, overpass, that was damn good. Yeah. Big smile on your face again. You're young and you're still getting it done. Anything you want to say to all the fans out there? Two. <laughs> Lisbon, make some noise one last time for your Blast Premier Lisbon champions, Navi! They came, they saw, they conquered Na'Vi, dictating the pace almost every step of the way in that grand final series. An unbelievable 11 round streak in that first half. Vitality only managing to post one more after that. The deserving champions, absolute domination from Na'Vi. No doubt about it. Na'Vi once again coming in with a masterclass of a performance. We saw all players having moments in the game. We credited Symbol on the first map. Bit with a fantastic final as well. To my understanding, at the very least, the MVP of the final, Young Bit coming in, living up to the expectations. Unfortunately, Vitality weren't able to put up much of a fight, but Na'Vi, they played some fantastic Counter-Strike. Yeah, Na'Vi never let Vitality warm up in this Grand Final, which if you ask me, they weren't even a Grand Final. It was just a demonstration. It was a showdown. It was a showcase for Na'Vi. They just did exactly what they wanted. They had so many individuals step up. You look at the stats from this Grand Final, you have Electronic at 133, oh. you have Simple at 138, and then you have Bit, as Jacob is mentioning, 155. Oh. Look at Overpass, and Bit basically traumatized. Vitality. He put a stop to any ID, any momentum, any rhythm Apex wanted to put in. Bit said no. Think again. That won't work. It's absolutely incredible to witness. We just got to give you know credit to Bit once again. How young, how how new in the grand scheme of things this star is. Every single time he gets on this land stage, he delivers. And we were the first to put pressure on him, right? With Electronic moving into an in-game leading role, Bit needs to take more responsibility in the future for Navi, and he showed us right here in the final that he's ready for it. For you. Yeah, absolutely incredible, Electronic once again as well we do have to give some credit to him stepping up to the mantle taking that up that in-game leader position his individual form not dropping either yeah not dropping one single bit but you know also who didn't drop the man that's joining oh, us right man. here we got to get him up here on the desk simple the uh, uh of course going to be our Merck mvp coming into this tournament might need your muscles here to help me jacob yeah. we've got quite a big box, <laughs> Long time we a box. simple uh we've got a trophy for you do you want to help me do the honors actually yes. you, can, you can do the honors jacob there we go well you want to open it yeah oh, you can open go. it man it's all yours. Oh. Take it, Beautiful all yours, buddy. stuff. Beautiful stuff. Nice. I mean, I, I'm so just... Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting repeats of uh, what was going down at the full finals as well. You are a Merck MVP there. Merck MVP once again mm -hmm. here, Simple. Um, I mean, what does it mean to you picking up another trophy here? Uh, just means that uh, we are still the team and organization who's always hunting for any trophy and ready to win it. And especially with slow preparation with new player, I think we did a great job. We played a really, really good CS, especially against FaZe, and uh, I think today we played really good as well. Simple, are you surprised? Are you surprised that you were able to beat FaZe in the fashion you did, and are you surprised you were able to beat Vitality so convincingly? I, I'm surprised with FaZe game. I mean, uh, I don't know, it, it felt like uh, they didn't play their game. Maybe if it was on stage, they would play much, much better. Simple. That grand final seemed very easy from us. <laughs> Did that also feel easy to play for you? Yes, yes. Like whole team was so focused that you just think only about your role and uh, how to win easy rounds, just uh, playing and hitting your shots. You've now, been with Electronic for a long, long time, right? And you now recently moved into an in-game leading role as well. Try put a few words on Electronic's performance throughout this tournament. He's like uh, very smart and he can outcall any IGL. And uh, he's really, really good in mid-call rounds. When you just need to go, don't use any nades, and they won't even expect you. Now, a few people might use the term honeymoon period with, with Electronic as an IGL. Do you think they're wrong? Do you think this is the level that you will have from now on? Yeah, I think they're wrong. I think uh, he needs to work <laughs> more on other stuff, and he will be even better. What was it like having SDY for you coming into the uh, equation here as well? His first tournament with you and lifting a trophy as a standard. Great. He's a calm guy. Uh, he's always ready to learn, ready to listen, and I think he's doing a great job. I think he's, yeah. I, 
I just want to give you a moment to say anything to the fans all cheering for you. I mean, there are so many of them here in the arena as well. They were chanting your name when hey you were guys, coming up here. Thank you, everyone who came. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I hope you enjoy this holidays. I hope you enjoy this blast event. And hopefully to see you next time in Lisbon. Thank you, guys. Oh, it's been absolutely spectacular witnessing you up on stage. Simple, absolutely spectacular having you up here. Congratulations Thank on the you. win and the Merck Thank MVP you. title. Um, huge stuff. Once again from Simple, just getting a repeats from that full final two. Yeah. He's just sweeping up all the trophies. Well, we, just, we just gave him an MVP, <laughs> and, and that one is obviously very much deserved. But yeah. I think it's safe to say Simple is about to be the first player in the history of Counter Strike with 20 HLTV MVPs. 20 MVP. I think he's going to be creating his own category. Device was at 19. What he's showcased once again here in Lisbon is worthy of 20. This man is about setting limits, about setting records. It's not about catching up with anybody. He is writing his own category. And don't forget, he started out against OG by playing a poor game of Counter-Strike. Yeah. By all means, according to Simple Standard, I thought to myself, uh-oh, Navi, in this tournament, if Simple is delivering at this level, there's no way you're gonna win. <laughs> From that point and onward, Simple was without a doubt the best player in the entire tournament. And that speaks into what we talk about all the time with Simple. You can never, you can never count him out. Yeah, just absolutely huge from him once again coming up on the stage. It's, it's kind of crazy. We sound like a broken record when we're always talking about the simple showing up when he's needed to no. most. But it's it, it's the fashion for me that he does it in. As you were saying, you know, poor performance to start off the tournament. He looks angry just coming back into things. Yeah, they looked angry, but a good anger, a yeah. positive anger. The one that you need to be fierce on the server, the one that you need to make the difference. Look, this is always the same with Navi. We can stand here and pray simple as much as he deserves, and we could do a whole podcast of 10 hours. <laughs> we would run out of, of superlatives. But the matter of fact is he had a lot of people next to him in this grand final to overclass yes. Vitality. We Bit was a one-man show on overpass. Electronic was very safe. Perfecto closed a few rounds. To me, that's the story about this Navi today. A, a team that, individually speaking, was in their own level, in their own category. No one could touch them here whenever they hit that altitude. And that's the thing, despite all the hurdles, despite all the trials, tribulations, changes coming into Navi as well, once again, stand up to the test. Unfortunately for Vitality, um, they do fall. We got to see them playing in front of the crowd for the first time in the iteration of the squad. But yeah, coming into the grand finals, um, just like a one-man show. There were no match for Navi tonight, but don't take away that from the fact that they played a better tournament than we've yeah. seen in a long, long time, right? They are still only just a top 10 team. They're still trying to figure out all these communication issues. They're still trying to figure out what direction they want to move the team in and I'm not necessarily sure that the Vitality lineup we see today is going to be the same after the summer break. There's some question marks still to be asked within Vitality but what I saw during this tournament was a massive step in the right direction and I cannot help to point it out once again. Sai Bu is back to his best and that is something they need. Yeah, questions remain open for Vitality. In this specific series, we always say in Counter-Strike, to come back into a game, there are a couple of key rounds that you need to win. A few opportunities here and there. When you play against an Navi like that, you won't get a lot. But if you don't seize them, it's over. They will completely ruin you. And that's what happened for Vitality. You both look at Mirage, you look at Overpass, and you can pinpoint at the beginning of the game a couple of rounds, a couple of 2v2s, a 3v3. Yeah. You win that, suddenly you have something going for you. They didn't, and they let Navi run with it. Well, before Vitality's departure here from Lisbon, we do have a few words courtesy of Zonic. Zonic, commiserations. What's going through your head right now? Uh, obviously disappointment, um, but I think in a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, then I think we should be proud of, of what we've done here. We have been uh, having a tough year getting this project together. Um, even though the players are working extremely hard, uh, I'm super proud of them. I think we are moving in the right direction, one step at a time. Can't just go from zero to 100. So, so for me, I'm, I'm proud. But the way that we lost today, I think that we uh, we didn't show up. But, but it's been a, it's been a long ride. I'm, I'm I'm super proud of the players. They uh, they deserve more, I think. What would you say were the main issues for Vitality in this grand final? I mean, I think that we've been working a lot on our communication. But today, I think. Maybe yeah, some of the players didn't really communicate well when they were dead. We have this concept where you, when you're dead, you are contributing, contributing to, the, to the communication. That lacked a little bit, but yeah, it's our first grand final uh, in a long time for, for some of us. So, so uh, that's just how it is. I mean, it's, uh, now we were playing really well. We didn't show up too much. That's just how it is. Zonic, all of this being said, I think objectively, this is still a success for this roster. Do you agree? For now, yeah, maybe. But we, are, we also have to uh, accept that Vitality brought us in to win trophies. Um, we, are, we are, as I said before, we are, we are heading into the right direction. But it, this is a team that is built to, to win trophies. I'm happy that we are, we are at least showing that we can, we can beat teams that are above top 10. Um, 
and that was like one of the first times we did that uh, here at, at this event. So, so um, it's a, it's slowly but surely going, uh, getting into the right direction, and I'm 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 happy with that. But yeah, right now you ask me just before the final, and of course uh, I'm a bit disappointed. But that's the same for the players. I'm I'm overall it's a it's a it's a good tournament for us. Well, Zonik, if Vitality brought you guys on board to win trophies, second place here at Blast Premier Spring Finals. Is this the first step to lifting trophies above your heads? Yeah, I definitely believe in this project and I believe in the players and we had to find ourselves. I mean, with the communication, the philosophy, the way that we wanted to play Counter-Strike, that was really tough. But I think that we uh, we kind of figured it out during EPL in, in Dusseldorf. I've, I've said it many times in, in, in different interviews, but I think ever since from there, we have been building on, improving, playing better and better. So. So yeah, it, it takes time. I mean, I talked with my good friend Carrigan, who said it took him a year to build an international roster. Uh, first time he did it, so it's a tough task, but it's also a challenge that I like, and I, I love being here in this team. Zonic, as I said at the start, commiserations, but I would like to say at the same time, congratulations. I hope that the upward trajectory continues. Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? I mean, uh, the fans here in Portugal, it's uh, it's a dream coming true every time you come here. We won, we won the last time with Astralis, and and uh, I came to, to the grand final this time, uh, I believe both both games against Navi. So they also know the crowd is here, it's insane. It's, uh, it gives these like football, soccer vibes. So it's, uh, they are the best and that's why we play. And it's what a way to come back to a crowd after not seeing them since, yeah, for two and a half years. That's, uh, that's amazing. Zonic, best of luck and on to the next one, mate. Yes, cheers. Props to Zonic for giving us a few words after that grand final. As he was saying, you know, a step in the right, vita uh, right direction rather for Vitality going forward, getting closer to lifting those trophies, but not one just yet for them. No, I love the honesty coming out of Sonic. You can always count on him for, for telling people and telling us how it really feels for him and, and his perspective. Of course, they're being brought into Vitality to win trophies. And right now, let's be completely honest, even though they were in the final, they were nowhere near lifting a trophy tonight. So I love the fact that he still has eyes on the prize. He still want to get better with the team, but well aware that right now they're not nowhere near close lifting that trophy. And that has to change within, a, I'd say, a soon future. He said a yeah. year here for Kerrigan, sure thing, but we need to see those improvements, gradually speaking, every single time. Right now, very hard for Zonic, I think, to have clear conclusions. They've been concussed by this grand final, not even really showing up. So a few days, cool head, level head, and then look into the future. Well, we had a few words from Coach Zonic, but now we've got a couple of words from the man on your screen. It's Apex. Apex, commiserations. Can I ask, off the bat, what's going through your head right now? Well, we got stomped by, by this Navi once again. I think that's uh, way too many matches for me in a row. Nothing to say, they were just the better team overall. They just played much better than us, so nothing to say. Um, I'm just happy we made this progress. I didn't expect us to go to the final before the tournament. So the most important for me is just making the progress in this tournament. And I think we did a lot of progress. We have a lot of things to work on, obviously. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it might be difficult to remember everything right now and be processing what took place in the match. But that being said, is there anything that stands out in your mind is what went wrong for Vitality? I think that the beginning of the, the game was really tough for us. We just didn't wake up at least. And that was pretty tough. We uh, were really off communication wise. We were a bit scared to play. So they just had like 9-1 leads. So yeah, when you wake up after 9-1 lead, it's pretty tough. We lost all clutch rounds as well, I felt like. So yeah, pretty tough on our side, but... I mean, I have no regrets. Uh, nothing like big. Uh, I mean, we didn't do like crazy mistake. We were just not there. So yeah, it just happens. We don't have much more time in this interview, but I did want to ask one more thing. You mentioned progress. Second place here in Lisbon at Blast Premier Spring Finals. Is that progress for Vitality? Of course, that's the first playoff in the, in the year for us. So obviously it's progress. And I'm just proud of the boys for what we did. I think we can do much better, that's a sure thing. But yeah, individually we were really off today and we really need to show up. Otherwise, that's going to be not easy for us to win tournaments. Apex, anything for the fans? Thank you very much for cheering for us once again and uh, see you in Cologne. Apex, thank you and best of luck moving forward. Thank you, bro.
Thank you very much for those thoughts, Apex and Parla. We spoke about it coming into this matchup. Uh, just the historical domination that Na'Vi had over the side of Vitality. History repeats itself once again. Yes, it does. And then for Vitality, this will go down as a positive event. I think this is the message we have to put out there. Yeah. This was progress. There was growth in the side of Vitality. But this grand final is a very cold reminder, very harsh reality check of the difference that is a trophy winning team and a Vitality that still has to figure out a couple of conundrums and enigmas. I agree. And then and once again, tip my hat for, for Na'Vi, right? They're coming in with SDY as a stand-in. They're coming in with Electronic as an in-game leader. And we had a lot of questions. We had a lot of question marks to be answered throughout this tournament. And I think they've answered most for now. You asked, you know, do we think, I think that was you, Matthew, do we think that Electronic can continue moving forward being such That'd a great in-game leader? We'll have to wait and see, right? We don't know, but what we're seeing right now is there's definitely some potential to be explored when it comes to Na'Vi. Well, let's continue seeing some more yellow and black as we head on into our CS Money Play of the Day. Make sure you guys are voting over on Instagram where it will be announced tomorrow. Who have we got coming in at our third? Well, we got Young Boy Bit, MVP of the Grand Final, at least according to me, with a nice AK-47 ace this time around. He was the man in charge. That CT side, he locked them down completely. And Bit, once again, stepping up to the occasion. He's young, he's inexperienced, some may say, but he's got them good. And it's so gross when he plays like that. Second place or second choice, we have Electronic, the nowadays IGL of Navi, doing the plays on his CT side. His positioning was once again stellar here. We can see how he navigates around that smoke with the AK-47, grabbing the first and good timing to put down Mizuta and Zaiwo. A very well-rounded performance from Electronic. SDY may not have been the carry for Na'Vi, but he played a big part in as to why they lifted this trophy. So I'm happy he got to lift the trophy, and I'm happy he got to get this triple kill right here, shutting off the first half. Look at that from SDY. Found an awful lot of impact for Na'Vi, and a great, great debut for him as well. Absolutely huge stuff. Make sure you're getting those votes on over on the Blast Instagram, and we'll, of course, be announcing the winner of that tomorrow. Um, I want to take a look at our Betway predictions too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, you know what? I don't because Wanders, he's the king of the castle, the OG built castle, <laughs> but the Navi won castle. I guess <laughs> I, I did his uh, yeah. victory on uh, a couple of OG picks out there. He was uh, <laughs> the man with a vision, the man with a plan. Uh, I think most of us got fooled by the narratives and the romanticism of vitality, and Navi reminded us all that. I wanted to believe. I really wanted to believe. Of course, we wanted to. to him, yeah. yeah, I think myself and Scrawny, we always have joined in terms of wins, in terms of losses. So maybe not as much as. I, I mean, I don't want to throw Alexander. No, but... it's fun with the two of you, right? Either, yeah. either you, either you win, I guess, in the end, <laughs> or, or you, you suck lose. massively. Yeah. That's just the way this video for you. Like, There's no in between. <laughs> Absolutely. Collusion no going on. I, I should yeah. check the messages in the group chat. You guys are yeah. making some kind of plans or something. Maybe. Sort. Why do you end up with the same result? At, at least we've stopped sneakily sending the messages to the oh, that was your worst of the that really we all know was. That was you. That I was, was you. That was a low point in my life. Let's not uh, repeat that one. But this <laughs> this has been a high, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me up here on the desk. Pleasure. First Blast event outside of Copenhagen as well. It's kind of weird seeing all the Danes walking no. around, still speaking a lot of Danish. Yeah, but no. Kind of getting used to it again. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much to Wonderful Production as well for putting on a fantastic show as always. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all the teams in attendance as well. It's been an absolutely spectacular show here. Congratulations to Na'Vi once again for being the Blast Premier Spring Finals champions. The culmination of the spring season and it's all been leading up to this. Finally, we return to the beautiful city of Lisbon, Portugal for the Blast Premier Spring Finals. The teams fought tooth and nail to get to this very stage and the fighting must continue. And now, time for the pages of an entirely new epic to be written. That could allow for the clear to the left side, but the smoke oh. spam, OG, godly! Navi, nice. they send phase hacking, no reason to win, and yet they pull that off. That's a nade lining up for Monacy. It is a dominant victory and securing a spot in the semi final. Over three years without Counter Strike flooding the Portuguese capital, the stadium, the stage, most importantly, the fans returning to Lisbon. Lisbon, make some noise for me. Let's get this semi final started. OG falling back, that's precise, and he gets another over the top. God oh, damn. Filthy, absolutely filthy. And now we have made the grand finals here in Lisbon. Credit to OG, credit to everyone involved in that team. He's got two of them walking in, both from the same side. Jax, oh. instant execution. Oh. Modesty's down, point blank. Oh. 